This is Mission Control Houston at 16 hours 24 minutes. Mission elapsed time. Four hours 25 minutes remaining in the sleep period for the crew of Columbia. Spacecraft now on the 12th orbit over north central Africa. 29 minutes away from next station contact at Guam. We're now estimating a change of shift briefing with the off-going flight director, Chuck Lewis, at uh, 1045 Central Time in the Building 2 small briefing room, room 135, not the main auditorium. At 1625 Mission Elapsed Time, this is Mission Control Houston. Mission Control Houston. Mission elapsed time is now 16 hours, 48 minutes. Columbia is on its 12th orbit of the Earth. Astronauts Young and Crippen have slightly over four hours remaining in the sleep period. We've had a change of uh, flight control teams here in the Mission Operations Control Room in Houston. Flight Director Neil Hutchison and his silver team of flight controllers, which guided Columbia during the ascent portion of flight are now on duty. At this time, the commentary circuit will be transferred to Building 2 for a change of shift briefing with outgoing flight director, Chuck Lewis. Mission lapse time, 16 hours, 48 minutes, 43 seconds. This is Mission Control, Houston. Okay, uh, this is the uh, off-going bronze flight uh, director, uh, Chuck Lewis. You want to make a brief uh, rundown of what happened during this shift, and then we'll go to Q&A. Well, I believe most of you have copies of the flight plan activity today, and those were followed, followed to the letter by the crew. We did a super job of staying on the timeline, accomplishing the activities we had scheduled for them. Uh, almost three and four burns uh, went off. On schedule, we had an FCS checkout. We started one of the APUs on orbit that went off on schedule. Uh, we had an RCS hot fire test to check all of our thrusters out. Uh, that data is being analyzed now in the control center. Uh, the crew saw no problem with that on board. We were LOS when that occurred. Uh, let's see. And we got them to, to bed on time. Uh, Oh, I didn't bring a flight plan. Uh, Schedule time in the flight plan you have. 13 hours GET. <clears throat> and uh, let's see, that's in summary, uh, it went just as we had scheduled it. Hey, wait for the mic and identify yourself. Front row. Roger Witherspoon from the Atlanta Constitution. At the earlier press conference this morning, or rather this afternoon, um, Mr. Kranz said that a rollover operation would probably occur during the 9th or the 21st orbit and that pictures would be taken from Air Force ground telescopes to determine if there was a loss of shielding from the bottom of the spacecraft. There was a rollover on the 8th orbit. Were pictures taken then or at any other time? And if so, what did they show? Well, Kranz uh, would have loved to have been here, but he went home with the bed. Uh, we did not make any maneuvers today in support of a site observation. But you did have a rollover on the 8th orbit. If we, Why? if we, if we, if we should have been a scheduled maneuver. It was a scheduled rollover on the eighth orbit um, of the automatic yeah, system, that's it, which was testing the automatic controls. Right. Went to uh, IMU align and then back to Z local vertical, as I recall. Yeah, but it was a complete point. rollover, and the bottom was facing was facing Earth as it went over Hawaii. It was, well, over that region, it was 2,000 miles away, but there was a, um, a rollover that time, and it was scheduled and pre-planned. There was not one pre-planned at the ninth orbit. 
right? But there was a point in time when it was in range of Hawaii and in range of Maui in the telescopes that there was a rollover. Now, were pictures taken or weren't there? If pictures were taken, I'm not aware of the photograph. Now, I think uh, Mr. Kranz also... To my knowledge, we made we gave the crew no specific changes to their attitude maneuvers that they had we'd already planned for uh, ground observations. Now, I don't have my flight plan. I wish I had my flight plan here with me, and I'd look at the particular orbit you're talking about and uh, try to explain. <clears throat> that's that's press kit there. Well, I guess it has it. It doesn't have attitudes. Referred to Rev. Eight. Not necessarily. I would not necessarily be informed, and probably wouldn't be. Therefore, the Air Force could have taken the pictures, they, they and they would not have had to tell you. That's correct. And as, as I think Mr. Kranz explained earlier, we have a offline team working that particular problem. He, he being the leader of that team, <coughs> and uh, the only thing I've seen is the same thing I believe you've seen on the, the earlier TV that the crew took. Uh, I saw some 8 by 10 blow-ups of uh, some of that video during the course of my, my shift. Dan Molina. Having had uh, another eight hours or so to assess the tile problem at this point, Chuck, do you uh, do you have anything to add to Neil Hutchinson's evaluation of the problem this afternoon? Does that evaluation still stand at this point as to the seriousness or non-seriousness of the problem? At this point, it still stands. <clears throat> I have, <clears throat> we advised the crew uh, late in the day uh, of uh, basically no impact as we saw it. Now, uh, again, I think uh, Mr. Kranz explained that, that there's still data being gathered being screened, and I'm really not working that problem. I had my hands full today just working the flight plan. So you're not privy, you're not privy to any conclusions I will be, the problem? I'm sure I'll be privy to conclusions once they're drawn. Uh, based <laughs> on the data we got from the crew today on the video, uh, we're not concerned. Do you have an idea of the time frame on developing any sort of conclusions from that data? That data? No, I think, oh, I think the, the, the team that's working that's going to be back in. Uh, back in. My guess would be sometime around 3 or 4 a.m. in the morning. I would assume that there's being data gathered now and, and to be correlated later. Okay, up here in the front. Don Espag at Dallas Morning News. From the photographs that you looked at of the tile area, could you tell exactly how many tiles were missing? <clears throat> well, it looked like there was only one complete tile missing. I forget which side it was. Most of the others <clears throat> indicated that there were a piece or a portion of a tile that may be missing, but not a complete tile. But there was one, and I forget the side, which side it was on, it looked like there was a complete tile missing. And there was another one that looked like that on a tile that had been diced, the half, one half of that might, have, might be missing. <clears throat> there was six best I could tell was six on one side and nine on the other, and that includes any minor tile damage that we could we picked up in the, that video. <clears throat> hey, back. Now, if they get more data in here that's better resolution, I'm sure they'll they'll know a little more about it. But that's that's what we have right now. Okay, we had a question back here. Uh, yeah, same question. Okay, up here in the front, Mr. Katz. Shelley Katz, Time Magazine. I'm not going to talk about tiles. So I want to talk about glue and about felt. <laughs> glue and felt. The, um, the spacecraft reported seeing red in the areas that were exposed under the tiles. Red would indicate what? The skin of the craft? SIP. It's the material used to bond the tile to the vehicle. That would imply if they saw red, the, the tile insulation material was missing down to the bonding layer. Is that the bonding layer under the felt? Yes, it's so the felt the is bonding layer also. that the insulation is bonded that, that bonds it to the vehicle. That's the set or the orange. Okay, so we're not only missing the tile, we're also missing the felt. Well, no, I think you're getting a couple of things mixed up. 
some of the insulation is called felt. It's a type, there's different types of insulation used depending on the heat the rings are trying to protect. And uh, there's the Nomex felt must be what you're referring to. But isn't that what's in that area? It's an FRSI area. Yeah, I, I, brew, I, I brought a drawing on it. That's what it, uh, FRSI is a reusable Nomex felt. So that felt is missing above the bond layer. Hey, over here in the corner. <clears throat> Jim King with the Associated Press. <laughs> Those ground cameras, that are the high resolution ground cameras taking pictures of uh, Columbia. To, uh, how do they track this fast moving spaceship uh, with enough resolution to show what shape the tiles are in? Not me, it's probably classified. I don't know. Dan Molina again. Is there any thought that perhaps the uh, uh, that insulation that was giving you the trouble on the external tank a few weeks ago may have had anything to do with the tile problem that's come up now? Not that I'm aware of. Any other questions back up here? At um, 40 minutes MET or somewhere in there, there was reference to a pogo. Can you clear that up once and for all? Uh, I can't because they're, they're still going back and looking at data. And believe me, our data playbacks are stacked up. Like I said, we had a hot fire test earlier today. We hadn't even got to the data yet. Uh, it may have occurred when the main engine's uh, bells were being repositioned. Uh, we're not sure it was really a pogo. The crew felt something. It was after. Yeah, it seemed like it was even after the Ohms 1 maneuver. And there's some uh, engine positioning going on. Uh, it may have been that. We don't know. I don't know that yet. That's still being looked at. And it's kind of a low priority right now with the other data. Louis Alexander. A different question, Chuck. Uh, I can't would like a better answer on that one. I, at this time, I don't think we really know. Louis Alexander, Newsweek. And I'd like to ask you about the uh, tests on the door and the door latches. Would you tell us what you accomplished today on those tests? Uh, we comp everything worked just as we had, it was advertised to work uh, based on pre-flight analysis. Uh, we, there, there wasn't a lot of concern. There was, we ran through a, a series of tests on that first door opening to make sure before we committed to an opening we didn't have any bending or deflections that would get us into trouble once we tried to close the doors again. And everything was nominal. We didn't know if the thermal uh, uh, environment through uh, ascent might affect it. Uh, of course, when you get on an orbit, you've got the uh, zero G relief on the vehicle, uh, but it went just perfectly. Did, did the uh, you used one set of motors on that and not the other? No, we always use redundant motors. Well, did you run both of them? I understood you would run it on one set of motors one no. day, on the other set the next day. No, we run both motors simultaneously on all door ops. As a matter of fact, we do that to make sure we do have redundant motors. And it went through. We can time them. We can time them. If it, if it takes X amount of seconds for the door or a latch gang to open, we know it took two, two motors did that. If it doubles in time, we know we got a motor out. Did you, do you recall how long it took? I don't know. Right up here in the front. Uh, uh, Associated Press, uh, is there any, was there any evidence during your shift of any other missing tiles besides the 15 already discussed? Uh, well, let me clarify the 15. From what I saw, I saw one tile missing and maybe a half of another. The others appeared to be tiles that were damaged but not uh, completely missing. Uh, and on my shift, I, that's all I've, I've uh, seen. Melbourne, Aviation Week. Uh, back to the payload bay door test. Could you go through the sequence that... Uh, on opening those doors? Uh, <clears throat> let me start by saying first the uh, starboard door closes on, on to the port door. Okay, that's basically the way the doors work. There's a uh, latch, there's forward bulkhead latch groups on forward and aft on each door, four latches in each group. So there's starboard door has four forward and four rear latches. 
the center line down to the center have four latch groups, four in each group. And what we did was we started with the starboard door. We opened and closed the bulkhead latches just to make sure the those latches would operate fully. Then we opened and closed the port door latches, uh, bulkhead latches. Now the doors never moved up to this point. Then we went down to the center line and operated those latch groups and closed them. We went back, opened up the forward and aft bulkhead latches on the starboard door, unzipped the center line and opened the starboard door full open. And we closed the starboard door. Open the starboard door back up again, unlatch the port door, and open the port door. Quite a series of tests we went through. And I, I think that's basically correct. Dan Molina again. I understood uh, as you were being introduced that Deal Hutchinson has come back on duty now as opposed to Don Putty. Is there some particular reason for that? No, that's always been the plot. Of as it, I, I didn't. I, it's the basic reason for that, that's always been the plan. The basic reason for that is Don Putty is the entry flight director. His team does the entry work, and we're getting him phased. We're phasing our teams to support the entry with his team on the third day, or, the, or tomorrow, should we come home early? Any thought of that at this point? Do you, do you think the chances are still pretty good for a 50 Right now, it looks to me like we're going to go to the planned duration. There's no reason that I know of up to this point to shorten the duration. Front row up here. Uh, Kimura of Asahi Shimbun. Uh, do you think uh, just uh, taking a photograph uh, from the ground uh, is uh, sufficient or enough uh, to verify the soundness of the spacecraft? I really can't answer that because I'm not knowledgeable in what the capabilities of ground-based observations of that type are. Uh, and in fact, I may never see the specific data they use to, uh, that they use for the analysis. I think I saw an IMU alignment. That time period, let's see, Rev, that was Rev 8, mm. referring to. Hawaii on orbit 8, we had already finished the IMU alignment, the uh, orbit before, minus ZLV, Y axis out of plane, aft in forward in, the, in travel. That's payload bay doors facing the Earth, right? That would be payload bay doors facing Basically. the Earth, basically. Tail forward. Tail forward. Nose down. I mean, uh, tail down. So it's basically uh, horizontal in the orbit and just following a local vertical track, just tracking uh, that, that fashion. <clears throat> if anybody attempted to view it by any ground observation means, there's no way they could have seen the underside of the ship from, over from Hawaii. That's true. John Kerry, Newsweek. Um, about the middle of the shift, Young and Crippen said that the major problems were in instrumentation. Was this the data recorder or there, were there other problems as well? We've had a uh, few transducer failures. Uh, We've had to change some of the alert limits and some of the heater operations, thermal limits, and we sort of expected this. Uh, all of our thermal analysis, all of our thermal information is just based on pre-launch analysis. It's tracking good, but we've got hundreds of heaters on the vehicle and thousands of transducers. We've had half a dozen transducers that have failed. We've had uh, a couple of heaters that looked like they were begin to cycle in a way that would indicate a possible failure. We turned on redundant heaters. In addition to those, are either switched to a redundant heater. Nothing major, but we've had a few of those. Nits. Back up here. A couple of personal questions. Do we know what they have eaten today? And can we get any information from the medical report that happened during your shift? Crew's feeling fine. I don't get the details of the private med pass. I get the result, basically the results, but I don't go into the details. But the surgeon told me they're doing good, doing real good. 
joking. Uh, the meal, I, don't, I didn't look back to see what the meal was for lunch and dinner tonight. Maybe Terry has that in the food they've eaten, specifically what food they've eaten. They've never the said anything about it. They have a selection in their menu to yeah. pick from, and unless they say what they ate, we never know. Wait for the mic, please. There you go. You mentioned uh, medicine. Earlier today, um, I think it was Hutchinson, said that they took medicine for nausea um, because it was planned that they do that. And this evening when I was over there, I got the impression that they did not take any medicine and did not need any medicine, the, which uh, is the case. The surgeon on our team prescribed no medicine for them at the private medcom, nor did they ask for any. So they did, okay. So they did uh, now, Crip planned, and I'm sure has followed his plan to take the scope decks. That was just standard SOP, scope decks, and emotion sickness. That was well, it's a combination of that and something else. I forget what the two drugs are. Apolamine and Dexedrine. Yeah. He planned to do that just as a precautionary measure. Scope Dex is a compound name. That's C O P D E X. Yeah. Other than that, I know of other, like Terry said, I don't know of any other medication that the police take. I assume none. Any further questions? Okay, one more up here. Uh, are there any uh, probability of uh, extra vehicular activity? Of an EV, uh, extra vehicular activity? Not at this time. <clears throat> any more questions? You sure you're all through and run out of questions? You're not going to fog up here with a rump press conference. I'll tell Mr. Kranz and I see him tomorrow that everybody's anxious for him to come back over and talk okay, to one him. more from Pete Bowman here okay could you tell us about the wastewater dump how much was dumped uh, I think we we dumped the wastewater tank to 80 percent earlier today I don't know where it is right they do have the capability of going EVA do they not yes they sir <laughs> what's uh, are there any equipment limitations or do they pretty well equipped the way uh, any future shuttle flights would be for an EVA. Don't have the. AMU. They don't have the mass mirror, uh, ma the maneuvering unit. What do you call that? AMU. Uh, which would allow them to leave the confines of the payload bay and maneuver themselves to other locations of the orbit. That's not on board. That's an article in our in our inventory that we hope to add later. Uh, basically, any EVA we would do this flight, they're tethered within the payload bay, and the tools they have on board although we have some general purpose tools, we're primarily aimed at any payload bay door problems, latches that are jammed. Uh, they have a means if the doors don't close to go out with and, and close the doors with cable system. The EVA was all planned about payload bay door problems. How would you get back? How would you get down there and get back? Pill down? Exactly, the selling is it? Uh, there's no pre flight, there was no plans for a tether like that. I don't know if they ha don't have a tether on board they might use. If you could not get the film of the underside of the space car, right, you do not have enough rope, tether, whatever, to be able to go. There's no way for him to get down there. there. There are no handholds. There's no way to maneuver down there to have a look if he did go outside. There's no plans at this time for an EVA. He doesn't have a way to maneuver himself external. In the payload bay, we put in handrails, a guide wire he can use to slide his tether down and so forth. There he's trying to say you go outside the vehicle, there's nothing that he can use to uh, move himself around in any particular direction. And all you'd want is some guy out there banging around, you know, on Gouging, gouging <laughs> okay, let's shut it down. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. This is Mission Control Houston. Mission elapsed time is 17 hours, 22 minutes. The change of shift briefing has concluded. Uh, slightly less than three and a half hours remaining in the sleep period. 
for uh, astronauts Young and Crippen. Uh, downlink data continues to come down from the orbiter to uh, ground stations, uh, indicating that the uh, onboard systems are still performing within nominal tolerances. Cabin temperature inside Columbia is 77 degrees. Humidity is 27% uh, and steady. Mission elapsed time, 17 hours, 22 minutes, 26 seconds. This is Shuttle Mission Control, Houston. This is Mission Control, Houston. Mission elapsed time is now 18 hours, 26 minutes. The uh, orbiter has just uh, crossed the Asian continent on its 13 orbit, 13th orbit of the Earth, uh, just approaching the Pacific Ocean. Uh, astronauts Young and Crippen remain asleep uh, with uh, slightly less than two and a half hours remaining in the sleep period. Orbiter uh, presently is on the uh, daylight side of the Earth, approaching darkness. Cabin temperature inside Columbia is 76 degrees and steady, and humidity is 28%. This is Mission Control, Houston. This is Johnson. Space Center uh, Mission Control, there will be a PAO release announcement in approximately one minute. This is Mission Control, Houston. Mission elapsed time is now uh, 19 hours, 37 minutes. The uh, orbiter, Columbia, is on uh, revolution number 14, the Mediterranean Sea, just uh, approaching Italy. Just had a uh, pass at the uh, Madrid tracking station, uh, during which time we acquired some uh, real-time data from the vehicle. Uh, astronauts John Young, Robert Crippen, still asleep. Uh, a little over an hour and ten minutes uh, remaining in that sleep period. Uh, data, downlink data from the Columbia indicates that uh, all systems on board are continue to be nominal. Uh, humidity inside the cabin, 27%. Cabin temperature is uh, 76 degrees and steady. Mission elapsed time is 19 hours, 38 minutes. This is Shuttle Control, Houston. This is Mission Control, Houston. Mission elapsed time is now 20 hours, 14 minutes. The uh, crew ha has about uh, 35 minutes remaining in its uh, sleep cycle, but uh, downlink data, which we are presently acquiring over the Arroyo Valley Station, uh, indicates that the uh, crew is awake and uh, has uh, activated the uh, cathode ray tube displays inside Columbia. Uh, we have the capability for acquisition of signal with uh, uh, the astronauts uh, through Arroyo Valley. The uh, flight directors, however, will give the astronauts the option of initiating the uh, air-to-ground transmission at this point since it is still in their sleep period. We have uh, two and a half minutes remaining uh, in the Arroyo Valley Pass. During the uh, sleep period, the Mission Operations Control Center has been active uh, with uh, Flight Director Neil Hutchison and his crew going over the list of anomalies and uh, preparing to uh, uplink some teleprinted uh, instructions to the crew and uh, changes in the flight plan. The uh, DFI recorder, which has uh, been failed on, uh, will be controlled with uh, circuit breakers and uh, the flight controllers plan to do some further troubleshooting with that system. Astronauts Young and Crippen had remarked that the uh, 
cabin temperature inside Columbia was a little bit too cool. Uh, cabin temperature reading is presently 70, 75 degrees. Um, it is probable that uh, some adjustments in the water flow will be made in an attempt to bring that cabin temperature up to uh, something a little more comfortable for them. Uh, there remains four reaction control jets, four reaction control system jets, which need to be hot fire tested. Uh, these may have been fired uh, previously, uh, but that firing occurred during a period of uh, bad downlink data, uh, which may have clouded uh, the, uh, the, the view of that firing. Uh, in any case, uh, those uh, four reaction control system jets will be fired again, will be hot fired again to uh, verify their performance. Some uh, uplink changes will be uh, made to the flight plan, including a change in the uh, upcoming reaction control system burn, some camera setup time, and some other tasks. Uh, details of the new schedule will be made available uh, at the earliest opportunity. There still remains uh, over 32 minutes uh, in the sleep time. Again, however, data from the vehicle indicates that uh, the crew is, uh, at least one of the crew members, is awake. Uh, we have just uh, lost signal uh, passing out of the Arroyo Valley range. Uh, and uh, next acquisition of signal would be in uh, about 26 minutes. So that would uh, be the earliest point in which we would have voice contact with the crew in the event they do uh, choose to initiate contact before the sleep period has expired. Mission elapsed time, now 20 minutes, 20 hours. 18 minutes. This is Mission Control Houston. A Bermuda Comtech, Houston Comtech, air to ground one. Disregard Bermuda. Keto Comtech, Houston Comtech, air to ground one. Houston Comtech, Keto Comtech, on air to ground one. Roger, Keto, uh, meet me air to ground two. Roger. Ground two. Okay, you're loud and clear. Uh, stand by for key and check. Roger. Comtech testing one. Comtech test one. Two. Two. Three. Two. One. In the test. Roger, 100% key, modulation go. Okay, Keto issues and Comtech. Um, Meet me on site, Cord Keto. Roger. This is Mission Control Houston. Ground elapsed time is 20 hours, 43 minutes. We're just moments away from contact with the uh, Columbia through the ground station in Quito, Ecuador. And although there's about five minutes remaining in the sleep period, there's a good possibility that the uh, ground control team may uh, send up some uh, something in the nature of soothing wake-up music to the uh, air crew fairly shortly here. The duration of this pass at uh, Quito is uh, about six and a half minutes, and uh, we do have acquisition of signal at Quito now. So, uh, Air to ground transmissions may resume shortly. Mission Control Houston data indicates that the crew is up and working and uh, plans are forthcoming here to uh, transmit some uh, wake up music. We have lift off. She's beautiful. She's clear of the plan. Do you copy Houston? This is Houston. We copy. Job well done by the shuttle space team. We can't say that she's sleek and lean, but I'll tell you right now, she's a mean machine. The Columbia, not the kind you smoke. This here's a bird, 
she gets high on herself. Rockwell Martin, USBI, all got together and they give it a try. You ought to see that sucker fly. There she goes, now way bye bye. Two solid boosters hanging off the side. Look out, boys, you're in for a ride. She's gonna switch into overdrive. Just lay back and let her slide. Don't hit any fence posts on the way up there, boys. Flip them switches. All right. Griffin and Young are in the driver's seat with tons of thrust sitting at their feet. Home sweet home never sounded so sweet. After this ride, they're gonna be beat. Shook their socks off. Best of the rattle her teeth, too. Hold on, boys. All right. Now that we've got them into outer space, there's anticipation on every face. Thousands of eyes looking all around just to see where she's going to touch the ground. Morning, Columbia. Welcome to day two. All right. Morning, Jess. How's the silver team this morning? Well, we're just fine. Had a grand night. Uh, things are looking good. And uh, we have, do have a question. We're wondering, uh, you guys shivering up there? Is the temperature pretty good? Well, it uh, certainly got a little bit chilly last night. Was about ready to break out the long undies. If you guys have got a way to warm up the cabin a little bit, we'd probably be interested in hearing about it. Also for the gap, uh, I don't know if you noticed when we came over the hill there, but uh, apparently since I didn't do my item two before I was through, uh, we didn't get the freeze dry dump, so I had it coming down again. Roger, Columbia, uh, stand by a second. Uh, Columbia, Houston, uh, we uh, think we took the recorder away from you and uh, you'll probably have to do it again. Okay, well, I'm all set up to do that. Uh, we'll just get it after we go all the way there. Roger, that'll be great. Also, uh, we didn't uh, understand when we uh, messed up that RCS test, uh, and, but if we didn't test all the jets, we probably ought to go back and get them. Uh, might be interested to hear a few words on that. And Columbia, we uh, don't think you messed it up. We just didn't get the data, and we do uh, have a procedure that we will catch that for you. Okay, dokie. And uh, there are going to be some timeline uh, changes today in the cap. Uh, they don't start to 24 hours uh, MET, so uh, we have a message uh, that's being ginned up that will uh, reflect all those changes for you. And uh, we do have a procedure that we'll get up to you here shortly. Uh, as soon as I get it for uh, warming the place up. And uh, we don't need an SM checkpoint uh, in the cap at uh, about 21 hours there. Okay. And Columbia, we're uh, 35 seconds from LOS. Uh, we'll see a Bermuda at uh, 20 plus 54, and uh, we'll have that warm-up procedure available then. Okay, looking forward to that. Okay, is the recorder available to me for the dump going over the hill? Come on, we'll catch it. Uh, Columbia, just about to go around the end of the tape, so if you wait a few minutes, uh, you'll have it. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, we will acquire signal again in uh, just under three minutes at Bermuda. The duration of that pass will be two minutes, two minutes, 35 seconds. Mission elapsed time is uh, 20 hours, 52 minutes. This is Mission Control Houston. Hello, Columbia, talking to you through Bermuda. We have you for uh, about two minutes. Roger, and uh, this kind of short pass, so I think we'll uh, keep you cool until we get to Madrid. Uh, Ecom is wondering if uh, we didn't have any parameters out of uh, limits, uh, and we did notice you got a fault message uh, 
prior to Aurora that uh, probably woke you up, and we were wondering uh, what you saw when you uh, checked that out. Down there, it's gone away when we looked it up. Dan, Dan, they, uh, they did not wake us up, but I was using the ink management facility this morning is when it went off, and uh, it had something to do with the waste water, I suspect, but when it got up there, it had anything out of it. Roger. I'm assuming that uh, the gas button is still continue for me now. That's affirmative. We are Columbia, and we're 30 seconds uh, from LOS. We'll see you at Madrid at uh, 2104. Mission Control Houston will have acquisition of signal again in six and a half minutes over the Madrid tracking station. The duration of that pass will be uh, on the order of uh, seven minutes. Uh, the uh, Capcom had uh, asked the crew uh, what was the nature of the alarm, which uh, apparently woke them this morning. Uh, astronaut Bob Crippen uh, responded that the uh, alarm uh, went off uh, when he was uh, using the waste management facility on board the Columbia, and uh, that the alarm, in fact, did not wake them up. But uh, Madrid, ComTech, Houston, ComTech. Air to ground one. Lapse time is now uh, 20 hours, 58 minutes. This is Mission Control, Houston. Houston, ComTech, test one, two, three, two, one. How copy? Dead contact, Houston contact, air ground one. Dead contact, air ground one. Okay, I got the teleprinter uh, tones coming to you. How are you copying? Uh, I hear the level here. Okay. Dead contact, Houston contact. Somebody one, uh, Houston. Okay. Houston, contact, Madrid, contact, air ground one. Go ahead. Uh, Roger, we measure uh, 20, uh, 60 hertz tone at uh, negative one for at the input of the contact console, negative two, two at the input of to the uh, DMS. Roger. How about verification receiver out? Uh, we do not have turnaround. Okay. I'm a Madrid, contact, Houston, contact, configure com configuration Lima for this pass. It's Mission Control Houston coming up on the uh, air to ground contact over Madrid. The uh, air crew has been uh, configuring the cabin uh, following the awake period, uh, adjusting window screens, lighting, and uh, activities of that nature following the uh, sleep period. We should have acquisition of signal momentarily. This is Mission Control, Houston. And Columbia, Houston, uh, talking to you through uh, Madrid. We have you for about uh, seven minutes. Okay, lot clear. Roger, and uh, we have a state vector coming your way, and there's also a teleprinter message on its way for, with some photo information. And I have a procedure here to try and get you warmed up. Okay. Uh, what we'd like to do is go down to the mid-deck uh, MD-44F, uh, that's in the floor there, and uh, check the cabin temp control valve in the full heat position. And if it's uh, not in the full heat... I've already done that. It's in full heat. It is. Okay. Well, then we're going to move on to, uh, we'd like to call up spec 88. And then on panel L1, We'd like to check uh, water loop two bypass mode to manual, and then manual increase until water loop two interchanger flow is 700 pounds per hour. 
And what we're doing is bypassing some of the water around the cabin heat exchanger and uh, trying to warm it up for you. Uh, okay, Danny, I uh, understand you want to get the flow uh, to 700, is that correct? That's right, uh, water loop 2 interchanger flow to 700 pounds per hour. Yeah, it's reading pretty high right now, I'm reading uh, 1,024. Roger. Also, Dan, I uh, can go ahead and give you the position of the GPC-3 down. Roger, go ahead. Roger, it was recorder 1, track 12, that's uh, track 1, 2 in reverse, 87%. That was done at uh, 2 zero hours, 5, 2 minutes, 4 zero seconds. And it looks to me like we're right over order, Dan. Do you agree with that? Uh, that's affirmative. Okay. See it from here. Roger. And uh, just one more thing, uh, Crip, on that uh, cabin temp. Uh, you can, uh, by adjusting the flow, you can uh, hopefully get the temperature comfortable where you'd like it. Okay. And I do have your CRT timer set up uh, that uh, should be coming up to you about this time. Okay, you got a time for us? Uh, say again your last script. Do you have a time for the CRT timer? Roger, uh, okay, for RCS-1, it's item 17, plus 22, plus 20, plus zero zero. For RCS2, it's item 17, plus two, plus 42, plus zero zero. For RCS3, it's item 17, plus three, plus 42, plus zero zero. Okay, I copied for a one, it's a two two, plus two zero, plus zero zero. For RCS2, it's 2 plus 4, 2 plus 0, 0. RCS3, it's 3 plus 4, 2 plus 0, 0. And that is correct. Okie doke. Now we got 708 pounds an hour on the interchanger. Roger, we like it right there, crew. Columbia, Houston. We're 30 seconds from LOS, so we'll see you at Yargadi uh, at 21 plus 38. This is Mission Control, Houston. Mission elapsed time is 21 hours, 11 and one and a half minutes. We've had loss of signal over Madrid. The next uh, ground station will be Yargadi, Australia, which we would acquire in uh, about 26 and a half minutes, and that will be uh, um, air-to-ground contact of uh, very close to eight minutes in duration. Uh, during that pass, uh, Columbia Commander John Young uh, rightly observed that uh, the uh, spacecraft was over the road of Spain, which was... Uh, one of the launch abort contingency landing sites during yesterday's ascent phase. Flight controllers uh, transmitted instructions to the crew on uh, uh, rerouting the uh, flow of uh, water uh, used for heating the, uh, uh, the uh, crew cabin. Uh, and. Uh, expected that uh, an improvement in the cabin temperature uh, should occur and uh, be obvious by the uh, time we acquire the signal again over Yargadi. Uh, temperature in the cabin has uh, been fluctuating between 75 and 76 degrees and uh, we will check that temperature again uh, during next acquisition of signal. Uh, data also indicated that uh, the astronauts had uh, activated the food warmer in the galley, indicating that uh, they're preparing to breakfast. Mission elapsed time is 21 hours, 13 minutes. This is Mission Control, Houston. Uh, Y'all get correction. We're on contact, Houston contact, air to ground one. 
Sir, all Comtech here, Grim. Uh, stand by one. New York, get Comtech, Houston Comtech. Houston Comtech, New York, get Comtech, receiving a five point. To Royal Comtech, Houston Comtech, Air Ground 2. Sir, all Comtech, Air Ground 2. Stand by for H minus five checks. Yeah, Houston Comtech, Royal Comtech, we've got a very bad echo. Project copy, bad echo on this circuit. That's affirmative, and we had it on air ground one as well. Stand by one. Lower contact, Houston contact, air ground two. Houston contact, or all contact, air ground two, you let them clear now, air Okay. Stand by. Roger. Houston contact, testing. This is Mission Control, Houston. Mission elapsed time is 21 hours, 37 minutes. Neil Hutchison and this team of flight controllers was the ascent team during the uh, launch of Columbia. And accordingly, these, uh, this group of men were not able to uh, visually watch the launch. During this loss of signal period, uh, they have been playing back the videotape of the uh, of the launch phase. So, incredibly, it is only uh, only just now that these uh, men in here are uh, enjoying the sense of uh, the visual sense of awe that much of the nation in the world saw 21 and a half hours ago. Uh, we are just moments away from acquiring signal at Yargadi, Australia. This is Mission Control Houston. Hello, Columbia talking to you through uh, Yargadi. We have you for seven and a half minutes. Flap clear there, uh, Houston. Roger, and I have the pad for your RCS uh, test sequence number one on 2-42 uh, of your cap. Roger, uh, on the burn attitude, roll, 179er, pitch, 164, yaw, 320, the targets, HA are 145, HP is plus 144, delta V total is 0.001.8, T go is 3 seconds, down in the notes, it's a uh, plus X trans. Check that box. Uh, going over to uh, item 21 is 207600. Item 27 TIG is 000 slash 2220000.0. Item 36, negative 00. <coughs> 01.8 37 plus all zips 38 is all zips and the post burn attitude is uh, NA Okay, the rear black is as follows burn attitude is 179 1645x144 1.8 Roger, and interconnect, uh, the note is the interconnect uh, to RCS from the left ohm. Okay, we're in that configuration right now. Roger. Okay, Daniel, and I had uh, a couple for you. Roger, we're ready to copy. Okay, well, as you can see, I've got the fuel cell purge going right now. When I was doing the heater reconfig, I discovered down on ML86 Bravo that uh, we had both water line heaters, uh, breakers closed. So I have opened A and we're running on Bravo only. I don't know whether we want to consider opening up, uh, changing those around to verify that Alpha is working later. 
Roger, we copy. And Columbia, Houston, uh, can we get an alignment report? Roger, we copy. That was IMUs 1, 2, and 3, respectively. Roger. X, Y, and Z, respectively. And Columbia, Houston, uh, you broke up a little bit. We uh, copied the time, but uh, and then something 200, but we missed what was in between. Yes, we did. Small uh, angle difference. And Columbia, uh, we're not reading you. Uh, we'll catch uh, the rest of this at uh, Roro in uh, about three minutes. It's Mission Control Houston. We Nominally, should still have about a minute left of acquisition of signal with uh, the Argety station, but uh, as you could tell, the uh, communications were breaking up pretty badly toward the end, so we'll resume that discussion at the Arroyo station in uh, just about a minute. That uh, pass at Arroyo will be uh, just under six minutes in duration. Uh, during that pass, uh, the crew reported that they were proceeding with the uh, fuel cell purge uh, and read back data on the uh, alignment of the inertial measurement unit. Uh, the uh, Capcom had uh, called up figures to the crew uh, for their next uh, reaction control system burn. We should uh, resume contact momentarily through Arroyo Valley. This is Mission Control Houston. Hello, Columbia. We're talking to you through a roll. We have you for five and a half minutes. Okay, panel. Roger, and our question on that, uh, we copied the torquing angles and we copied the execution time. However, after the execution time, there was some something that came through garbled uh, followed by 200, and uh, that's where our question lies. Uh, John just said that uh, they uh, had very small triangle difference, and uh, consequently we thought it was a good, good angle. Roger, we copy that. Thank you. And Columbia, Houston, for your uh, water supply dump uh, numbers uh, for Alpha and Bravo, there will be no dump uh, this time. Roger. And your 30 seconds uh, to LOS. We'll see you at uh, Mila at 22 plus 23. All right. Mission Control Houston, mission elapsed time, 21 hours, 52 minutes. We had a loss of signal at Yargity. Uh, next acquisition of signal will be in about 30 minutes from now. That uh, last exchange between uh, Columbia Commander John Young and Capcom, Dan Brandenstein. The, uh, uh, mitigating actions taken to uh, warm the Columbia's cabin have apparently been uh, ineffectual to this point. The uh, cabin temperature remains 76 degrees and stable. Uh, it is possible that the, uh, the uh, increase in temperature, if there is indeed an increase, uh, may be uh, slow in coming. We may have more uh, data on that during the next acquisition of signal. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, 
Malacom, take Houston, Comp, take Air Ground 1, Air Ground 2, how do you copy? Houston, Comp, take Malacom, take it, have you loud and clear? You're loud and clear, thank you. Hello, Columbia, talking to you through uh, the state, so we have you for 10 minutes. Okay, and we have a problem with the uh, rec pressure on uh, system 102. It's uh, going up and we can't seem to stop it. Roger, we copy. Roger, we copy. Hey, are you still there? Roger, uh, we're still there, and uh, we're uh, trying to sort out this rig pressure for you. Okay, we appreciate that. And we'll maneuver to the gravity gradient uh, attitude here. Roger, Columbia, and we have you for five minutes and 40 more seconds. Control valve on system one right now. That should drop her down at least. Uh, Columbia, we, we don't. Okay, never mind. That, that's not the right thing to do. Columbia, we uh, think possibly a, a check valve uh, is leaking here, but we're going to continue to look at it, and uh, we have uh, no concern with that pressure going up. Uh, you can't damage anything, so we'll just uh, keep uh, working on it. Uh, that's affirmative. And we think that pressure could go up as high as the N2 reg uh, pressure. As the uh, N2 reg pressure up to 200? Uh, it's at 214. 214. In Columbia, Houston, uh, we're 30 seconds uh, from LOS. We'll see you at Madrid at uh, 22 plus 38. 238, okay. This is Mission Control Houston. Mission elapsed time is 22 hours, 34 minutes. Uh, that discussion uh, between the uh, Capcom and uh, Bob Crippen related to a uh, Current problem with the pressure control system um, in system one, uh, the uh, oxygen pressure uh, had been increasing. Uh, to an uh, unusually high rate, uh, it appears uh, the, uh, that there uh, may be a, a leaky valve uh, between the oxygen and nitrogen systems, and uh, that that pressure may stabilize as the uh, uh, as the uh, substances on either side of that valve uh, neutralize. Next. Uh, Acquisition of signal will be at Madrid in slightly more than three minutes, and the duration of that signal will be uh, just uh, more, slightly more than seven minutes in length. Mission elapsed time is 22 minutes, 35 seconds. This is Mission Control, Houston. Uh, mission elapsed time is uh, 22 hours, 35 minutes. This is Mission Control, Houston. Control Houston, we have acquisition of signal at Madrid. Uh, Madrid, we have you for uh, six and a half minutes. Okay. And you guys want to close the vent doors here? Stand by one, I'll see if they're ready. Just got a great view of the Azores. And that pressure's up to 200 now. Roger, we're watching at Columbia. 
And Columbia, we're ready to close the vent doors. Roger. Columbia Houston, uh, you're now go to open the vent doors. All right, for that. And Columbia, the vent doors look good. All right, for that. That's good news. And Columbia, uh, we're ready for uh, free drift anytime uh, you'd like to do it. Okay, we're in free drift and all our JDs are off. Roger, Columbia. In Columbia, Houston, uh, we're about 30 seconds to LOS. We'll see you at uh, IOS at uh, 2258, and uh, we are still scoping out that uh, high rig pressure. We've had loss of signal at Madrid. Uh, next acquisition of signal will be in just uh, under 12 minutes uh, from the Indian Ocean Station. That uh, will be a pass of uh, 5 minutes, 42 seconds in duration. Flight control teams continuing to look at possible causes of the uh, increasing uh, oxygen pressure and the uh, pressure control system. Mission elapsed time, 22 hours. 46 minutes. This is Mission Control Houston. It's Mission Control Houston coming up on acquisition of signal at uh, Indian Ocean Station. Columbia, we have you for uh, four minutes and 50 seconds uh, through Indy, and uh, right off, uh, to, we'd like to go down on uh, MO10W and System 1, O2 reg inlet close. Uh, we'd like to close that. Uh, we think you probably have a stuck regulator, uh, oxygen regulator, and we'd like to close that and then uh, keep an eye on the pressure for a while. But I did close it. That's what I told you. That was the two things I'd done to try to get rid of it. I'd opened up the 14 and a half rig and I'd closed the, the uh, O2 system one uh, rig inlet. Roger, Columbia. And uh, we'll take a look at it again and uh, we'd like to do the uh, IMU Excel Cal. Uh, okay, Dan, do you want to, tell me what you want to configuration right now. You want the 14 and a half rig uh, closed again? One. Columbia, we'd like you to leave it as it is. Okay. Yeah, the two things that are different down here, Dan, is that I do have the 14 and a half reg for System 1 open, and I have the O2 reg inlet for System 1 closed. That's the, that's the non-nominal configuration. Roger, Crip, thank you. And uh, we didn't copy that earlier. It might have been a comm dropout. This one a good breakfast. Well, glad you enjoyed it. Do you guys have tacos for breakfast? We haven't had any breakfast yet. Won't be long, though. Okay. I figured it was time for your donut run. <laughs> no, not today. Watching my weight. John's about to wear out this half of lad here with all the good photos he's getting. Well, I'm sure glad we got that extra film on board, huh? You betcha, it's worked out great. Incidentally, Dan, one thing I meant to ask you, after I did that last TPC uh, three freeze dry dump, I'd like to hear the results. I'd also uh, like to talk Randy out of uh, an item 48. And 
Columbia, your go for the item 48. Uh, he said we had one invalid frame in that dump, and it looked good. It's Mission Control Houston. We had loss of signal at uh, the Indian Ocean, Ocean Station. Uh, next site to acquire will be Yargeting. Uh, in approximately eight minutes. The duration of that Yargity Pass will be eight minutes and 25 seconds. The uh, Silver Team, headed by Flight Director Neil Hutchison, uh, now turns over flight control of the Columbia to uh, Flight Director Don Putty and uh, the Crimson Team. Mission elapsed time is 23 hours, four minutes, this is Mission Control Houston. Royal Comtech, um, Yargity Comtech, Houston Comtech, air to ground. Another voice, Houston Comtech. A Royal Comtech, Houston Comtech, air to ground one. A Royal Comtech, air to ground one. Stand by. Yargity Comtech, Houston Comtech. Yargity Comtech, Houston Comtech, air to ground. Yargity Comtech, Houston Comtech. Yargity Comtech, Houston Comtech. Houston Comtech, Yargity Comtech, receiving your drive by. Okay, your line clear, stand by. Roger. This is Houston Comtech, test one, two, three, two, one in the test. Houston Comtech Yagadi, Comtech, we have 100% king. Modulation, go. Roger, Yagadi. Aurora Comtech, uh, we have 100% king. Agram 1, Agram 2. Roger, Aurora, thank you. And figure for your pass. Uh, Roger. Uh, Houston Comtech, uh, Royal Comtech. Can you uh, advise how our uh, trolley type uplink was on during the sleep period on Route 14? Uh, I believe all the uh, uplinks were success successful. Uh, Roger, thanks. That was our first. We're just wondering how it went. Went good. Thank you, Aurora. Roger, thank you. This is Mission Control at 23 hours, 11 minutes, Mission elapsed time. Columbia is approaching acquisition through the Yargity Australia tracking station. The Crimson Flight Control Team, led by Flight Director Don Putty, has uh, completed the handover from the Silver Team. Capcom on uh, this team is astronaut Joe Allen. We'll stand by for uh, Yargity. Good morning, Columbia. This is the Crimson team through Yargadi. We'll be with you for eight minutes. How do you read? Over. Good morning, Columbia. This is the Crimson team through Yargadi. How do you read? Over. Okay, good morning, Crip. Uh, you're very, very weak. Uh, we've got nothing special for you, except to say we're happy with the PCS config as it is right now. We've just been watching and enjoying. We're proud of the Silver team, though. They did a grand job, and so did you. We're thinking of having them bronzed, in fact. OK, John Cripp, you're very, very weak. Uh, we may have some comm problems. Uh, if we don't get much to you this pass, we'll be back very shortly through Aurora Valley. And Columbia, that's not comm problems. We're just, uh, you're uh, weak in your transmissions to us. Okay, Crip. Uh, we are happy with the current PCS configuration. We are looking at that reg pressure, and we'll keep you advised on that. You know, you sure are easy to please. Uh, well, we may not be when we uh, get some data in a few minutes here, but uh, we're keeping a careful eye on it and think that uh, 
uh, there's nothing can that can break as we watch it, so we're not uh, particularly worried. Uh, it seems to have leveled off at around uh, 215 or so. Okay, we copy that. Thank you. This is Mission Control. Yargardy is a UHF station, which is uh, voice communications only. We receive no, no telemetry data through UHF stations. Uh, the next station where we'll see uh, data is uh, Aurora Valley, and it's, which is a few minutes away. Roger that. A uh, crip, you're dropping out here. Columbia, Houston, we're 30 seconds from LOS. We'll be gone uh, for a minute and a half and be back with you at uh, 23 plus 22. This is mission control at 23 hours, 20 minutes, mission elapsed time. Columbia has loss of signal at Yargity. Aurora Valley will acquire in uh, about a minute. We'll stand by for uh, acquisition there. Hello, Columbia. This is Houston back with you through Aurora Valley. We'll be with you for three and a half minutes and can report that the IMU Cal has been completed. Okay, fine and dead. You got any other traffic for us? Uh, not much, Crip. Uh, you're loud and clear on this pass. Uh, curious to know if you have message 11 aboard. It's a pretty major change to timeline. And uh, prepared to answer questions uh, when and if. Okay, I'll tell you what. John's uh, down on the mid deck now. He'll check that out for us. And uh, meanwhile, I got a little uh, Slim Dusty and Walsing Matilda for our friends down under here. Let her rip. but they got a, a good sound of it. I think the S-band will never be the same again. Probably not. Probably not. Columbia, we're about 30 seconds from LOS. We'll be back with you at 23 plus 54. Uh, roger that. 23.54. And we enjoyed the music, Bob. Thank you. Oh, we enjoyed it. We just wanted to share something with you. This is Mission Control. Columbia's passed out of range of the Aurora Valley Station. During this pass, uh, the crew serenaded the folks down under with waltzing Matilda. Columbia now starts a uh, long haul over the Pacific Ocean with the uh, next acquisition at Tulapeep, New Mexico in uh, 26 and a half minutes. 23 hours, 27 minutes, mission elapsed time. This is Mission Control, Houston. Tula Comtech, Houston Comtech, air to ground. Tula Comtech. Uh, Mala Comtech, Houston Comtech, air to ground. Houston Comtech, Mala Comtech, I have you loud and clear. Roger, Bermuda Comtech, Houston Comtech. Bermuda contact, Houston contact, air to ground. Houston contact, Bermuda contact, air to ground one. Okay. Um, Tula Mile and Bermuda, stand by. Why, in the end of test? 
And here's the part I just reviewed a contact. I am getting 100% keen and go for modulation on two. Negative keen on one, Charlie. Send me a keen check against for you. Stand, one. Stand by one. Mile of contact, Houston. That's half a second. Can you let go? Okay. Stand by, Bermuda. Bermuda. Bermuda contact, Houston. Contact air to ground one. Bermuda contact. Uh, copy. Uh, this is Bermuda. Bermuda contact. I copy you weak on air to ground one. All right, Eric, I'll be weak also. Stand by. I'll use the contact Bermuda con. Go ahead, Bermuda, on air to ground one. Use the contact Bermuda, contact air to ground one. How do you copy? You're weak, Bermuda. Stand by. Bermuda contact, use the contact air to ground one. Bermuda contact. I'm going to make a quick key and check with you, and we're going to leave you back on site court. Contact test one, two, three, three, two, one. End of test. Just some contact, just Bermuda contact, negative key, air to ground one or two. This is mission control at 23 hours, 53 minutes mission elapsed time. Columbia is approaching the west coast of Mexico on its 17th orbit. The first station to acquire will be Tulapeak, New Mexico. This will be a fairly long pass involving Tulapeak, uh, the Merritt Island Station, and then Bermuda. During the Merritt Island uh, pass, we will have television from Columbia. Television will be uh, transmitted while the crew is conducting uh, flight control systems checks. Should have acquisition in about two or three seconds. Hello, Columbia. This is Houston. Back with you through Tula. We'll be with you for 14 minutes. Over. Howdy, Joe. Uh, we're here in Austin. Okay. And I uh, got the 41 up. Uh, also got uh, TV set up for Dr. Okay, Crip, we thank you very much. And uh, as we're starting on those, I've got a message to read up to the two of you. Aurora passes thanks to you for the hometown music. Okay, real fast. And, uh, Joe, we were a little bit confused about the time given on uh, message 10. Uh, with respect to that, uh, we were in the dark at those times, so a uh, photo shoot would not have been applicable. Okay, uh, Crip, let, uh, let us uh, look back at that and see what the problem may have been. Okay. Uh, we've discovered no anomalies that, uh, with regard to the FDS dedicated check out here. Okay, very good. In Columbia, we've got good TV down here now. Okay. Uh, roger that. John Young uh, in his uh, seat conducting flight control system checkouts, part of his flight data file floating in the foreground. Uh, Crip, I've got uh, an answer for that message 10 question when you're ready. Okay, go ahead. Okay, we were trying to be too helpful and gave you time. Uh, which was incorrect. Just uh, whenever you can fit them in, go ahead and take them. And when the light looks uh, more or less reasonable to you. All right. We'll do so. Thanks. We've got some similar to that already, but we'll take a couple more. Roger. 
and uh, Columbia, we've got a terrific view of a checklist with a CDR now appearing from uh, behind it. Thank you, Trip. So Bob Crippen uh, moving one of his shoulder straps out of the way there. Go for it, Bob. Columbia, if you look down, uh, you'll uh, see uh, Cape Kennedy, perhaps, a tremendous launch from there yesterday, which you may not have seen. Oh, we saw it. Well, let's see. We're coming over. Oh, there we go. I got the runway and the VAD in sight. Very good. It's exactly 24 hours ago. You've been there for one day now. Just whipped out a... Quick photo of that baby, which has probably been 10,000 taken. It might be one of the better ones, though. That was me taking it. I need an instamatic. Okay, uh, John and Crip, and that is excellent television. Excellent television we're getting. Yeah, those are really super cameras. I knew it was going to make John a star here. John Young now conducting the rotational hand controller checkout.
This is uh, Mission Control. We've, we've lost television when we had loss of signal at the Merritt Island Station. We uh, still have acquisition through uh, Bermuda for data and voice for another three minutes. Lighting and uh, zoom uh, for this TV pass uh, has been controlled by uh, the ENCO, Ed Fendel, on the shift from the Mission Control Center. We'll have additional flight control system checkout television uh, through Madrid in about eight minutes. Columbia, Houston. Go ahead, Jeff. Okay, uh, I've got a configuration change uh, on your RCS ohms heaters. It's back on A14. The ohms crossfeed line Alpha and Bravo are both in auto. And Crip, uh, if you could sneak back there and turn A to off and leave B in auto, we'd appreciate that. Okay. We were, uh, our last configuration we received from the ground was to have both of them in auto, and uh, we'll go ahead and get A off at this time. Uh, there's no hurry, uh, and we understand that. We just want to look at uh, B alone in auto to see how it's doing. I've also got uh, an, another item 17 uh, for the bottom of page 2-40 in the cap, and that's for that uh, fourth RCS test, uh, when and if uh, you want that one. Well, that was quite a ways off. Why don't you just hold up on that one right now, because we we have those books back in the back. Uh, roger that. No big deal. We're with you for one more minute, and we'll be uh, back next through Madrid at uh, 14 minutes after the hour. Roger that. This is Mission Control at one day, eight minutes. Mission elapsed time. Bermuda has loss of signal. Madrid picks up uh, Colombia in uh, just under six minutes. During this last pass, we had excellent television from the uh, flight deck of Colombia, the crew performing flight control system checkouts. They've uh, discovered no problems during this <laughs> checkout so far. At exactly uh, 24 hours from launch, uh, Columbia passed over uh, the Kennedy Space Center again, and uh, Young and Crippen were able to see and uh, took pictures of the uh, shuttle runway at KSC. This is Mission Control, Houston. Madrid Comtech, Houston Comtech, air to ground one. This is Madrid Comtech on our ground one. Roger, fire by. Give me on two. This is Madrid Comtech on our ground two. Live and clear. Stand by for King. Houston Comtech, Madrid Comtech, air ground two. Go ahead. Houston Comtech. Madrid Comtech, Houston, air to ground two. Houston, Comtech, Madrid, Comtech, air ground two. Roger, five by, how many? Madrid, Comtech, Houston, air to ground one. This is Madrid, Comtech, on air ground one. You don't copy me on uh, two. Yeah, you're coming in five by. I'm not getting out to you. We'll check it. Let me send you some keying on this air to ground one. Houston, Comtech, testing one, two, three, four. Five, test out. Madrid, Houston, air to ground one. Okay, on uh, air ground one, King is uh, 100% and voice is go. Okay, we're checking the air to ground two. What? Houston, contact, Madrid, contact, air ground two. Houston, contact. Uh, looks like everything is uh, right with this loop now. Okay, let me send you a few keys. Testing one. Two, three, test out. Madrid, Houston. Okay, uh, King, 100%, and uh, voice is go. Okay, you can configure for the pass. 
And uh, by the way, we might have uh, we have the capability of uh, receiving UHF uh, prior to West Bend uh, due to key hole on the Japan antenna. Okay, fine. This is mission control at one day, 13 minutes, mission elapsed time. Columbia about a minute away from uh, acquisition through Madrid. We anticipate continuation of uh, television during this pass, uh, about five minutes worth. We'll stand by for the Madrid pass. Hello, Columbia. This is Houston. Back with you through Madrid. We'll be here for five minutes. How do you read? Over. All right, clear, Joe, and uh, we're backing up too. John's, uh, did like those photos for you, and I'm about to do this, uh, after, uh, orbit after backing out of the SCS checkout. Okay, Crip, well, we copy that. Uh, we've got TV pictures again, which look good. Uh, wonder if, uh, y'all have any comments on the FCS checkout. We saw no anomalies down here. We had one anomaly when we were doing the, uh, when we were doing the copy that and we'll think about it and uh, we've got a, a beautiful picture of the earth below through your windows now. Roger that. And a fantastic view. Oh, well, we'll leave that on for you for a while. And Columbia, has your cabin temp been for you today? Yeah, it's uh, helped out a lot when we changed that water flow. Uh, it's warmed up considerably. I haven't checked the uh, temperature uh, recently on the meter, but uh, I've had to back out of my jacket. Uh, Roger, that's what happens when you start working hard, I guess. I wouldn't really call this working hard. So this would be a good time uh, for me to talk copy down the tag of that uh, RCS-4. Okay, Crip, uh, very good. We're one minute from LOS, and the uh, RCS-4, item 17 is as follows. Item 17 plus 5 plus 1, 2 plus 0, 0. And uh, we'll see you next uh, in about 11 minutes. All right, that. I see a four the five hours and 12 minutes. Thank you. Roger. And we'll see you at uh, 30 minutes after the hour. This is Mission Control. Madrid has lost its signal. Request. If you could set me up another copy of that uh, timeline. 
change, I would appreciate it if you would join my ID kind of copy. Roger that. This is mission control. Signal hung on just a bit past the predicted time. We now do have a loss of signal at Madrid. The next station will be the Indian Ocean Station in the Seychelles Islands. In uh, ten and a half minutes, during this Madrid pass, uh, we had some TV shots out the window showing uh, the Earth cloud formations. Uh, commander reported uh, an anomaly with uh, the horizontal situation indicator on his side of the cockpit during this checkout. We're looking at that uh, here in the control center and we'll pass on any suggestions to the crew as we come up with them. At one day, 21 minutes, mission elapsed time. This is Mission Control, Houston. This is Mission Control. Uh, we expect a change of shift briefing with uh, Flight Director Neil Hutchinson of the Silver Team at approximately 6.30 a.m. today, uh, in about five minutes. That briefing will be in room 135 in the JSC News Center. During the uh, change of shift briefing, we will tape uh, air to ground communications and uh, play them back after the briefing. Sunnyvale ComTech Houston, air to ground one. Houston ComTech, Sunnyvale ComTech, air to ground one, loud and clear, how many go? Okay, loud and clear. Meet me on air to ground two. All right. Sunnyvale, Houston, air to ground two. This is mission control. During uh, that Madrid pass, pilot Bob Crippen reported the uh, temperature had increased in the cabin and was more comfortable. The temperature at that time was uh, 79 degrees Fahrenheit. Sunnyvale, Houston, air to ground one. You've got it coming at you. All right, copy. Stand by. 2057 on the frequency at 15.2. 15.2 coming into the contact console. That's my line out. Your verification. Stand by. Four, test out. Stand by one. Hardcore, anybody that uh, To my immediate right is uh, Neil Hutchison, uh, flight director of the Ascent Silver Team, which came off duty at 5 o'clock. To my right, Gene France, uh, deputy director of the flight operations director at Harris Johnson Space Center. Uh, well, I'm sleepy. I don't know about you all. Uh, we uh, just completed another uh, another shift in, uh, in the SDS-1 flight. Uh, are we on? We seem to be bouncing in there. Okay, coming on. Okay. The, uh, last night I came on uh, after the crew had gone to sleep. Uh, we were with them all night while they slept and woke them up this morning uh, about... Uh, I guess about an hour and a half ago. Uh, we 
didn't encounter any new denny's last night we actually had a fairly quiet night uh, i spent most of my my and my team spent most of our time uh, making sure we had uh, we organized the, the few things that we have going that we're still investigating uh, we have simulated the uh, sds the entire sds one mission uh, numerous times in fact i think we did it six or seven times the entire flight and uh, These, uh, these night shifts tend to be exercises. <laughs> to wake everybody up. These night shifts tend to be exercises in uh, getting things, uh, okay? Getting things organized for the guys who are gonna come on during the day because uh, what you find over there is when the crew is awake, it doesn't matter whether there are a great number of flight plan activities or not, you're awfully, awfully busy because uh, you're continually doing what we call execution. There's always something going on that has to be paid attention to. So the only time we really have to sit back and, uh, and hammer away at anomalies and things that uh, need to be uh, investigated and uh, organized and uh, plans altered and so on and so forth uh, is at night. And that's basically what we were doing last night, just as we have in all our simulations, although we didn't have a lot to work on. Uh, the flight plan today is uh, pretty much as it was. Uh, there are a couple of modifications that uh, you might want to talk about later on. Uh, we had one minor anomaly this morning. Uh, at least I think it's a minor anomaly. I'm sure it, it will turn out to be. It wasn't completely understood when I left the control center. It happened after the crew got up. It was with uh, one of our O2N2 cabin gas makeup systems, we had a standard switch to go from system one to system two in the flight plan this morning, which the crew executed. And when they did, we had a minor anomaly with the system that we had on, uh, which was system one. And it appears that one of either one of the regulators is locked up high in that system, or we have a leaky valve there. Neither one of those uh, Anomalies, if either one of them turns out to be the fault, will, uh, will cause us any problem. It did uh, put a little higher pressure in part of the system that uh, we didn't expect it, but it's nothing, uh, nothing to be concerned about. We are operating on system two, and as far as I'm concerned, uh, unless we find something different, if we had to go back and use system one, we could. Uh, I think that's about all I, I want to say. The crew has got a very busy day today, and uh, I think we're probably going to be executing a, a, a nominal flight plan and uh, coming home in the morning. Okay, uh, open the floor for questions now. Please uh, wait Columbia, for Houston, We're with you for 30 more place. seconds, and we'll be back uh, in about 10 minutes. Roman Crater, IMAX. Uh, since the uh, spacecraft is working so well, do you see any possibility of accelerating the schedule well, of taking see. up uh, Well, That will be payloads. through Yargity. And that'll be at about 48 after the hour. Uh, we're going to stay pretty much with the uh, plan that's already been established for the DDT and E phase of the program. At first least four the flights. flights. Yeah, we have enough. Uh, if you look at, uh, have looked at all at what we've got in mind for STS-2, 3, and 4, uh, which are the next three flights of uh, Columbia, they're all awfully ambitious. Uh, and... Uh, I think we all just feel like we can really get on with being super ambitious on STS-2 because we're not going to have a lot of things that have to be redone from STS-1. So, but I, I don't think you'll see uh, any change in, in pay, payloads basically for those first three or four, maybe not for the first eight or nine because they're all pretty well set and booked up. I think the important thing is that uh, we're going to be able to execute the payload responsibilities we've already committed to. Herb Chapman, ABC. Uh, do you know anything further about high-resolution optical observation of the underside of Columbia? Well, I'll let Gene answer that. I know we don't have any more yet. Actually, uh, we pretty much terminated activities uh, last night around 8 o'clock. Uh, we 
acquired some additional data uh, via the videotape recorder, which basically uh, was the same uh, scenes that you saw yesterday. Uh, we didn't pick up any additional problems as a result of that screening. Uh, from a standpoint of the ground-based optics coverage, unfortunately the weather isn't cooperating with us as, as well as we'd like to, and between the time that we want to set up and get, uh, make sure that we don't have any obscuration from the ground sites, and then we look at the sun angle and then the look angle and range uh, to the spacecraft, uh, we've got a, a tough geometry problem we've got to solve. We feel there will be uh, at least two and possibly more passes today that should be amenable. And at the current time, we're staying with the uh, uh, flight plan attitude profile because it appears that the attitudes that we would be over the site at are good from a standpoint of ground view. Uh, basically, we're still working with the same two sites we identified yesterday. We're working with the Hawaii site and the Malabar site. Over here. Rick Walburn, CBC. Do you suspect that this tile problem might delay the launch in September at all? I, I don't think so, but that's speculation. I mean, we need to vehicle back and understand a lot about it. And, uh, I, uh, I just, I don't think so. I, that's my, that's a personal opinion, and I really don't have any basis in fact for it. But in fact, you may look at it as a corollary with the spacecraft going as well as it is. Maybe we'll we don't have anything to do, well. but that's right. Think about tiles on the Ohm spot. Why yeah. <laughs> turn it around and get ready to go again? Mike August, KUHT. What about your uh, temperature uh, measurements? As I said, we, we screen the pre-launch data. We screen, in fact, let me just go back over the data itself. Uh, we've taken a look at the uh, video, which I think I identified yesterday, and we had no problems there. We went through the, the launch video. The, the launch video. We had the 70-millimeter uh, film where we had uh, cameras at actually four locations, we screened that, saw no problems there. The film quality was extremely good. So we know we didn't have the problem uh, at that time when we were passing the cameras in the uh, launch complex. Uh, subsequent to that, we screened about two-thirds of the DFI instrumentation. At to date, we don't see any anomalies there. Now, if you remember, the DFI is scattered at uh, just a very few locations throughout the spacecraft. What I say is several hundred as compared to the several thousands of tile locations. So basically, I think I described it sort of like hunting for a needle in a haystack, but we've seen no anomalous uh, indications there yet. We're basically just getting cranked up to do that activity this morning. Jeff Finch, RKO Radio. Providing the weather cooperates and you get those high-resolution photographs, how long will it take you to analyze them? I think it's going to take probably longer to get the film here than it is uh, going to analyze them. Actually, we've got an aircraft on standby down at the Cape if we acquired data, and we've got accommodations to bring the data in from Hawaii also. Greg Kovo. Uh, Gene, I've seen imagery out of, out of Malabar back in the Skylab days, and it's, it's damn good. It's impressive, but it's, it's not two-inch resolution, it's like two feet resolution. Are you generally looking at a general characterization rather than something specific out of those sites? I think basically we feel that uh, for any uh, major problems, I think we'd uh, have sufficient capability to provide some kind of a data assessment. But I think to go beyond that from a standpoint of specific resolutions, uh, I don't care to discuss that at this time. Something about this. Uh, I'm Bob Wormstead from Time Magazine. Can you tell us something about this uh, music that that's played to wake? The <laughs> Are you directing that crowd? Okay. <laughs> uh, I guess uh, I mentioned before that uh, we practiced this flight an awful lot, the Count entire Texas flight, including one. working all night and day and around the clock with the crews and the simulators. And uh, I, I suppose this goes way back to. Apollo, or I'm not sure where it started, but uh, we have uh, sometimes Yard gotten a little contest going between the crew and the ground about who wakes who up with what. And uh, during the preparations for STS-1, uh, my team happens to be the one who always wakes them up. And uh, we woke them up during all the simulations with various renditions of various things, and uh, but we did the same during the mission. 
Uh, well, we've used all kinds of different things. Uh, most of it, most of it, not printable. But the music uh, that we use today, and I apologize for not knowing who it was, but it, it's not a. It was a, a, a song that was done by someone at the Cape. I'm told. Uh, in someone in Florida, it wasn't a, a local person here, and I, I, I honestly don't know his name. I really don't, and uh, I don't believe it's a released record or anything. It's kind of a custom song that uh, a NASA employee wrote it. No, I, I, I don't know. I honest to God don't know. I could find out for you exactly who did the song and uh, and, and where he works and so on and so forth. But I, I, I'm not sure that's uh, important. How did you choose the color silver for your team? Houston, come take a roll, come take King. was 100% on him. Yeah, I know that happened an awful long time ago. Uh, probably because it was the only one left. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. that. Well, back, uh, we had uh, I, the color thing, you know, started with the with uh, France and some of his friends. Uh, the first uh, the first three flight control teams back in Mercury were red, white, and blue. And uh, since then, uh, all the flight directors that have come along have had, uh, had a color associated with the person, I guess, or something. I don't know how you say it, how, but we all have. And uh, when I finally got around to that duty, uh, Silver just happened to be a color that I liked that was no one had used. They're almost all gone these days. If you're a up-and-coming flight director, it's hard to find one that someone hasn't. Jim King with the Associated Press. At last night's <clears throat> briefing, flight director Chuck Lewis said that there was only one tile completely missing, and the rest of them looked to be just damaged. And yet, you said yesterday there were like nine missing on one pod and four to six missing on the other pod. Um, I wonder if you can resolve that difference. Yeah, I brought, as a matter of fact, I brought the tile count with me. I knew somebody would. And uh, is this an accurate count? Gene? Yeah, that's probably no. That's current. It's uh, current time uh, we're carrying uh, one and one half to two is what we're carrying it on the right pod. There's a total of 11 now. When you say damage, that is, I think, a better descriptor of the remaining nine and a half to, to in there. On the uh, left pod, there's six that we classify as damage, and the it's going to be hard to track this bean count because everybody's got a different set of eyeballs, and, and we finally got, I think, a good resolution between ourselves and Rockwell yesterday to uh, establish what we think is the damage and possibly some of the suspected damages. One and a half to two, and then 11? Well, there's 11 on the right, six on the left. But what he means is there are 11 tiles that are total on the right that are affected, that have anything wrong with them at all. And just for an example, and categorizing them just to, for an example, uh, the first one I've got here, which is labeled number one, and I don't know which one it is, it says totally missing, OK? The second one is totally missing. The third one, the forward half is missing. The fourth one, the front half is missing, and Hello, the front Columbia. edge this is, is partially Houston. raised. Back with you through Yargety. The fifth we'll one, be with you a, for six a small minutes, aft corner missing. So see, we've got them all characterized. There are 11 total affected in the left, and well, we still are having a discussion about whether there are four or six in the, and I'm, I, I just made an error. There are 11 in the right, in the starboard pod, the right pod, you're facing forward, and four or six in the left is here to characterize it. And that's correct. Two are, are being carried as totally missing on the right pod. And uh, there are none characterized as totally missing well, on the left pod. Columbia, this is Houston, true Yargety. Uh, uh, you're very you, you weak, John, if that was thing, uh, you transmitting. Yourself, uh, that it all we'll straight be, uh, your mind with you perhaps a bit stronger Pat Dolan, Oral Valley uh, shortly Does and we'll be fine-tuning your state vector at that were time. Affected rather than any other area on the craft. Okay. Well, 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 I, that's one reason we've been uh, we've been looking okay, awful close and, trying uh, to find out event. exactly when when uh, something happened to see if we could correlate it with you. another event. Uh, okay, that particular part of the structure does kind of stick up aerodynamically in ascent. 
but I don't think we have a failure mechanism like a, a known, we have not reproduced a data that illustrates a shock wave or anything like that. I think that's still being worked. You have to assume it was probably something like that, though. Bill Curry with the Los Angeles uh, John, Times. The one Can you tell from uh, on that the tiles that, that are missing whether there was some common denominator to them that they all came from the okay, same production thanks. run or that they were uh, early or late in being put on? Is there anything that's common to them that might explain why they went off there? Yeah, I believe there's one thing common, and they're all classified as diced tile. Diced tile. Diced. The ones that came completely off, uh, well, I can't, I don't, I, I can't answer. I don't know what diced means, but that, it says that right here. <laughs> I, let, you know, uh, one yeah, of the John, things that you, you may think that the flight me, uh, operations guys are going to through kinda uh, those three aligned numbers. Thing. The roll uh, is two, four, one. Are something that pitch we is one, nine, or six. And do a whole heck of a lot about. They're, they're not really our metal. Zero, zero, you know, it's kind of like the heat shield on it. On an Apollo, it's something that's call there and designed, and, okay. uh, and we're working the daylights out of this thing, trying to understand it. it. Uh, uh, but uh, sure it's not all. like an ECS system or a computer or something like okay, that that's that we, fair. we spend our life manhandling. So it's a kind of unfamiliar, at least for me, it's very unfamiliar territory. Let me go uh, John, off here before we lose this uh, for completeness here on that ang diff, uh, two lines down uh, is those nine as well. That number should be. Uh, 91 decimal Pat nine. Young. Yeah, Patrick Young, Newhouse News. As I was walking in, there was some reference to a uh, horizontal indicator problem, I believe, on the commander's side. One point, so speak on that. Oh, I think this is an anomaly that's uh, occurred uh, during downlink TV and uh, John is uh, rotational. Uh, uh, like just on. now? Yeah, just a few minutes ago. This okay, just, uh, uh, we just must have taken a hit the, on that one number. Current shift and before uh, Neil got out. After Neil. Sorry, I can't answer the question because uh, I didn't know we had anything wrong with an HSI. Uh, apparently, there was uh, John Young's uh, horizontal situation indicator was sticking. Was what? Was he sticking? Probably was just getting warmed up. Any, uh, yeah. Yeah, no. Ed Edelson of uh, the New York News. Two unrelated questions. That's also possible. First, could you be a little more specific about the, the gas problem? How high did the pressure go, and which do you think is the most probable cause of the trouble? And second, I assume, uh, just, just to make sure that uh, you are still not uh, considering any sort of EVA in connection with the tile problem. Well, answering the second one first, the answer is no, we don't have any EVA plans uh, even contemplated. And uh, on the O2N2, uh, situation, uh, uh, the pressure in the line uh, uh, in question uh, got up to about 215 psi. I basically went to the regulated pressure. Okay, John, uh, we understand system, and we'll make a is, uh, note of that. Thank you. Uh, in other words, it went up from 100 to about 215. Uh, it is not rising anymore. We had the system completely secured, except uh, that 215 psi is currently open to the cabin if the demand regulator on that side were to ask for gas flow uh, we will dump that very very small volume down into the cabin uh, that pressure doesn't bother us that system of course is uh, proof tested the way 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 over that uh, in terms of what the anomaly was uh, we're still a little puzzled because uh, the only way that uh, that we could see that that thing could lock up with that uh, nitrogen pressure was a was was a double failure, a check valve that failed to check. Uh, it's really hard to explain this without a diagram in front of me. I'm trying to remember it myself. But a check valve that failed to check, and the uh, nitrogen control valve well, on the O2 control valve that and failed we'll to be reset back with when we you closed in it. Two and a half minutes. Yeah, that system, of course, had been open and operating. System one controlling the atmosphere in the spacecraft uh, the whole flight. And I, we, we switched over to the other one as a standard procedure. Uh, I think that uh, I don't have any question in my mind if we needed to switch back to one, if we opened the system back up and uh, that check valve would reseat when it got pressure on the other side of it flowing that way. 
or in other words, the downstream pressure lowered and that we would be perfectly normal operating. I think one thing to go back and clarify, Neil, you sort of jumped on that ice to ice, roughly about uh, one third ice. Icing means, as I understood it yesterday, basically they actually relieve the load in the upper surface of the tile. This is basically where they have the critical contours that are hard to match on the ohm spot. I think if you want to follow up on that further, we can get some wood back to John to give you some more specifics. About it. But the upper surfaces are shaved disproportionately to the lower surface. Anything more, Kennedy? Yes. You got anything here? No, that's all. Okay. Uh, well, let me go to Dryden first. It's uh, 5 o'clock in the morning. i got to give those guys a break. Is there anything at Dryden? <laughs> Dryden? Okay. <laughs> Bob Wormsley? Question for me. Have you uh, begun any type of uh, computer analysis of the re-entry to try and change it somehow to uh, compensate for the tiles or what may be a tile problem on the bottom of it? Well, actually, the uh, entry phase of the mission is already oh. tuned to minimize the heating uh, and yet remain consistent with the flight control system. So it's, it's better. It could, but it'd be marginally better. So we decided that, that is not worth it. Any further assessment? John asked if you. John asked if you. Chuck Taylor, ABC. Um, the crew seemed to uh, complain of being cold last night. What happened? Well, they were. And uh, I think what you're seeing here is uh, we've got a. The crew compartment is big, the vehicle's big. Uh, we don't quite understand how to balance Columbia, the ship thermally Houston. yet, but We're we'll get there. Four minutes to uh, Valley now. It turns okay, out we had the cabin uh, heat. The back, uh, uh, to win an first off, the, the vehicle is running a lot there. cooler than we expected it to. He just We're may using do it. less electrical That's power. Uh, okay, just, John, thank you. And ship we're going to uh, uh, send you up a shiny new state vector here. What we expected it to in terms of its uh, uh, total heat load and the total amount of current we're using and the total amount of heaters cycling on and off. And uh, the cabin, uh, of course, the cabin air is cooled uh, by a heat exchange process with a water loop. And uh, we have a system which controls the amount of water flow through that and heat exchange. And Columbia exchanger. New State Vectors and on board we now. had minimized that. The crew did okay, last night during that. the night. In fact, we saw them. Uh, early, right before they went to bed, or shortly after they went to bed, they turned that thing way up, turned the cabin temp, basically like turning up the thermostat in your house. And uh, the cabin did not respond. It stayed, uh, in fact, it steadily, kind of slowly has dropped down from uh, about 81 at launch down to about 76. And frankly, we're not quite sure that that, ther that uh, temperature reading is is, is the actual temperature reading, maybe a little bit cooler than that. Uh, the next thing we're trying, uh, I mentioned that the cabin is cooled by blowing air through this heat exchanger, which has water as the thing that carries the heat off. We're cutting down the amount of water going through that. Well, the other end of the water loop has another heat exchanger that transfers the heat into the Freon, which goes out the radiators, OK? We are changing the flow relationship in that heat exchanger between the water and the Freon at the moment, seeing if we can warm it up a little bit. And it's just going to take us a while to, we've done all the adjusting we can on the cabin temperature. Uh, since you left, it has warmed up a little bit in there, except to 79. It is slowly coming up. We took that action uh, uh, right after the crew woke up this morning. Uh, and. Uh, I didn't know that. I knew it had started up, but I wasn't sure whether that was day-night cycle or whether we really it might be on to something. So maybe we are successfully uh, bringing it back up. Let me uh, try Dryden again. I understand there are a couple of questions at Dryden. Would you go ahead, please? Yeah, Dryden. OK, hello, Dryden. Come on in. Yeah. Hello. Yes. We have one question uh, here at Dryden from Peter Schroeder, Dutch Radio. 
was uh, checking the ICS. Uh, uh, he was talking. Who was he talking to? Is there another channel or what? Uh, could you repeat that again, please? Yeah, the question is for Neil, Peter Schroeder, Dutch Broadcasting here. When uh, John was uh, working on the RCS system, he was talking almost continuously. My question is, who was he talking to, and is there a second line? Oh, no, I uh, think, yeah, during the downlink video, I think uh, he was talking to Bob Crippen and, uh, and not to the ground. Columbia, Houston, we're with you okay. for 50 right. more seconds. Thank you. We'll be back uh, anything uh, further next, from Dryden? Uh, over the continental you, U.S. in 26 minutes. This morning. I understand. Okay, I understand. Buck one in 26 minutes. Assuming that the weather does not That's cooperate and you never get the ground-based high-resolution photographs to analyze and, uh, John, we do not the have tile any update, problem, uh, to the pad can we assume that now? you will bring her back on schedule Tuesday okay, without further uh, examination? That's correct. Okay. Fort Dean in the back, please. Maybe this has been answered before. Uh, when the tiles came off, is there any evidence that the pad under it also came off bearing the uh, aluminum skin of the pod? There is evidence it yeah. did not. The uh, SIP the, uh, is tile. in place. Uh, and we ascertained that early on by asking John uh, the color, which he described as reddish, which indicates the SIP is on. It came off with the tile SIP interface. Does that uh, SEP? SIP, but SIP. stands for SEP. green isolation pad. Yeah, does that provide any uh, thermal quality? Yes, of, yes it does. Another the other thing more you ought to recognize is inside the pod, there is a, and I don't even know, I can't describe the material, I guess maybe in layman's terms, it's like fiberglass. There is about an inch and three quarter or almost two inch layer of fiberglass over all the tank tanks and gear inside the pod that provides a, a considerable more amount of insulation. And of course, there is no equipment that's right up next to the skin. There is an air or vacuum between uh, here and the skin. Dylan, way in the back, please. Andy Chaikin from Sky and Telescope. There was a slight solar disturbance that we heard about. Can you talk about anything you know about it and if it's of any interest to you in in uh, conducting the mission? Actually, uh, we had briefed the crew to expect to fly through the aurora, and uh, we asked them when they were flying through it, and they said, gee, I don't see anything. And then they looked down at the ground, and they said, Is maybe there's some lightning down there in the ground. And they sort of uh, thought it was funny that we gave them the message, and I think they had great expectations, and they didn't see it. Conditions, I, I heard they might set off the smoke detectors, but anything? Well, again, as you attempt to identify any uh, abnormal events that might occur on board the spacecraft, we said, hey, be aware that when you pass through the South Atlantic anomaly, that might occur. And we didn't want to get them all concerned about what would be an uh, event caused by uh, the atmosphere or the environment they were flying through. Paul Van Slambrook. Paul Van Slambrook, Christian Science Monitor. Can you two stand back a little bit from all the data you're seeing and, and make any sort of general assessment now about what you've learned about the Columbia compared to your initial expectations? And second of all, what are the chances of this flight being cut short at this point? Well, I'll answer the second question first. Uh, I, there, there aren't, they're, they're nil for several reasons. One, one of the big ones is that uh, it, we're right now flying past our opportunity, well, in the this morning we will fly past our opportunities to get into Edwards today uh, in a few hours. Uh, and the other thing, of course, is that there just isn't anything uh, even remotely resembling a problem that warrants uh, early flight termination. Uh, I don't know. I, I tell you what, it's very hard from my, Gene probably has a better perspective on this than I do. It's very hard from my perspective to stand back and say, uh, what I expected and didn't expect because I haven't had any time except on the console or sleeping to, to really get back and look at it. I know from the, the part of this flight that I knew the best, which was the ascent, uh, it's awfully hard for me to go back and try and reconstruct anything uh, that I can't uh, pretty much explain away, which, which is amazing for this 
as casual a look as, of course, I saw it when it happened and, and, and have had a casual look at it since then. But uh, my, my, my view of the thing, and, and we may, I'm sure that in all our, our ones and zeros scrutinizing, we're going to come up with some things that didn't look quite right. We always do. Uh, but I think it's absolutely amazing where we are. We just don't have any anything that's a real showstopper at all. I, uh, in good conscience, uh, can't ask uh, these guys to stand by much longer. Uh, Neil has got to uh, get up and go back to the moker in about 10 or 11 hours. So. Yeah, let, let me give my opinion on the same subject. I think that uh, what we've learned so far is that we're capable of moving into a very aggressive flight program. I think we've established the integrity of the training program that was used to train these crews, and thus it's applicable to downstream crews, and we ought to be able to move that very rapidly in that area. I think procedurally we found out got the right database uh, to actually operate and manage the spacecraft. I think from a standpoint of flight planning, we demonstrated a lot of maturity that thing is going. The crew's performing extremely well and the spacecraft's beautiful. That's how I characterize it. We're duplicating the uh, uh, tile list of tiles and we'll have that available to you in a few minutes. And I'm afraid to have to cut it off now, but we sure thank you for your attention and your time this morning. This is Mission Control at one day, one hour, seven minutes, mission elapsed time. Columbia is uh, out of the Pacific Ocean now, about 16 uh, and a half minutes away from acquisition uh, on the west coast to the Buckhorn Station. We acquired about uh, 10 minutes worth of tape at the Indian Ocean Station, Yargity, and Aurora Valley during the uh, change of shift news conference. Uh, we'll play that back, and uh, we'll also play back the television uh, from the last pass over the United States and Madrid. There'll be a 30-second dropout in the television between the two stations. Hello, Columbia, Houston, AOS through iOS, and uh, we're sending that message over again to you, Crip. Okay, fine. Thank you very much. We're with you for six minutes on this pass. Uh, nothing particular to, p to uh, send up to you, but we're standing by. Uh, we're just out here enjoying the view. Joe, on this TV-04, uh, which we had scheduled for 0100, uh, I was wondering if there's a constraint to waiting to 0100 because of the lighting. They asked them both some uh, daylight and some dark stuff that they wanted on that thing. Uh, I could just go ahead and, uh, and get started on it now if there wasn't any, uh, any concern about that. Okay, I uh, understand the question. Stand by one. And uh, Crip, any time will be fine. Have at it. Okay, do Columbia, Houston, we're with you for 30 more seconds, and we'll be back uh, in about 10 minutes. Okay, Joe, see you then. Yeah, where are we going to meet you down? Well, let's see. That will be through Yargity. Okay. And that'll be at about 48 after the hour. Buckhorn, come take Houston. Ever got one? Buckhorn. Right, Buckhorn, come take. You're loud and clear. Meet me on two. Yargity Comtech, Houston Comtech, air to ground. Yargity Comtech, Houston, air to ground. 
Aurora Comtech, Houston Comtech, air to ground one. Aurora Comtech, air to ground one. Okay, stand by. Yachty Roger. Comtech, Houston Comtech, air to ground. Houston Comtech, Yachty Comtech, we do five nine. Okay, stand by for key and checks. Roger. Houston Comtech, test one, two, three, end of test. Roger, that was 100% king and modulation go. Roger. Royal Comtech, Houston Comtech, key and check, test one, two, three, end of test. Houston Comtech, Royal Comtech, king was 100% on air ground one and air ground two. Roger, thank you. Configure for your pass. No, roger. Go ahead. Hello, Columbia. This is Houston. Back with you through Yargity. We'll be with you for six minutes. Over. Columbia, this is Houston through Yargity. Uh, uh, you're very weak, John. If that was uh, you transmitting, uh, we'll be uh, with you perhaps a bit stronger. Oil Valley uh, shortly, and we'll be fine tuning your state vector at that time. Okay, go we'll wait till then. Okay, Crip, and uh, you're stronger then. Uh, we've got nothing special for you. Okay, the question was do you know what the yaw angle of that star maneuver at, uh, that you got in the flight plan? It didn't print out very good. It, it didn't print out very good on the thing. It's either a zero or a nine. Which one is it? Okay, we understand. Stand by. Uh, John, if it's the one at six hours and 20 minutes on that message, that number is niner. Okay, thank you. And, John, just for completeness, let me... Uh, Read through uh, those three aligned numbers. The roll is 241, pitch is 196, and yaw is a 009er. Zero, zero, All right, they all printed okay. It just looked like the tail got left off the nine there, so I didn't know whether it was zero, 01. I want to make sure that's all. Okay, that's fair. Lock it in. Uh, John, uh, for completeness here, on that ang diff, uh, two lines down, uh, is the tail left off of those nines as well? That number should be uh, 91 decimal nine. 91.9. 9. Well, okay. Okay, uh, we just must have taken a hit on that one number. Probably was just getting warmed up. A lot of nines in that message. I wore it out. That's also possible. And just as a point of information, we've uh, gone to the 250 millimeter lens for out the window pictures from now on. Uh, we've been taking them with 70s. And we decided to shift over when we were taking those uh, other photos, so, uh, you know, so we'll get a little closer to things. Okay, John, uh, we understand, and we'll make a note of that. Thank you. Columbia, we're 30 seconds from LOS, and we'll be back with you in two and a half minutes. Columbia, this is Houston. We're with you for four minutes through Aurora Valley now. Okay, and uh, Seth will be decrypted is in the back uh, trying to win an Emmy on the payload bay doors there. He just that's may about, do it. And that's about all that's going on. Okay, John, thank you. And we're going to uh, send you up a shiny new state vector here. And Columbia, new state vectors on board now. Okay, 
Columbia, Houston, we're with you for 50 more seconds. We'll be back uh, next uh, over the continental U.S. in 26 minutes. Okay, understand Buckhorn in 26 minutes. That's firm, John. And, uh, John, we do not have any update uh, to the pad you're carrying on board now. Okay, thanks so much. Goldstone, contact Houston Cup, air ground one. Goldstone, contact Houston Cup, take air to ground one. Goldstone, contact. Stand by. Tula, contact Houston Cup, take air to ground one. Tula, contact. Mila, contact Houston Cup, take air to ground one. Houston contact, Mila, contact, loud and clear. Roger, Bermuda, contact Houston Cup, take air to ground one. Roger. Uh, meet me here at the ground two. Goldstone, Tula, Mila, Bermuda, air to ground two. Goldstone, Tula, Mila, Bermuda. Okay, you're all loud and clear. Stand by for key and checks. Houston, contact test one, two, three, four, five. The end of test. Goldstone at 100% king, modulations go. Tula has 100% king. Roger, Bermuda has 100% king. Go for modulation. I would like further keying on air to ground one to reset my Quindar levels. Roger. Miley Houston? Yeah, that was 100% king. Modulation go was on my uh, UHF only. We didn't have turn it around up on our S band. Roger, I'm going to give it. Another, another count on air ground one. Houston, contact test one, two, three, four, five. End of test. We still didn't have a turnaround up, Houston, contact. This is Bermuda. We're okay at this time. Thank you. Okay, Milo, meet me, uh, order wire. No, uh, Roger. This is Mission Control at one day, one hour, 24 minutes, Mission elapsed time. Columbia is approaching acquisition through uh, the Buckhorn, California station, beginning a pass over the continental United States. During this pass, we'll have uh, Television from the payload bay cameras. That television will be transmitted through the Goldstone, California tracking station and the Merritt Island, Florida tracking station. The cameras will be remotely operated from the Mission Control Center by uh, the INCO, the Integrated Communication Systems Engineer, Ed Fendel. Columbia Houston talking to you through Buckhorn now. We'll be with you for 17 and a half minutes. Howdy, Rick. Good How morning. How are you doing today, Dr. House? Doing good. We're looking forward to this uh, TV that uh, you're going to be piping down to us. Oh, yeah. I get to be a better special meet equipment with the TV. Hey, uh, one word that Joe passed to... Uh, John Law know that we didn't quite understand. We do not have an RCS-2 pad on board. Okay, uh, we will have that coming up to you uh, over the states here. What we were uh, trying to convey was that the timer update uh, was not changing, uh, and that was one thing that was called out for the oral pass. Roger that. Okay, we understand that. And Columbia, Houston, we have uh, message number 13 coming up to you this pass. It'll be uh, weather for uh, subsequent revs. Okay, we hear it. There's uh, hardly any doubt when you got one coming up. Okay, yeah, uh, and it's a little bit out of sequence. We don't have message 12 to you yet, but we'll be getting that one up to you also uh, eventually. Okay. This is Mission Control. 
second Capcom on this ship is now communicating with the crew, and that's astronaut Rick Houck. And Columbia Houston, uh, during our previous TV scenes that you shot for us, Crip, uh, we noticed your uh, right, I believe it was your, your right, perhaps your left shoulder strap uh, floating around. It might be worthwhile to double check that that's Velcroed. Uh, it won't stay in place. Okay, we just want you to keep your eye on that D-ring then. Roger that. You mean the one he keeps getting his foot tangled in? I think that's the one, John. Rick, how's my old state vector hanging in there today? Sounded like it was pretty good last night. Well, we'll give you an update on that, uh, Crip, as soon as we can. We're beginning to pick up some TV right now. A little fuzzy, but uh, we'll see it shortly, I imagine. Oh, uh, wait a minute. I don't know how you guys are getting any TV. What'd y'all expect TV of right here? Oh, we've got some uh, Mission Control TV, uh, Crip, called out there in, uh, in the CAP 2-19. Mr. Fendel is uh, working some of your payload bay cameras. Oh, that TV. Okay, I knew I wasn't doing anything for you. Uh, Roger. Okay, I'm going to have to get a hold of the Mission Control Center here. Uh, Mr. Fendel, you got the Columbia Houston we've completed a handover through our friends at Tulipi. How do you read? Uh, Rick, your last was unreadable. Roger, talking to you through Tulip Peak now. Over. Roger, Tulip Peak, understand. And Columbia Houston, our crew procedures folks have uh, suggested that you might want to try to tape down that shoulder strap, uh, Crip. Columbia Houston, we've got an IMU Cal bias coming up to all three IMUs. It's a very minor tweak to them. Okay, we're standby. Roger, and uh, be advised, uh, we see no need to update your block data. That uh, looks good, uh, what you have in the books right now. Okay, thank you. Columbia Houston, now through Bermuda. Uh, we're looking at some real pretty pictures as you pass over the uh, northeast of the United States. And I do have a flight note on your PCS System 1 that we'd like you to accomplish to troubleshoot over. Uh, Roger, we're set about it at that. Okay, uh, right now, uh, we'd like you to open on MO10W, your O2 regulator inlet, system one, and uh, call up spec 66 so you can monitor O2 reg pressure, system one, when you flip that switch. Uh, we'd like you to observe that, and if O2 reg pressure system one goes above 235 to 240. Uh, we'd like you to close the MO10W switch reg inlet system one. Over. What we are doing, uh, Crip, is troubleshooting whether that uh, O2 regulator uh, is functioning properly. Uh, once we have that information, uh, if we have not isolated it, uh, we'll have uh, some other procedures for you. Over. Okay, you want the reg inlet system one to be opened up, and uh, you want it to monitor the reg pressure, and if it goes again above, say again, the number, or you want to shut it? Roger, if it goes above 235 to 240, uh, we want you to close it, and that's the pressure that the uh, nitrogen would be re regulating at, uh, Chris. Okay, well, I'm going to open it up at this time. You guys can help me watch it. Roger. Okay, it's open. Roger. I think we just passed over Long Island there. Uh, Roger, and we've dropped out our uh, TV now. I think we uh, got a good shot at some of the uh, scattered clouds up over the northeast. Right. I just filmed there's lots of clouds around the world. Roger. 
Beautiful shot on the Cape Cod up there. I wish we could see it. Willie B. Lenore would like that one. Well, to my uneducated eye, it would appear that opening up that uh, reg inlet made no difference into the end of the red pressure. Roger, we concur. And we'll get back to you with uh, further words on that. Uh, currently, we can leave that switch open. Okay. If that's its nominal position, that sounds good. Uh, Rick, about when can we expect a uh, RCS-2 pad for you, from you? Well, how about one second from now? We got it ready for you. Well, let's see if we're ready for it. Okay, if you got time, uh, we got the time. Okay. Here it comes, uh, with a minute, uh, post burn attitude is 48 decimal 6, 169 decimal 0, 304 decimal 2, and attitude time is uh, 3 hours and 14 minutes. Read back. Burn at 239 er 226, 324, 6 minutes over Madrid. This is shuttle control. Columbia is passed out of range at the Bermuda. Madrid will uh, pick it up in five and a half minutes. We had uh, television from the payload bay cameras during this pass over the United States. Saw the interior of the uh, payload bay, and then the cameras were pointed uh, out the open doors, and we got a shot of uh, the northeastern United States as uh, Columbia passed over that region. We passed up a uh, procedure to troubleshoot the uh, oxygen regulator. Uh, is believed to be causing the uh, problem in the pressurization control system in system uh, A. Uh, crew tried that and saw that found that they uh, made no difference in the uh, regulator pressure. It's not considered to be a severe problem. They reported a beautiful view of Cape Cod as they uh, crossed the coast. And we passed up uh, a pad for the reaction control system test, the number two burn, uh, about an hour or so from now. The, uh, delta V change in velocity for that burn is uh, 3.3 feet per second. The duration is uh, six seconds. It's a multi access reaction control system burn. At one day, one hour, 45 minutes, this is Mission Control, Houston. Guitar, Madrid Comtech, Houston Comtech, air ground one. Madrid Comtech? Stand by one. Guitar, Comtech, Houston Comtech, air to ground. Guitar, Comtech, Houston Comtech, air to ground. The car contact is the contact air to ground two. Houston contact is the car. Okay, stand by for key and check. Roger. Test one, two, three, two, one. End of test. Hundred percent key. Okay, the car. 
Red Com Tech, Houston Com Tech, stand by for a key and check on air to ground one only. Red Houston air to ground one, test one, two, three, two, one, in the test. Uh, Roger, air ground uh, one is uh, king, king 100%. Way to go. This is mission control at one day, one hour, 48 minutes mission elapsed time. Columbia approaching acquisition through Madrid. There'll be over overlapping coverage uh, through uh, Dakar. We'll play back the payload bay television after loss of signal at Dakar. Columbia, Houston, back with you through Madrid for four minutes. Okay, Latin play, Joe. Okay, and your pad is good for RCS-2. Okay. Joe, what's the uh, consensus on this gravity gradient? It looks pretty darn good, does it? Uh, we rolled around a little bit, but not, uh, well, I think I saw as much as 60 degrees one time, but it seemed like we stabilized less than that. Okay, sounds good. Probably an old Navy trick using a sea anchor. Right. And uh, Columbia, it looks good to us as well. Columbia, we're UHF only now through the car for 30 more seconds, and we'll be with you next through Yargadi in 30 minutes. This is Mission Control. Dakar has loss of signal. Columbia on its 18th orbit now. It's ground track uh, going diagonally down across Africa. Next contact will be through uh, the Yargadi station in Australia in 28 and a half minutes. We'll uh, play back the television from the payload bait cameras now at uh, one day, one hour, 54 minutes. This is Mission Control Houston. What's one and come take Houston, air to ground? What's one? Uh, so let me do a quick uh, voice and king check. Houston Comtec, testing one, two, three, four, five, test out. Watch one, I got 100% king, modulation go. Raj, configure for the pass. Roar, Comtech, Houston, Comtech, air to ground one. Roar, Comtech, Houston, Comtech, air to ground one. Roar, Comtech, air to ground one, you're loud and clear. You're loud and clear, meet me air to ground two. Roger. Roar, Comtech, Houston, Comtech, air to ground two. Roar, Comtech, air to ground two. Loud and clear here. You're loud and clear, Yargity, Comtech, Houston, Comtech, air to ground two. Houston, Comtech, Yargity, Comtech. Stand by for a key and check. Houston contact test one, two, three, three, two, one. In the test. Roger, 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 Roger,
This is Mission Control at one day, two hours, 22 minutes elapsed time. We're standing by for communications through Yargadi. Hello, Columbia. This is Houston back with you through Yargadi for six minutes. How do you read? Okay, they never lie. Well, we're sitting here in off three. All squared away just a little bit early to get our burn out of the road. We got the radiators all stowed. Okay, Crip, uh, we copy that. And if you've got time on your hands and a pad handy, I can read up to you the RCS test sequence number three. Raj, no hurry. Well, I just didn't get it here for Ken. We got organized. Okay, I guess John and I both stand by the copy. Okay, RCS test sequence number three. The burn attitude solution numbers are three, four, two, one, three, six, and three, two, three. Targets a one forty four by one forty four. Delta V two decimal six. And Tigo is zero 05. It's a multi burn axis. Um, make that multi axis burn with a footnote. Do the burn in your RCS2 post burn attitude. The RCS2 post burn attitude. The weight 207480. Tig. A zero zero one slash a zero three four two zero zero decimal zero. Delta V's are plus zero a decimal seven. All balls and minus two a decimal five. The post burn at three one one decimal two. 182.7 and 013.0. The end attitude time is 4 hours and 44 minutes. Over. Okay, Joe, coming back at you. Attitude is 3 4, the solution attitude is 3 4 2, 1 3 6, uh, 3 2 2, 144 by 144. Delta V total is 2.6, that's uh, 0, 0.3 seconds, multi-axis burn, with a footnote, we will do the burn in the post RCS2 post burn attitude, weight is 207480, kick time is one day, three hours, 42 minutes, 0 seconds, Delta V's are plus 0 0.3, all balls, and minus 2.5, the, uh, End time is, correction, the uh, post burn at is uh, 311.2, end time is 444, over. Okay, Crip, uh, three corrections. The burn attitude solution in the yaw is 323. 323. The Tigo is five oh, seconds. Is three, two, three. Roger that. Tigo is five seconds. And the last correction, the delta VX is plus zero decimal seven. Over. Columbia, this is Houston. Over. Okay, Joe, so, uh, a couple of those I'd already, I'm mistakenly read back down on the uh, yaw for uh, the burn at is 323. A delta VX was plus 0 0.3. What else do you have? 0 0.7, 0 0.7. Uh, roger that, Grip. And the TGO is five seconds. Okay, Grip, uh, TGO is five seconds, over. Columbia, this is Houston. We're having trouble copying uh, you, no com problem, but uh, 
Uh, we need a little stronger signal, which will get a rural valley in a couple minutes, and uh, we'll uh, finish the corrections there. Over. This is Mission Control. Yargadis had uh, loss of signal, but uh, Aurora Valley will pick up Columbia in about 30 seconds. We'll stand by. Columbia, this is Houston. Over. Hello, Joe. How do you read now? Okay, Crip, you're loud and clear. We're going to send uh -huh. some Timbus to you on water quantities this pass. Okay, fine. I'll give you back those corrections you gave me a while ago. Uh, the yaw attitude was 323, the Tigo was 05, and the uh, Delta VX was plus 0.7. Okay, Bob, that's correct, and uh, the end attitude time, we think that's right, but uh, it's 4 hours and 44 minutes. Over. Roger, 4 hours, 44 minutes. Okay, uh, Columbia, we're showing you about 7 degrees out in yaw, and it's an RCS burn coming up. Uh, uh, we're showing ohm selected at the moment. Okay, we, yeah, you're right, you're right. Thank you. And uh, that yaw will fix itself uh, on the reload for the RCS. Roger right, that. Okay, Columbia, it looks uh, right on the money to us. We're with you for two more minutes here. John and Bob, the teleprinter message uh, that you might hear rattling on its way to you is uh, DFR recorder troubleshoot uh, procedure. Okay, thank you. Roger. In Columbia, on that message, after you've had a chance to read it, uh, we indicate uh, what the talkback should read uh, several times through it. Uh, it's not clear that it will read that, and in any case, proceed on with that uh, procedure. Go right ahead with it. Uh, the talkback positions are <laughs> just for, uh, I guess, are just hopes on our part. Okay. Uh, Joe, is that something you want us to proceed, uh, proceed with, with in, in AOS, or uh, when we get it and understand it, or we got to go to do it? Okay, Columbia RCS2, you want to be in roll 048.6169 and 304.2. Stand by one. You're implying we're not in the correct attitude? Uh, that's a firm. Uh, it's a multi axis burn. You want to be in that uh, post burn attitude, which is 48.6169 and 304.2. The axis burn always use post burn attitude. And Columbia, we're in the blind. Uh, if you can't do it that way, do it in plus X. This is Mission Control. Aurora has uh, loss of signal with Columbia. Next station is uh, Hawaii in 14 and a half minutes. During the uh, this combined Yargadi Aurora pass in Australia. We passed up the information for the crew for the third reaction control system test. They're uh, about five and a half minutes away now from uh, performing the second RCS test. That time coming at uh, one day, two hours, 42 minutes. About five minutes, 20 seconds from now. For the third test, it uh, will be performed at one day, three hours, 42 minutes. Uh, the uh, delta velocity of, of the third one will be at 2.6 feet per second with a uh, burn time of... Yargity ComTech, Houston ComTech on air to ground UHF. Houston, come check your agony. Come check on 
Receiving it loud, uh, by five by. Roger, five by. Let me do a keying check with you. Roger. Houston contact, testing one, two, three, four, five, test out. Houston contact, you're going to contact. We have 100 percent ten modulation go. Rod, you can configure for your pass. Roger. This is mission control at one day, three hours, 56 minutes, mission elapsed time. Columbia's over the Indian Ocean, coming uh, up within range of the Yargity, Australia tracking station uh, very shortly. Columbia is in uh, orbit number 19. Hello, Columbia. Houston back with you through Yargity. How do you read? CDR, you're weak, uh, but readable. Uh, how's the temperature? Uh, Columbia, uh, is a fictional crew aboard today? If you keep acting like that, we'll turn the temperature down even colder. Uh, Crip, did you uh, did y'all look at that valve under the uh, mid deck floor? Uh, we th we think it may not be pin full hot, and the automatic system might be changing it on you. Uh, we're going to suggest if you can tolerate it a little while longer, pin it uh, full hot, and uh, we'll track it. And if that does not work, just turn water loop uh, one to on. Well, John says it looks like it's in full cold right now. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay, you want to just pull it, uh, pin it over to the right? Uh, roger that. We think uh, let's just hold it there for a little while, see what that does. And John and the Crip, when you do that, turn the cabin temp control switch to off after that uh, valve is pinned. This is Mission Control. The voice that came down from Columbia AOS on this pass was that of Dick Truly, the, the pilot of the backup crew that led Joe uh, Allen, the Capcom, to ask if a, if a fictional crew was aboard. Apparently, uh, the crew took some taped voices of their backup crew into orbit with them, planned to play a little practical joke. Columbia, this is Houston. You're still weak, but readable. Go ahead. Uh, Roger, that's often the case. And Columbia, we'll be with you for two and a half more minutes here. Uh, next, see you over in Hawaii in uh, about 20 minutes' time and be interested to know how your temperature is tracking. Uh, if uh, you can avoid going to the water loop one, it'll help us understand our data down here a bit better. Uh, go ahead, uh, Columbia, go ahead and uh, leave it where it is right now and let us track it for a little while. Okay, Waterloo 1, of course, 
Columbia, Houston, with 30 seconds from LOS. And, uh, John, if your question was about uh, adjustment on wa Water Loop 1, it uh, uh, should be sitting around 950 to 1,000. Okay, you might look at it next time you get a chance, because I accidentally hit it while I was trying to work on it for a loop. Okay, we understand, and uh, we'll see you in 17 minutes. This is Mission Control. Yargity has loss of signal. Columbia's ground track over Australia is too far north to uh, be acquired through uh, Aurora on this orbit. The next station to see Columbia will be Hawaii in uh, 17 minutes. This pass opened uh, with uh, the radioed voices of the uh, backup crew from the spacecraft Columbia. Both of the uh, backup crew members, Joe Engel and Dick Truly, were in the control center standing next to the uh, Capcom when that report came down. At one day, four hours, six minutes, mission elapsed time. This is Mission Control Houston. ComTech, Houston ComTech, air to ground one. Hawaii ComTech, we do loud and clear. Roger, loud and clear. Stand by, uh, Goldstone, Houston. Goldstone ComTech, Houston, air to ground one. Philippine ComTech, Houston, air to ground one. Philippine. Roger, Mila, Houston, air to ground one. Houston, Cal-MR, Compact, have you out clear? Garage, Bermuda, Houston. Bermuda, Compact, Houston, air to ground one. Okay, uh, the sites that answered, meet me on air to ground two. Hawaii, Houston, air to ground two. I read you loud and clear. Roger, Goldstone, Houston. Philippine, Houston. Copy. Five, five. Mila, Houston. Loud and clear, Houston. Bermuda, Houston. Okay, uh, stand by. Right. Okay. Computer contact, read you loud and clear. Okay, did you copy me on air ground one? I was over in the other room. We're uh, checking now. Okay, yeah, I'm going to multi-access and give you a voice and key check. This is Houston Comtech, testing one, two, Three, four, five, test out. Flight 800 percent keen, and modulate in go on both air ground one and two. Roger. We will have 100 percent keen. Roger, Tula. Mila. Mila, Comtech, Houston, air to ground two. Houston Compact, Mark Compact, I had a 100% key. The modulation was go on UHF only. Could I have another one on uh, Air Ground 1? Okay, stand by just a moment. Bermuda, Houston, Air to Ground 2. Uh, Roger, this is Bermuda, 100% key. Go for modulation on Air to Ground 2. No turn around on 1. Roger. We have it at this time. Okay, Goldstone, Houston. Okay, Myla, I'm going to give you keying. Uh, where was that? Air to Ground 1, you want it? That's Houston. Roger. Houston contact, testing one, two, three, four, five, test off. 100% key and modulation going, Mara. Roger. All sites configured per your SCM. Post on contact, Houston contact, air to ground two. Is this Goldstone? 
Houston contact my contact air ground too. Did you call me? No, um, that's all right. Configure per your SCM. I'm trying to get Goldstone. All right. Mm -hmm. Goldstone Comtech Houston, air to ground two. This is Goldstone Comtech. Okay, you're fired by. Let me uh, do a quick keying check with you. Roger. Houston Comtech, testing one, two, three, four, five, test out. Goldstone at 100% keying. Roger, you can configure for the SCM. Roger, thank you. Thank you. This is Mission Control. One day, four hours, 22 minutes elapsed time. Hawaii standing by to acquire the signal from Columbia. Hello, Columbia. This is Houston. We're back with you for seven minutes. How do you read? I'm clear, Houston. Okay, and uh, Joe, we can pull off that DFI stuff or at least get it started here if you like. Also, I wanted to inform you uh, Big arm twisting. We had a momentary uh, data glitch on uh, water quantity B in the supply uh, that dropped it to off scale low. That occurred at uh, 4 hours, 15 minutes, and 30 seconds the first time, and it glitched back again at uh, 42 seconds. Appears to be nominal now. Okay, Crip, we copy that, and uh, we'd make Mr. Fendel happy if uh, you could do that test. Uh, uh, pretty soon. Also, uh, John, we're going to be late in coming up uh, with the pad for the RCS4 burn a little later than maybe you'd like. Uh, you do the burn in your current attitude, however, so uh, the pad should be pretty easy when, when we do get it to you. Okay, please do. Okay, we're stopped. Recorder may see. Talk back is microphone. Roger, we copy. Play back reverse. Talk back is gray. Okay. Play back forward. Talk back microphone then gray. Okay, very good. Roger. Okay, main feed, recorder circle breaker cycle for greater than two seconds. Roger that. Power 2540. Roger, we're logging it too. Okay, Crip, uh, thank you for that. Uh, we're running the clock. It will help you keep track of the 33 minutes. No sense in uh, spending all your time worrying about that. We'll try to watch it for you. And we're with you for three and a half more minutes on this pass. Columbia, we're 30 seconds from LOS. And we'll see you next through Buckhorn in uh, about three minutes. Okay. How's your cabin temp doing? Getting better. Walking right out, of course. Okay. This is Mission Control. Hawaii has lost a signal. Buckhorn uh, will acquire Columbia in two and a half minutes. This is 
Elizabeth Mission Control at one day, four hours, 32 minutes elapsed time. Columbia is approaching the northwest coast of the United States. We'll have a long pass over the continental United States. Columbia is now on orbit number 20. Columbia, Houston, back with you through Buckhorn for 19 minutes. Over. You're loud and clear as well. Columbia, Houston, uh, if now's a good time, I've got a partial pad for your RCS test sequence for. No hurry, your option. Uh, why don't you enjoy that a few more minutes, Crip? Uh, I'm just going to give you the very bottom uh, part of the pad, uh, and there's no hurry. Uh, really, the main thing that we need out of it is uh, it, it, the take you've already given us. All we need is the bump of these, and we'll be in good shape. Uh, Rod, uh, go ahead and enjoy the view. Wait one. Columbia, Houston. Okay, troops. Uh, Edwards uh, is is calling for clear right now. Observation is clear, although there uh, may be very high thin deck there, which uh, don't know whether you could have seen that or not. Uh, Northrop, on the other hand, has several decks, uh, broken clouds at the moment. Okay, John and Crip, we copy that. Uh, uh, just for planning purposes, the forecast for tomorrow is about the same at both places, although Northrop may go a bit more broken than uh, what you're looking at today. Okay, yeah, Edward just cleared our block. Good, that's, that's our kind of IFR weather, right? You betcha. Okay, John, uh, the wind's forecast for Edwards tomorrow. Uh, about 10 knots out of uh, 240 degrees. Sounds good. I think that's uh, ready made to order. Are ready to copy the pants? Okay, Columbia, this is an incomplete pad uh, for the RCS test sequence four down at the bottom there. It is a multi-axis burn, and you're to execute uh, the burn in your current uh, RCS post-burn attitude. Also at the bottom of the page, your post-burn attitude for the test four sequence is two, four, six, decimal three, two, zero, seven, decimal six, zero, zero, four, decimal seven, and the end attitude time is one day, six hours, and 14 minutes. And uh, we'll get the other data to you as it becomes available. We're with you uh, on this pass for seven more minutes. Okay, so that's the also uh, post burn attitude. And, uh, Two forty six three two seven six and zero zero four point seven. And the end of burn time is six fourteen and the rest of it's coming later. That's right, thank you. Columbia, this is Houston. Okay, uh you should go out over the Atlantic uh when you get a moment, we got some added notes for Cecil B. DeCrippen for the uh, TV setup 
to occur at uh, five hours and 45 minutes. And give a call when you're ready for that. Uh, if you want, Bob, uh, you could put the notes in the TV uh, setup uh, page. Columbia, Houston with a complete pad when you're ready. Okay, at the top now, the burn attitude for the solution numbers 145327004. The targets 144 by 144. Delta V, two decimal zero. Tigo is zero four. The weight, 207416. TIG is uh, 5 hours and 12 minutes. Delta V's, minus 0 9 plus 1, 3, and plus 1, a decimal 2. Uh, the post burn ats and the end attitude time are the same. Over. Could you say again your delta V's? Is that minus 0.09? Uh, the, it's, delta V's are minus 0 decimal 9, plus 1 decimal 3, and plus 1 decimal 2. Over. Okay, coming back at you. The burn attitude, two minutes remaining here if you want to take those uh, TV setup notes. They're not very long. Okay, go ahead. Okay, just four of them, Bob. Uh, this is for the TV03 camera setup. Uh, the first one is ensure no overhead lights in the field of view. Second one is turn all the mid-deck floodlights to on. The third one is attach the aux light to the Velcro on MO42 Foxtrot. And the final for the uh, Emmy Award is you need the camera focus uh, to full near. We're one minute from LOS, and we'll be back in six minutes. Over. Columbia Houston, uh, John, on your side, we'd like you to take free on loop number two and put it in red flow. Over. Okay. And going over the hill here, uh, we've run 26 minutes now on the DFI recorder, so we've got seven minutes to go. Uh, we'll give you another reminder uh, when you come up over the car. Over. John, free on loop uh, two controller to auto A, please, over. The car, ComTech, Houston, ComTech, air to ground. The car, ComTech. Okay, key and check. Houston, ComTech, test one, two, three, two, one. In the test. Fire percent key. Roger the car. Come forward for your pass. Roger. This is Mission Control. The car is the next station with overlapping coverage through uh, Ascension Island. During this pass over the United States, uh, John Young asked about uh, current weather at Edwards and at Northrop. The weather at Edwards is good. Uh, Northrop, uh, uh, some cloud decks and uh, some 
High winds have been reported there, but Edwards, uh, very good weather. Also forecast is uh, very good weather for the landing day tomorrow. Information for the uh, fourth reactor control system test firing was passed up. That's a uh, delta velocity is two feet per second. Duration of the burn four seconds. Ignition time is uh, one day, five hours, 12 minutes. Roger, configure for your pass. Columbia, this is Houston, back with you through Dakar for 10 minutes. Over. Okay, we're at 302. The burn's all set up and the targets look okay. Okay, very good. And, uh, Crip, uh, was there any question you had about the TV setup at this time? No, okay. And Columbia, we're coming up on the 33-minute uh, egg timer time for your DFI recorder. Mark. Okay, it's still, uh, still gray, so then turn yourself off. Okay, okay, we copy that it's still gray, Bob. Thank you. Okay, I went to stop, and it did stop. Columbia, this is Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Okay, John and Crip, I uh, want to modify your RCS4 burn pad as follows. It is to be a zero delta V maneuver. Over. That's a firm. And you can move into the post burn attitude at any time. Okay, well, sure do. Well, proceed. Roger that. You can certainly hear these big thrusters going off up here in the nose. They really move this vehicle. Roger. It's really, sport it's really sporty. Roger, understand you can hear the thrusters. Thank you. Sim Soup will be disappointed to hear that. Columbia, Houston, uh, we're curious to know whether your cabin temp has uh, been changing any. And we're asking from a comfort point of view more than from what the uh, temperature itself reads. It seems to be warm enough, but uh, then again, it seems to be uh, not too warm. Columbia, we're looking ahead towards your sleep period tonight, and we're thinking we may ask you to, to uh, have both the water loops on to increase that temperature a bit more, even. Okay. Columbia, Houston, uh, Crip, continue your comment about the procedure on the uh, DFI recorder. Uh, did you report that the talkback finally did change? Okay, and then, uh, so you did go to stop and then uh, uh, open the circuit breaker, the last step on the page? 
Okay, thank you very much. Columbia, we're 30 seconds from LOS. We'll be back in five minutes to Botswana. Ascension Island has loss of signal. Next station is Botswana in about four and a half minutes. Continuing to troubleshoot the development flight instrumentation recorder. Found out during this pass that uh, that recorder still will not stop automatically. And the crew has to stop it and pull the circuit breaker. The INCO will continue to study data and come up with other troubleshooting procedures. Also during this pass we changed the uh, the RCS number four firing change in velocity to zero. That had been uh, two feet per second. That, that was changed to zero. That test scheduled in uh, two minutes, 15 seconds. That's before we will have acquisition at uh, Botswana. Crew reported that they can hear, see, and feel the reaction control system thrusters firing. One day, five hours, ten minutes, this is Mission Control Houston. What's one contact, Houston contact? Here to ground. What's one? Am I for key and check? Houston contact up one. Two, three, two, one. In the test. Watch one and I'm King. Noise way to go. Roger. Configure for your pass. Five hours, 13 minutes elapsed time. We're standing by to talk to Columbia through Botswana. Columbia, Houston, see you through Botswana for just under five minutes. Over. Okay, Rick. Loud and clear. A uh, crip was that for us? Over. We're talking to John downstairs. Got the wrong button. Roger. Sorry, my life. Plummy, Houston, have a note for you. Uh, panel R2 reconfiguration, if that's handy to you. Over. Roger. Uh, go ahead, Rick. Okay, on uh, panel R2, your ET umbilical door mode switch, we'd like it to go to GPC, and that would preclude a micro switch failure from causing the motors from driving against the torque limiters. And uh, if you have one of your yellow plastic switch covers handy, you might slip it over. Columbia, Houston, we've got 50 more seconds in this pass. We'll see you next at Yargany at 5 hours and 31 minutes. Over. Sounds good. 531. It sounds like it, John. But you're right, he's got time for shave. Roger, just, uh, well, 
Belay that. What's using that Navy talk? You guessed it. This is Mission Control. Columbia has moved out over the Indian Ocean out of range of the Botswana station now. The next station to see Columbia will be Yargity in Australia in uh, 12 minutes. At one day, five hours, 19 minutes, this is Mission Control, Houston. Yargity, ComTech, Houston, ComTech, air to ground. Houston, ComTech, Yargity, ComTech, uh, receiving you, fire by. Roger, fire by. This is Houston, ComTech, testing one, two, three, four, five, test out. Houston, ComTech, Yargity, ComTech, receiving you, uh, correction, 100% king, modulation, go. Roger, configure for the pass. Roger. This is Mission Control at one day, five hours, 31 minutes elapsed time. Columbia will be within range of the Yargity station in about uh, 10 seconds. Hello, Columbia. This is Houston through Yargady for seven minutes. How do you read? Okay, John, you're loud and clear as well. And Columbia, we are going to ask for another RCS maneuver using the current attitude. It will be a body access maneuver, and we'll have uh, more information shortly. Okay. Columbia, this is Houston. Over. Okay, looking ahead a bit, uh, over Guam, we're going to ask you to uh, interconnect to the right ohms and also to bump up the pressure in the, in the left ohms. Uh, we're also sending a one-line teleprinter message to you there. We'd like you to glance at uh, before you get to Hawaii. And uh, finally, uh, uh, we'll be with you for three more minutes here, and I'll give you a pad for this next burn shortly. Columbia, Houston. Columbia, this is Houston, over. Hello, Columbia, this is Houston. Do you read? Okay, uh, you're weak, but uh, uh, we're basically in the blind. We like a body axis burn at the time, 5 hours, 42 minutes, and 35 seconds. And uh, the delta V is as follows. Delta V body X of plus 4.4. Y plus 3.4 and Z of minus 2.1. And that means burn the body VGs up to those values. And do the burn on ops 2, please. Over. Okay, Columbia, the VGs count up, and we want X to count up to a plus a four decimal four, a y plus a three decimal four, and z minus two decimal one. Over. And that's done with the OPS2 major mode display. Okay, John, at uh, the time of 5 hours, 42 minutes, and 35 seconds, 
We want uh, the body axis burns of delta V X 4.4, Y of 3.4, and Z of minus 2.1. Over. And that's in Ops 2, and we'll see you shortly uh, through Guam. orbit, but we'll begin orbit number 21, uh, just about acquisition time at uh, Guam in uh, 5 minutes 10 seconds. During the next uh, pass over the continental United States, there will be television from Columbia while uh, John Young and Bob Crippen converse with Vice President George Bush. That scheduled for the next pass over the continental United States. At one day, five hours, 41, 42 minutes elapsed time, this is Mission Control Houston. Columbia, Houston through Guam. Do you read over? Columbia, this is Houston through Guam for four minutes. How do you read? Clear, okay, uh, we did know it was only semi awkward. We understand that, Crip. Okay, very good. Columbia, Houston, we're with you for three more minutes here. Going to send the, some Timbus to you, and you have a, a one-liner on the teleprinter. Okay. And, Crip, uh, one convenient switch uh, to the right arms, if you would. Okay, we understand. And uh, we learned a lesson from that one as well. In Columbia, the reselected jets look good. Columbia, go ahead and maintain the post burn attitude, the current one, please. Columbia, Houston, uh, we're with you for 40 more seconds here, and uh, we'll see you next through Hawaii, short pass through Hawaii. Sorry to rush you that way. We're trying to squeeze a little bit more time for the press conference to follow, and we're looking forward to that. This is Mission Control. Guam has uh, loss of signal. Tom, not too good over that station this pass. Now on orbit 21, Hawaii uh, acquires Columbia in uh, seven minutes. At one day, five hours, 52 minutes elapsed time. This is Mission Control, Houston. Philippine Comtech, Houston. 
Head to ground one. Two to contact. Raj Goldstone, Houston. Goldstone. Mala, Houston. Head to ground one. Mala. Bermuda, Houston. Bermuda. Hawaii, Houston. Read you loading, sir. Cool, I'm on multi access, sir, to ground one and two. Houston contact, testing one, two, three, four, five, test out. Goldstone has 100% king. Tula Houston. Tula has 100% king. Mila Houston. Mila had 100% king. Bermuda Houston. Bermuda negative, I had 100% key, no go for modulation. Can we try again, please? Roger, Hawaii, Houston. 100% king, audio good. Roger. Bermuda, Houston, you want it on one or both? Both, please. Okay. Houston contact, testing one, two, three, four, five, test out. Bermuda, Houston, air to ground one. Uh, Roger, I'm going on air to ground two. I'm still waiting for a turnaround on air to ground one. Okay, I'm going to have... Okay, we're on it this time. We're ready. You're ready for one, okay? Houston, contact. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Test out. Bermuda, contact. We're going for modulation up to 15. Roger. All stations, uh, configure per your SCM. Hello. Contact. Uh, White House is shifting contact air to ground one. Okay, we need side by air to ground one. How many? Give me a test count, please. Uh, test uh, one, two, three, four, five. Five, four, three, two, one. Roger, you're loud and clear. Thank you very much. White House, Houston. White House, Houston. Hello, Columbia, Houston, with you through Hawaii for two and a half minutes. How do you read? Columbia, this is Houston with you for 20 more seconds. We'll go into a keyhole, be with you momentarily, and then see you, uh, CONUS, in about uh, five minutes after that. Okay, Bill. This is Mission Control. Columbia, Houston, for 30 more seconds now. Uh, would you turn on the minus Z star tracker for warm up, please? Oh, my, oh, my. Okay. We'll be back in about six minutes and be looking for television. This is Mission Control. Hawaii's had loss of signal. Buckhorn will acquire in uh, three and a half minutes, and we will have television uh, when we get to Goldstone. This will be a uh, television of the, the crew and the uh, Vice President Bush. We're three minutes away now. Acquisition through the West Coast will stand by. White House Houston, contact air to ground one. Would you make a short test count, please? White House Houston, short test count, please. 
crown, Goddard. Crown, Goddard. White House? Yes, Houston, uh, would you short guest count, please? Roger, testing. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Roger, you're loud and clear. Thank you very much. Houston, you're loud and clear also. Mission Control. Buckhorn has acquisition now. Hello, Columbia, Houston. Back with you through Buckhorn for 16 minutes. How do you read? Roger, you're loud and clear as well. Uh, we'll pick it up at Goldstone, and uh, let's see, that'll be a few more seconds yet. Stand by. We're receiving television now. Okay, Columbia, we're getting a TV picture now, and see you floating over into position there. Looks pretty good. All right. John and Crip, we have a telephone call coming into the space network from the White House for the crew members of the spaceship Columbia. We would like uh, uh, to patch them through. If you would, please, Mr. Vice President, go ahead. Absolutely. Uh, 
Uh, Roger, Columbia. You've got your normal Capcoms back now. Okay. Uh, the only bad part about it, Joe, is we're going to have to come down. Well, don't come down in that attitude. <laughs> well, that's a pretty good attitude. Uh, we're getting a, a terrific uh, television picture now. Beautiful. I'm not sure the scenery you just got, but whatever. That's a great camera. It really puts on a nice picture. Even Griffin can run it sometimes. You know, people are worried about the fifth act. You get in there and slow it out. Oh, this is great. A crip, a uh, dollarless. Uh, very uh, much rookies down here are wondering how you are enjoying zero gravity flight. You look like you're enjoying it. This is mission control. We've handed over to Tula Peak and uh, lost the picture at Goldstone. We expect to reacquire television at uh, Merritt Island Station. This is Mission Control. We do not now expect uh, television through uh, Merritt Island. Flight director said we will go back to normal operations. Hello, Joe. Uh, you tag back up with us again? Uh, Roger. We're uh, right here. Be here for seven minutes, Bob. Okay. It sounded like you dropped out there. Be advised uh, for GNNC. At uh, 6.03, we will have 60358 to be specific. We had a display app message, uh, and he's the only one that's really got any good visibility into it unless I go ahead and do some uh, some reads. Uh, we were not activating any of those switches at the time. Uh, it's probably not a big consequence anyhow, but uh, he might take a look at it. Okay, Crip, we understand that, and we see uh, that fault message down here as, as well. Okay, and are we go to go uh, to maneuver to this IMU line attitude? Wait one. Uh, go right ahead and maneuver uh, to that attitude when you're ready. Columbia, we may have been in a handover right then. You are go to maneuver to that attitude. Roger that. We have that work. Okay. And Crep, uh, we're curious after seeing that good TV, just wondering how you're finding zero G by now. It looks like it's uh, more fun than you can describe. You got it, baby. Okay, thank you. Restraints and everything to work down there in the mid deck, and uh, you don't need any restraints. It's, everything is just uh, right within your fingertips. Don't even need any back here on the aft deck to work out the windows. Very interesting. So it would be nice to have some cordless mics up here. That's the only thing you got to worry about, staying connected and not getting yourself wrapped around something. Roger, we copy that. Joe, I screwed you all up while I go. I did not get uh, my paper tied down on my teleprinter because we had a bunch of things going on, and you sent up some messages, uh, none of which... Uh, came through clearly because of that. Uh, the last clear message I had was the one-liner you gave me about uh, the, the telecom we just had. Okay, Crip, uh, it may be better than you think. We have not sent a message since then. So, uh, for the uh, record keeping it straight. Somebody was sending me something. Raj, I uh, probably reminded you once too often of that uh, one that you've already gotten. No big deal at all. And we're with you for three more minutes here. And what I was saying was uh, <laughs> something was sending a lot, lot of traffic on the teleprinter there. Uh, we're going to, uh, Bob, we're going to look into that. That might be a bit more of a mystery. Columbia, Houston, uh, with regard to the teleprinter message, if any of your ATUs have air to ground two, in transmit receive, you may be uh, hearing yourself turn around on, on uh, the teleprinter. 
Columbia Houston will be going LOS in 30 seconds. Be back with you through Ascension in 14 minutes. Roger that. See you there. This is Mission Control. Columbia has a uh, loss of signal. Next station uh, will be uh, Ascension Island. Be a short pass there, about three minutes. Bob Crippen indicated during this pass that uh, he's had no problem adjusting to uh, the lack of gravity. Said that he's enjoying zero G very much. Both crewmen reported uh, no restraints needed to work in either the mid or aft decks that had been a question prior to flight. They seem to think that uh, they can perform their duties on those decks uh, without constraints. Ascension is about 12 minutes away. At one day, six hours, 25 minutes, mission elapsed time. This is Mission Control, Houston. Ascension Comtech, Houston Comtech, air to ground one. Ascension Comtech. Roger, Ascension, uh, I plan to normally do my interface checks at uh, your AOS minus five minutes. So Goddard doesn't have you cut through to me until that time, so I had to specially go to him and have him cut our lines through, but we can get started a little bit early here. I'm going to give you key and modulation air to ground one and two. And Ascension, we would like you in comm configuration Lima. For teleprinter uplink, can you confirm that configuration with me, please? Stand by. Roger. Confirm configuration, Lima. Roger, stand by for key and modulation. We'll go on one and two. Houston contact, testing one, two, three, four. Test out. Confirm 100% key. Voice go. Roger, Ascension. At this time, I'm going to place teleprinter modulation on air to ground two. Would you please confirm good levels on the site cord with me, please? This is mission control at one day, six hours, 37 minutes elapsed time. Columbia is coming uh, within range of the tracking station on Ascension Island now. Columbia, this is Houston through Ascension for three minutes. How do you read? Loud and clear. How many? Okay, Chris, you're loud and clear. We're going to send a new state vector up to you this pass, and we've got some good news to go with it. Uh, We've uh, looked at your freeze-dried GPC dump and find no miscompares at all. Very good. Got a couple of config uh, requests for you. Uh, we'd like uh, the high-load duct heater to off when convenient. And also on R13, would you check the RAD control switches? Uh, we think they might still be in RAD deploy position, and they should be off. I'll tell you right on that one. I just saw that one. We corrected it. Sorry about that. And uh, let's check the off the duck heater off. Is that right? Uh, high, the high load duck heater, Bob. Okay, the high load duck is off at this time. Okay, and like uh, to give you two reminders, uh, we'd like for you to do the SM2 checkpoint for the cue card whenever it's convenient for you. No hurry. Uh, and the last one uh, for you, Crip, when you get your suit on, uh, you might want to check to see whether or not you can push that DFI recorder circuit breaker behind you when you're in your seat there. Uh, might save you some trouble later on. It looks like that may be the procedure that uh, we'll be asking you to use tomorrow. Okay, Joe, and 
I'll uh, make a note to myself, and if you happen to be talking to me while I'm in my seat, well, uh, don't you holler at me about that again. We'll certainly do that. And uh, we're with you for a minute longer here. Be looking for you to uh, start the, the PTC test shortly. Roger that. See where that is, kid. This is Mission Control. Ascension has uh, loss of signal. Next acquisition through uh, Botswana in uh, nine minutes. Somebody will see you in a nine minutes through Botswana. Botswana ComTech, this is Houston ComTech, testing one, two, three, four, five, test out. Has 100% key. Modulation, go. Copy, Botswana. Configure for your pass, please. Roger. This is Mission Control at one day, six hours, 49 minutes elapsed time. We're standing by for short pass at the Botswana station. Hello, Columbia. Houston, back with you through Botswana. How do you read? Okay, a few minor items. To check the teleprinter, Bob, uh, teleprinter paper, we did send another short message to you. You might want to take a glance at that. And we're standing by for your IMU aligned torquing angle, so when convenient. Uh, Columbia will be with you for just 20 more seconds. Uh, we'll belay the angles until uh, a little later. Uh, Bob, you may have overshot on the red control switches. Uh, they should be in the center position off. And uh, with this pass, we are handing over to the very able bronze team. Uh, we'll watch the fun from the back room and look forward to being with you tomorrow. This is Mission Control. Botswana's had uh, loss of signal. Next acquisition through Guam in 25 minutes here in the Mission Control Center, the uh, bronze team of flight controllers led by Flight Director Chuck Lewis is preparing to take over the shift from uh, Don Putty and the Crimson team. The change of shift news conference is scheduled for 2 p.m. Central Standard Time in room 135 at the JSC News Center. One day, six hours, 54 minutes elapsed time. This is Mission Control, Houston. Roger, Kwan, this is Houston, testing one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one, test out. Houston, contact one, contact, I see Guam, C-10, what's the scope, air ground one and two. Thank you, Guam. Configure for your pass, please. Guam, welcome. Yeah, Houston, the Browns team's back with you through Guam for the next seven months. How are things going? Uh, this is uh, the CDR talking to you through uh, almost uh, in a seat in uh, Los Angeles. Okay, copy that. And uh, where where are you crew up in your uh, suit activities? Looking down the parallel bay from the suit out. I mean, down the mid deck, excuse me.
Columbia, Houston. We're running a contest on low data rate now. Does uh, this voice sound any different to you than uh, high data rate voice? At first, uh, you don't sound so scotchy, but other than that, it sounds okay. Uh, Roger, we copy that. Uh, it does sound a little scratchier uh, and a little hollow, too, because you got your helmet on. Columbia Houston, we're one minute to LOS. Uh, stateside is next at 742. And uh, just a reminder to Crip, uh, when you get ready to go in grass to the sea, don't forget to take that swizzle stick and uh, give a go at that circuit breaker. Okay, I'll try to do that. You still downstairs, I'll call And John, when we come up stateside, if it's convenient, we're going to be asking you for the IMU torquing angles. Uh, uh, if it's not convenient, that's no problem. I just thought you might have them ready there if you could do it. Okay. This is Mission Control Houston, one day, seven hours, 26 minutes, end of the flight of Columbia. During that just completed pass at Guam, Commander John Young reported that he had indeed completed suiting up and was strapped into the seat on the flight deck while Bob Crippen was still on the mid deck getting suited up in this suit donning and doffing test. Uh, also as part of this exercise they will attempt to uh, manage the circuit breaker with a so-called swizzle stick for the uh, DFI recorder that seems to be running amok. Next station upcoming will be Buckhorn, Goldstone, etc. on the states. We're estimating uh, the change of shift briefing with the offgoing flight director, Don Pet Putty, at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time in the Johnson Space Center newsroom. He will be accompanied by uh, Johnson Space Center Deputy Director of Flight Operations, Gene Krantz. That will time out to just shortly after last uh, station pass at uh, across the states and Quito, Ecuador. 13 minutes away from uh, West Coast stations. At one hour, uh, one day, seven hours, 28 minutes. This is Mission Control, Houston. Goldstone, ComTech, Houston, ComTech. Right ground. Goldstone, ComTech. Roger, Tula, ComTech, Houston, ComTech, right ground. Tula, ComTech. Mala, ComTech, Houston, ComTech, right ground. Mala, ComTech. Roger, stand by for a key and the mighty license check. This is Houston testing one, two, three, four. Houston, contact air ground. Five on contact. I read you loud and clear, how many? Reading you five back. Testing one, two. Testing one, two, three, four, five, and the four. Okay, we have 100% keen and modulations go both channels. Roger, configure for your pass. This is Mission Control Houston, 30 seconds away from reacquisition through the states, beginning at Buckhorn, Goldstone, Tula, and uh, almost overlapping into Quito, Ecuador, following uh, the stateside pass. 
At approximately 2 p.m. Central Standard Time, the change of shift press conference will take place in the Johnson Space Center newsroom. Oh, Columbia Houston, Radio Loud and Clear. We should be with you through stateside and keto for about the next 20 minutes. Okay, Hank, uh, John's already completed his shooting full activity, and I just uh, finished mine, and I wanted to make sure I got a comm check with you over uh, through the suit, and you sound good, how about me? Reading you loud and clear, Crip, and uh, did you have a chance to try the swizzle stick on the circuit breaker? Ah, good reminder, because I was about to forget it. Hey, Crip, I'm just about to be here. Columbia Houston, your state vector is good. We will not be sending you one here. And, uh, John, whenever it's convenient, uh, we'll be standing by for the IMU torque denial. Thank uh, He's just flying out of his seat and so forth. Uh, we'll have to get those to you all while. Okay, no problem. Whenever it's convenient. Columbia Houston, uh, just as a reminder, uh, there's a... a Call out there at 7:40 in the uh, cap regarding the primary RCS uh, PTC test. I think all you got to do there is just uh, go be auto norm. Uh, I'm sorry, Hank. Uh, we're all caught up. Say it again. Roger. I think uh, just call up the normal jets for the rest of that PTC test, and you'll be all right. Just be auto norm. You need that now. Uh, whenever you can work it in. Okay, well, that's easy enough. I'm going to check out your swizzle stick for you. Henry? Yes, sir. Go ahead. I might accidentally do it, but I, I can't do it now. I can just barely lay the uh, top of the swizzle stick on top of it, but I can't get any pressure on it. Okay, do you have your uh, coke fittings uh, hooked up on top, or did you loosen those? Uh, I got them connected. Richard suggested you might uh, be able to undo those and make it. Oh, yeah. I could, I could still get out of the seat make it, too. I mean, I don't understand what it is you're asking. When is it you're thinking about you might ask me to do this? Somewhere along about the TIG minus four minutes. to get them after the burn or something. Okay, Chris, uh, don't uh, bother trying to work at it anymore now. We were just uh, seeing about how difficult it was. It's more difficult. Yeah, it, is it is extremely difficult, Miss Sue. Okay, we copy that. Why don't you just press ahead? How's your boss team doing today? Doing real well. Uh, looks like you folks are pressing along real good, too. Oh, yeah, we just going right and left here. Good for you to make it back from the launch. That's a farm. What'd she think all that? She thought that was super, about the best thing she'd seen. Really impressive. It sounds like somebody's out firing how outside the window. Look, well, they really like that about the howitzers. They shake the whole house. Thank God. Uh, I'm going to drop Tom here unless you guys have got something uh, for me. I'll probably. We're not going to have either of us on the headset for a couple of minutes. I'll get, a, I'll get my other headset on just as soon as I can, if that'd be okay. Okay, and uh, one quick quickie here before you pop off here. We, we, the reason we're hung up on this DFI, we're trying to get the, the entry data prepared, prepared for that, and uh, we don't know exactly where we are on this uh, the DFI tape to know how much we've got. Uh, we're also 
So you might be thinking about it. You might want to uh, uh, get out your uh, orbit officer and crew system checklist, but we're considering a change out of the DFI reporter in order that we can have that data uh, for, uh, for entry. Okay, I understand, and uh, I won't, won't need as much as anybody, but uh, I uh, feel that trying to put in that circle breaker a couple minutes before the brown uh, jeopardizes uh, what we're trying to do. Okay, and, and we and we copy that and uh, confirm that, that there will be a management meeting this afternoon to try to decide which way we want to go with this thing. Okay. Okay, can I drop off here for a minute or something? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, we got about uh, two minutes. We might drop out shortly. We'll pick right back up at Keto. We'll be with you until 8.02. I'm in Houston. We're going to be down for 10, 20 seconds for a long handover. We'll just have to get we'll back to get with back you, Crip, on, uh, on uh, when we plan to dump that. that. Uh, we're coming up we're coming on a long LOS, and the reason I had to get that to you, our next contact will be stateside again at 0917. And also, Crip, at your convenience, uh, we we recommend the SM checkpoint. And then convenient, yeah. How about that time? I get one normally there. This is Mission Control Houston, LOS through Quito. Change of shift briefing commencing moment momentarily in the uh, new center. We'll record all air ground and play it back at the conclusion of the press conference. We go now to the uh, JSC newsroom. Okay, Okay, good afternoon. We're ready to start. The gentleman here to participate in the change of shift briefing uh, from my right, Mr. Tom Mosier from the JSC Structures and Mechanics Division, Flight Director on the Crimson Team, Don Putty, and Gene Kranz, the Deputy Director of Flight Operations, P U D D Y, Don, D O N. <laughs> M-O-S-E-R. Says we're notorious, doesn't it? Franz, K-R-A-N-Z. O-T. <laughs> I think uh, Don will have a summary of the shift he'll give you first. Let me, uh, let me start off by saying that uh, our activities so far today uh, have gone <clears throat> real well. Uh, we see no problems whatsoever uh, with any of our systems uh, associated with... Uh, the uh, in preparation for entry and the entry phase tomorrow. 
I know a lot of you have uh, asked some questions and have expressed uh, a great deal of interest as far as what we've been doing in the area of uh, the tile work. Tom Mosier from our Structures and Mechanics Division has been participating with uh, flight control personnel and the personnel from the contractor facility as far as working that particular problem. And I'd like at this time to let him give you kind of a quick synopsis of where we stand on that. Tom? OK, thank you, Don. Uh, as you all know, we've seen some uh, tiles uh, which are missing on the uh, left and right ohms pod. Uh, these tiles, the largest, largest one of which is uh, an 8 inch by 8 inch tile. There are several others which are smaller. I think the most important thing here is that uh, uh, these tiles myth missing will not uh, have any effect on the safety uh, during entry of the vehicle. We have uh, analyzed in detail these uh, particular locations. We have test data to support uh, our conclusions. They are uh, they're, they're thin tiles by nature and therefore are lower temperature tiles than some of the other tiles on the vehicle. Uh, we don't really see any problem at all with this. I think the worst thing we would see from this is uh, possibly uh, maybe having to do some local repair on the Elms pod uh, as a result of these tiles missing. Let me come back uh, before we open up questions and, and hit a couple things here. Uh, as you're probably well aware, today we had uh, four uh, RCS uh, translational tests. We also put the uh, payload bay door uh, through a cycling. Uh, those all went perfectly nominal. We ran a gravity gradient test, and basically what we're trying to accomplish here uh, is strictly something that we don't plan to use for this particular flight, but something that we may like to use in future flights in that it saves us a considerable amount of RCS propellant. Uh, basically, we're turning off all the RCS thrusters. All we have to do is maneuver into the attitude, and then the vehicle actually stabilizes itself and maintains uh, a fairly uh, consistent attitude profile, although it may rotate slightly. Uh, it costs us about uh, 10 to 20 pounds of RCS propellant to, to maneuver in and maneuver out of that, as opposed to some six pounds an hour uh, of propellant uh, if we're able to use the small vernier jets, or 12 pounds an hour if we're able to use the big jets. So you can see if we were going to uh, stay uh, for an extended period, this would be quite an RCS savings to us. We also uh, did a ground commanded TV test. I'm sure some of you were able to see the pictures uh, that came out of that. Basically, we're using the TV cameras that were located in the payload bay. We actually looked down the payload bay, and then you also saw some views of the uh, Earth. We do have on the ground uh, complete capability for manipulating those, part those particular cameras. We do have limited capability through ground commands of uh, exercising uh, the cameras that are located in the uh, uh, crew compartment. Uh, I think the crew is now comfortable. You probably heard uh, several discussions going on as far as crew comfort. Uh, we have a cabin uh, temperature controller uh, that yesterday we checked and we found out that it was uh, in a cold position. We moved it to the full hot position. Uh, you probably heard some comments uh, earlier this afternoon that they were again feeling cold. We went down and checked that same controller. Uh, it had moved uh, to the full cold position again. We have gone ahead at this particular point in time and pinned that particular uh, controller, the valve, uh, in the full hot position. Uh, we're not sure exactly what caused the problem. It could have resulted either from a a bias in the electronic network in that particular controller, or there are some temperatures that are located in the various uh, ducts that the uh, cabin uh, atmosphere is fed through. One of those could uh, have a bias or be failed. Uh, if the po position that we have it pinned in now is uh, results in too hot a temperature over a period of time, uh, we can go ahead and pin it in a couple of uh, intermediate positions. Uh, so we think we have that problem under control. If we still stay too cold, even with all these actions, we, you may hear 
that tonight we're going to be running both water loops. And basically when we do that, although we normally only run water, one water loop, uh, we're just trying to fake out the system and create uh, a less flow through of, of water flow and air flow through the cabin heat exchanger so that we get more heat into the cabin heat exchanger. As far as the rest of today's activities, they're primarily associated with running some additional uh, RCS tests. Uh, we, I think we also have one uh, additional session of uh, TV tonight. Tomorrow, activities from, uh, from wake up until uh, landing is, the, is dedicated to the, the orbit prep, the entry, entry and landing. And then, of course, we're going to have a approximately a 45-minute period of post-landing activities before the crew actually uh, egresses the vehicle. The weather at Edwards, which is our primary landing site, is excellent. There may be some thin scattered uh, cirrus uh, at around 25,000 feet. Uh, this would be absolutely no problem whatsoever. The weather at our backup landing site, uh, Northrop Strip, uh, isn't quite as good but uh, is acceptable. Uh, as I mentioned a minute ago, we have absolutely no anomalies whatsoever in any system uh, right now that are causing us to modify any of our nominal uh, entry procedures. I think uh, most of you are, have been able to detect, uh, we on the ground who have worked with the crew certainly have been, that the crew is in excellent spirits. Uh, starting this morning with waltzing Matilda being played down, uh, uh, the comments uh, that the crew has expressed and their ease of being able to accomplish uh, uh, tasks on orbit. Uh, basically, the one comment they made was they're sure going to hate to return to the simulator. And what they meant there <laughs> was uh, moving about uh, at the pace that we tried on the ground to put them through sometimes in a simulator is very hard uh, when they're doing that in space and can move at the speeds that some of you have seen on the TV shows. Uh, that's not a difficult task at all. Uh, I think it's also indicative of their spirit and their proficiency by the way that they have consistently uh, stayed ahead of the timeline. Gene, unless you have some opening comments, uh, I'll open it for questions. Start here in the front row. Roger with this from Atlanta Constitution. Was, could you clarify for us if there were ever any pictures taken of the underside of the craft, and what was the result of that? There have been no pictures taken of the underside of the craft that in any way are usable. We've got uh, all kinds of people who are sending pictures, and you can watch this blip move across the sky. In fact, we're playing back some data from Anderson Peak right now. Uh, so to put, there's been awful lot of rumors on this thing, and officially, and Organizationally, operationally, we have no usable photos obtained from the ground stations. The problem we have with that statement is that we have heard from uh, other sources within Air Force and so on and so forth that uh, some surveillance of the underside of the craft has been accomplished to the point where it has been determined that there is no obvious danger uh, to the tile surface and so on and so forth. There's no obvious damage to the tile surface. Uh, can you confirm or deny that? I can't confirm that. Uh, I believe from a standpoint of the, uh, the position that we find ourselves in right now, we are working with the Air Force in using uh, available resources, available uh, DOD resources in particular. Uh, from that standpoint, we have conducted no survey of that type to this time, and uh, any further discussion on that subject is classified. Rick Welburn, CBC. I was wondering, are you planning any extra safety measures for tomorrow's reentry, or is it going to be straight as planned? As I mentioned earlier, uh, we have no reason uh, to believe that we have any systems problems that are going to cause us any uh, deviation whatsoever from our nominal procedures. We don't expect uh, the missing tile, as Tom uh, pointed out a minute ago, to cause anything that may be a little local damage, but certainly, and that's something that you would see on the ground afterwards and could be fixed. Certainly nothing that would affect uh, our vehicle capabilities as far as entry and landing. Uh, Bob Wormstead, Time Magazine. I'd like to know uh, how big this, the space is now where the tiles are missing. 
how many square inches and how many tiles from each pod have you got that nailed down yet uh yeah the uh let me give it to you a little bit different instead of total square inches uh since that's not really as germane as square inch per per area the largest area is like i said is about 64 square inches eight inches by eight inches uh close to that there are two additional tiles which are approximately uh four by eight and then beyond that there are other just small small pieces are missing like corners and triangular tiles and of the sort on the right hand pod there are approximately about 11 different uh, areas of that nature and uh and on the uh, left hand pod Find it looking forward, or the right and the left? Is no, right? just the opposite. Oh. Right-hand pod, uh, yes, staying behind it looking forward, right. The right-hand pod being the starboard. Left hand, the port. Go back there. Uh, Lou Cope, Minneapolis Tribune. Uh, it was my understanding that many of the tiles had been instrumented to uh, get some readings on the heat or possibly other things uh, uh, du uh, during the flight. Can you tell anything? Have you lost any uh, instrumentation on any of the underpod? Uh, and does that have any uh, help you in any way to get a feeling that maybe uh, you have all of them underneath there? Uh, I'll there's a set of tiles called instrumented tiles. A lot of the instrumented tiles are are not thermally instrumented per se. They're for microphones and uh, calorimeters, things like that, much of which is recorded on DFI, or the Development Flight Instrumentation, not real time. Uh, to date, we haven't seen any indication that uh, of, of any problems associated with the operational instrumentation. Get that one back there, then come up here. John Van, Chicago Tribune. Gene, could you uh, tell us, uh, are there any more attempts being made to take uh, photos of the underside of uh, the ship to look at the tiles, uh, either today or tomorrow? Are we all wrapped up on that, and we're not going to get pictures? At the current time, there are no site passes that are really amenable uh, for ground-based observations at the sites that I discussed previously. Uh, Don, Roy Neal, NBC News. Certainly. Will your team be in the slot tomorrow during the landing? Yes, sir. Can you give us some good numbers as it stands now on what you're looking at for deorbit burn and a few other things, something that might pretty well steer us on a straight path, too? Uh, as far, I think most of you have been given a card that has the uh, standard uh, STS-1 uh, event times in both uh, MET and... Uh, local time and uh, you can bias those by 10 minutes to, due to the change in the launch time and essentially that's where we're going to be. All the way. We are nominal all the way. Where in Pat Dolan Cable News Network, where and when did you attempt to take pictures of the underbelly of the craft today and uh, what were your difficulties? Hold a second, I'll try and get some data. Uh, we tried on the uh, Mila Pass on uh, Rev 17. Uh, that particular pass, the elevation angle was too low, and we got a report that the elevation angle was too low. The pass on Rev 21 at the same site uh, was also uh, attempted and at that time we had cloud decks running roughly around 4,000 foot scattered in roughly about seven miles visibility and really the uh, cloud deck and the visibility precluded getting any useful data. Horton Dean. Uh, Mr. Kranz, do you have any hard evidence uh, that was obtained in any manner whatsoever, whether classified or not, that will indicate one that indicated to you one way or the other whether all the black tiles uh, were on or off the spacecraft, or some of them were on or off, whether some of them were lost. We're still in the uh, process of uh, screening available DoD resources, and at the current time, we have no such hard evidence. You are still confident, uh, though, that uh, none of the critical tiles. 
have fallen off? Or yeah, I'm or totally damaged? confident in the uh, system, and I think Tom can, and uh, the rest of the guys up here can uh, state the same thing. Yes, we've, we've looked at the, uh, at the launch film, 16-millimeter high-speed film, the underside of the vehicle as it left the pad, reviewed that in quite a bit of detail, and everything looks absolutely perfect. That's, uh, I might add, is a very harsh environment for a lot of the TPS and especially some of the uh, thick tiles uh, on the bottom of the environment. Were the white tiles still on at that time also? Yes, those were. Let me, let me, when I said this, that's a very harsh environment, it's, it's a very harsh environment for the black tiles primarily because they're heavier and, and are more sensitive to the vibration. The white tiles, in this case, their critical time during flight was during the high Q flight regime. Go, uh, Stephen. Can you, can you please sum up for us uh, the exact things that make you confident that there is no further problem with the tiles? You've alluded to some of them here, but I'm not really clear on exactly why you seem so certain. I think it's, uh, number one, is, is every tile on the bottom of the vehicle and all the black tiles, I'll say in general, have uh, have been proof tested to demonstrate their strength integrity for their maximum expected load, uh, or else they have been densified, as you probably are aware of the enhancement of the strength attachment of the tiles, and then then proof loaded to some extent to to demonstrate their attachment integrity. Some of the thin white tiles uh, we did not do that proof test to for two reasons. Number one is that we were damaging a lot of the tiles because they were so thin. We were breaking them during the proof testing operation. And number two, uh, many of these tiles, the loss of a single tile as we see here is, is really not, not dangerous. So it, we, were, we <clears throat> made the trade and it was the right thing to do to, to not damage the tiles and go ahead and uh, do the best job we could. And on the more critical ones, we we did do the proof testing, gave us the confidence that we had. Someone down here wanted a definition of IQ. IQ, excuse me, was uh, maximum dynamic pressure. Aerodynamic forces <clears throat> are the maximum on the tiles. Hugh McCann, Detroit News. At what point do you experience these high Qs? Uh, how many seconds after launch? It's about the Mach 0.9 to 1.4, which is about 70, 70 seconds, somewhere in that time. Uh, Pete Baldwin, a two-part question on that uh, Air Force or DOD uh, help. Uh, if, they, if they do get some data, uh, do you depend upon their evaluation of the data? Or do you consider them expert enough to tell uh, whether there are any missing or loose tiles, or do you have a NASA? Do you have NASA people positioned so they can uh, evaluate the data at hand? Mm -hmm. Basic intent would be to conduct a joint review. Let, let me uh, come back to the question that was asked just a, a minute ago. I think it's also important to realize that we do not uh, reach these maximum heat loads on these tiles at the same time that we reach our maximum loads. The temperatures peak and then shortly thereafter the pressures uh, or the loads actually peak and in that period of time you have seen a very very significant drop off in temperature. The other part of that question was if there's if there's some doubt uh, in looking at the, at the information uh, would you go another 24 hours while you evaluate it further? I believe if there uh, was any ambiguity in any data we'd receive, that is certainly an option. We maintain a mission extension option, not only for that case you've cited, but for uh, many other cases. They're well defined within the mission rules. Uh, were you as confident uh, in the design and the bonding and the, and the installation of the white tiles, which are missing, as you are in the black tiles, at which we can't see? In other words, is your level, was your level of confidence the same and based on the same uh, for the white tiles that are missing as, as uh, with the black tiles? 
Yes, you said, are we as confident in the design? Yes, we were as confident in the design, but as confident in the knowing that the tile was, was bonding and, and adhered, no, because we physically demonstrated the black tiles. We did not physically demonstrate the bond integrity of some of the white tiles. Right. Just a quick one. In time, this morning we were led to believe that the, some of these tiles were not missing but damaged. Now apparently they're missing. I'd like to get straight as to whether they're missing or whether they're damaged, and if so, just what numbers are we looking okay, at? Okay, well, I, it's a it's a mix, mixed bag here, boy. The, uh, there are, there's one complete tile which is missing. That's the 8x8. Eight eight. Uh, there are other portions of tiles which are missing, like a corner. Uh, we won't know that until we get the vehicle back to make a, a detailed inspection, but perhaps what we had there was a, a cracked surface and then, then the loss of the corner of the tile. So it was, that was the nature of, of the, quote, cavities. Over here. Front row here. Need some crest. Still, I'm, I'm following on the same line here. You said there were 11 areas damaged or missing on the right-hand pod five on the left-hand pod. On which of these pods is the eight by eight inch piece missing? On the uh, right hand. Bruce Nichols, UPI. I want to be sure I understand that you don't expect to get any better chances than you've already had to get photographic data on the bottom of the shuttle. I think from a standpoint of the sites I had identified earlier, I don't believe the geometry is favorable. Back over there. Bill Watts, KPRC, Houston. Uh, based on what you now know, you, you went to a lot of trouble to get these tiles uh, perfected. And now that you've had some come off, does this give you any pause uh, as to using this sort of uh, system and these, this type of ti these type of tiles uh, on, next, on future missions? No. Not one, none whatsoever. Over, back over there. Yeah. Uh, Luke Hope, Minneapolis Tribune. You, you raised the question on the tile of, of which ones had been tested. Were these that uh, came off, had they been tested for their bonding strength, or were they some that by your own option you decided uh, uh, not to test because you thought uh, that you might do more damage, as you said, in that area by testing uh, than good? Yes, yeah, some, some of them had been, the majority had not been tested. Some had been tested, but not to the full expected flight load. Uh, Steve Young, CBS News. Two questions. There's been a report that on the sixth orbit, a high-powered camera on Anderson's Peak attempted to look at the orbiter. Can you comment on that? And uh, you say now that these damaged or missing tiles aren't a problem. What then was the rationale for putting them there? Was it just extreme conservatism? Let me answer the first one on the Anderson Peak. That's the same facility that we'll be using for uh, entry tomorrow, and I think you'll get a good opportunity to judge the uh, power of that telescope that reported the sighting. Uh, we have acquired data, and we're in the process. We've had a quick, when I say screening, they sort of described what they saw, and I said, well, play it back, and we'll take a look at it. But as far as we're concerned, it just looks like a, just a track across the sky. No. Let, let me get you to repeat the second part of that. Uh, you say to us now that the damage for missing tiles in the top half section is not life-threatening and not really a problem. What was the rationale for putting them there in the first place then? Just extreme conservatism? Uh, well, uh, it was to protect the structure. Don't forget the vehicles to be designed to be used a hundred times. So with the tiles missing, the structure is, is reaching a higher temperature than we would like it to for reuse. And that's the reason I made this statement. We may have to make some local repairs as a result of this. Jeff Smith, Science Magazine. Sorry to belabor this point, but your answers are somewhat circumscribed about the surveillance. Um, when you say you're still screening available DOD facilities, what, do, what exactly does that mean? Does that mean that you're considering using observation, other DOD observation points? And also when you say that you have no other plans to do it at the sites that you mentioned yesterday. Does that mean that new sites are now under consideration? Exactly what plans are there to take for the photographs? Well, I think you said it all. I think that uh, what I stated, we're uh, looking at using other available DOD resources. Uh, that's the point. That's classified. 
back. Terry Malewski, Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. Uh, you've said that uh, some of the missing white tiles were densified and proof tested, uh, some of them not to the same extent that the black tiles were tested. Does that mean that some of the missing white tiles were tested to the same extent of the black, uh, as the black tiles? Uh, first of all, none of the missing white tiles are densified. Uh, and secondly, is no, they were not proof tested to as high a level as the black tiles. None of them. Behind you there, please. Larry Wright, Texas Monthly. Have you learned anything that would cause you to make design changes in the next shuttle? Relative to the thermal protection system? Any system that may be uh, causing you trouble or any, anything in the orbiter that you're going to design differently for the next time? From uh, speaking for the structures in the thermal protection system, I see nothing this, this, that we change any different than the, than the baseline design. I think on some of these tiles that we have missing, uh, if I consider it part of the baseline design densification, then uh, I think obviously we'll probably densify these. The next vehicle b that is being built, all the tiles are densified. So that's consistent with, um, with the design. Let me add a little bit to that. I think, uh, as you've probably uh, seen through some of the activities that we've been taking, a lot of the uh, air-to-ground voice calls, uh, and the way that we laid out this developmental flight test program of four flights, uh, we don't expect to answer all of the type of questions that might be applicable to your question on the first flight. I think... Uh, what we can say is we're learning a lot about the vehicle, uh, the way it is responding, and uh, one would expect uh, that as we gather more data, uh, there will probably be some small product improvement changes, just like there are in any other new model of, of anything uh, of this magnitude of complexity. I think, though, uh, that as a summary, we all have been very happy at the way the overall vehicle is performing uh, and I won't say surprised at the small number of problems that we have but certainly exhilarated about it. We'll go to the Kennedy Space Center for questions now. Wait a minute. Does he have questions? The first question is, who is the gentleman from the Thermal Protection and the Structures Division? Uh, we missed the opening statements because of audio problems. It, he is uh, Tom Mosier, M-O-S-E-R, from the JSC Structures and Mechanics Division. And was there anything in the opening statements of a, uh, of a news sort that uh, you could repeat quickly? <laughs> Everything's going good. <laughs> okay, we'll take individual questions here, uh, starting on this side. In the opening statements, we heard you say something about the RCS and using 10 to 20 pounds of propellant. Could you go over that again, please, and also about the payload? Bay doors. Okay, basically what I was saying there was that uh, one of our uh, tests that we were accomplishing on this particular flight was what we call gravity gradient attitude. And the reason that we were testing that particular attitude control mode was that it can be accomplished without using RCS propellant except for moving into and out of that particular attitude and that so far we believe that's going to cost us about 10 pounds of RCS propellant for each of those maneuvers, 10 to move into gravity gradient attitude, 10 to come back out and uh, maneuver into an attitude that we would use for another function. And I was using that as a comparison of if we continue to maintain some degree of attitude control on orbit, 
consistently using the jets. If we were able to use the small vernier jets, it would uh, save us somewhere around six pounds per hour. Uh, if we were using the large jets, somewhere around 12 pounds per hour. So for uh, an extended period of time, there would be a considerable RCS propellant savings for us. I didn't imply that we were going to use that particular mode because we were in low and RCS propellants on this particular flight is strictly a test. In fact, we have considerable RCS propellants. Uh, a question concerning the underside state of the shuttle. If we have well understood here, you haven't yet get any data, any kind of data concerning the underside state of the orbiter. But my question is, are you intend to authorize the return of the shuttle without getting any data concerning the underside, or will you wait until you get this data? Yes, we are willing to proceed without having that type of data. Okay, please give your names and organizations. Uh, excuse me, my name is Pierre Langereux, Aaron Cosmos, French Magazine. Uh, is that means that you could uh, intend to extend the duration of the mission to get the data? Misunderstood your answer. He thinks you're going to... No, we are willing to proceed with the entry as currently planned without any additional data on the tile. Okay, over to the gentleman in the yellow shirt. Uh, Patrick Young, Newhouse News Service for Don Purdy. Uh, this morning, a little after 7 o'clock, there was some talk about a uh, horizontal indicator giving them a problem, I think, on John Young's side. The question, uh, what was the problem? Has it been fixed? And if not, how will you get around it? Oh, okay. I think what you're referring to, we ran a, uh, uh, an FCS checkout this morning, early this morning, and basically, and we're going to run the same test tomorrow, by the way, basically what that particular test is for is to go through and look at all of the onboard instruments that have been not used or have been unpowered uh, since we went through the uh, active phase of launch. The only anomaly that we found during that period of time was a, uh, a compass card on the HSI. Uh, basically, what this precludes, and it was only on the commanders, we have two of those on board, the pilots uh, is still working. Uh, basically, what this uh, uh, card provides is an exact heading. Uh, there is absolutely no problem with the loss of that card. As far as an error, the, uh, the pointing needles will still provide that type of information. Uh, and in talking with uh, Joe Engel, matter of fact, he says, uh, you know, I don't necessarily look at that card all the time anyway. I use other uh, cues as far as to whether or not I'm on the correct heading. So it is a secondary source of information. Uh, we did check it out but it is absolutely no problem as far as uh, the way we normally do our uh, entry procedures. Uh, and let me, say, let me say again uh, for that gentleman, it's Puddy, P-U-D-D-Y, not Purdy. Uh, Mark Thank Bloom. you. Bloom for Gene Kranz. Uh, just to nail it down if I can, is there any evidence, either hard or soft, that you've received so far from any photographic source, be it classified or otherwise, that would lead you to suspect anything that, that there might be something compromised in the thermal protection on the bottom of the orbiter. That's Mark Bloom. That sounded like one of your questions, and uh, I heard you giggle there in the middle of it. Uh, no, we have no hard evidence at this time that leads us to suspect that we have any problems with the underside of the orbiter. Gene, yes, it is Mark Bloom, but the question was, do you have any evidence? <laughs> Go ahead, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> <The evidence. laughs> okay, the question, Gene, was, do you have any evidence, hard or soft? Question whatsoever, even soft. Mark, I think the, the appropriate point of discussion is to say that we are working with the DOD using available resources to acquire whatever information is possible in the mission time remaining. Okay, right here. Hans Meyer, West Berlin Radio Station. 
Um, I accept your view that um, there's no critical situation because of the tides. Now, uh, let's assume that there would be some danger from the uh, tide situation. What kind of measures could you take to uh, escape uh, serious consequences in, th in that case? I think that's similar to a uh, question we had at, the, at an earlier press conference. And I think we had identified at the earlier conference that we had, in a pre-mission sense, looked at uh, altering the entry profile, but it's already tuned to probably the most benign entry possible, uh, consistent with the, uh, the vehicle design, uh, considering structure, the thermal protection system, and the flight control system. So we don't have that option. If we knew precisely where uh, we had some tile problems, and assuming that we did. Uh, there are some cases where we could manage the systems. For instance, uh, we could uh, uh, a couple ish bus ties in case we thought we might lose a fuel cell. Certain cases, if it were in an area where we had high pressure tanks, we could conceivably deplete these tanks and uh, depressurize lines. But basically, uh, the orbiter is an extremely flexible vehicle. It's got a large amount of redundancy in the flight systems. And we would use the same type of procedures that we use for other problems during the flight. We have procedures uh, that take care of the loss of the fuel cell, uh, various coolant systems, and we'd exercise those procedures. But at this time, we have no reason to even consider exercising those procedures. Okay, we'll take one more from KSC. Question, and Dick Whitkin from uh, New York Times is the last one. Uh, please, could you tell us what is the relative amount of maximum stress that the underside black tiles will sustain on reentry compared to what has already been sustained on the ascent? Uh, the the stresses in general are maximum during ascent uh, as compared to entry, uh, and that's that's true of, of practically every one of the black tiles. Because, and that's primarily because of the, uh, the extreme noise and vibration during the uh, liftoff and, and aerodynamic noise during the high dynamic pressure region, and also the fact that uh, typically the dynamic pressures are in excess of 600 pounds per square foot during ascent, and typically around uh, 300 to 350 maximum during entry. So if you use those as parameter, you can you can see that the stresses during entry are a lot less. And I think, as Don pointed out, the important thing is is that the high stresses on the tiles during descent occur after heating has been experienced. Hey, we're accumulating tape at the station passes, so we're going to have to cut this short. We'll take about two more questions here. Go back here. Carlos Byers, Houston Chronicle. Don, you said uh, a moment ago that your next edition of the shuttle, you'd be densifying all of the tiles. You're already paying a pretty heavy weight penalty now. Uh, what's that going to do to you? I don't have an ex exact number on the uh, weight change. Uh, and, it, it, and the reason I say that with some hesitation is because uh, at the time of the of the design was being implemented in the in the form of manufacturing and installation, some of our higher stress areas we had to accommodate with higher density tiles. With the enhancement of densification, we will be able to replace some of the higher density tiles with the densified tiles. If that makes sense to you, let me say it differently. To obtain high strength prior to densification process, which was uh, developed late in the program, we had to use a 22 pound per square foot per cubic foot tile as opposed to a nine pound per cubic foot tile. Uh, with the densification, there are regions now where we can use nine pound per cubic foot densified in lieu of the 22 pound per cubic foot tile. So I, I don't have an exact answer what it's going to mean to us uh, weight, but uh, you are right, the densification does add some weight. It adds about a tenth of a pound uh, to the weight of a tile. Tenth of a pound per square foot. Try this to the surface here. Area. 
Thank you. This is just a matter of record. Uh, in answer to a previous question, uh, Mr. Moses said, and I quote, none of the white tiles that were missing were densified, unquote. Uh, I've got a report here from Rockwell, John Jones, which says that on the left Ohm's pod, uh, two of the missing white tiles were, in fact, densified. Is this an error, or is there an element of wishful thinking? No, uh, let me clarify that. There were, in our first review of the, uh, of the data, there were two that were suspect. We've later gone back and looked at those in a lot of detail, and those were, were discolorations in the tile, which we verified by looking at the as-manufactured uh, pictures of that, uh, of that region. So at first, they were suspect. They are not missing. They are not damaged. They are as-built in place, and those were densified. Hey, Don Cuddy has uh, some information on entry, I think, that will be of general interest to some question, and then we'll close it with that. I've had a question passed to me uh, to say something about uh, when John Young might be taking over uh, control, manual control of the flight control system uh, during the entry and landing phase. Uh, as I'm sure you all are well aware, uh, we actually start into entry interface and uh, nominally scheduled to be in an automatic mode. In general, our plan is that we will come out of that au automatic mode at around Mach 5, or an altitude slightly in excess of 100,000 feet. The last two roll reversals where we sweep across the corridor uh, will be done manually, uh, and we will then come in, make the approach to the landing field, go around what we call the heading alignment circle, and land manually. Uh, the crew has the option uh, during other, certain other events, if they so desire, of taking over control, such as when we initially incorporate TACAN or when we would send up a uh, state vector update from the ground. They certainly uh, have uh, certain symptoms that they can see in the flight control system where we know that the manual mode might uh, alleviate some of those problems, even though the automatic mode is doing a satisfactory job, uh, they can take over manual at that time. The bottom line is the crew has the option of taking over manually at any point uh, that they feel uh, that it's required. In general, they will be following the output of the guidance commands uh, from the automatic system. Uh, I think I just basically covered. Okay, hey, thank you. Okay. This is Mission Control Houston. During the just completed press conference, we've had one pass across uh, Botswana, which we will play back at this time. We're still with you for about the next uh, four minutes. Okay, dope. Columbia, Houston, uh, got something I need to get to you and uh, requires you copying down an attitude uh, if it's convenient. Stand by one. Okay, what's your attitude? Okay, row 147, decimal five. Pitch one zero six decimal one. I, I think you're gonna have to start over. Stand by one. Okay, go ahead now. Okay, roll pitching y'all in that order. One four seven decimal five. One zero six decimal one. Three three five decimal zero. After you've completed your RCS FTOs, and that's uh, about. Nine hours into the flight plan there, nine hours and 12 minutes, which is about uh, on page 2 29 there in the cap. We want you to go to this attitude, uh, that B auto burn, and we want you to repeat message number 006, the instructions that's in that message for the sunlit side of the vehicle. Hey, God. I understand you want to duplicate again uh, what we did in 006 entirely, including 
where we'll, we'll, the subject and everything. That's permanent, but on the sunlit side of the vehicle. We didn't get one side there. Okay. And as soon as you can get that in, pick up the cap uh, with the maneuver that's called out there and uh, press on. This is Mission Control. That completes the uh, playback of the Botswana Pass recorded during the just completed change of ship press briefing. 26 minutes away from next AOS, which will be Goldstone, Buckhorn, West Coast Station. However, um, yeah, we'll come up live for those, and uh, sometime after LOS, we'll be having a briefing on landing uh, and spacecraft safety procedures from Dryden Space Flight, Flight Research Center. At eight hours, one day, eight hours, 50 minutes elapsed time, Mission Control, Houston. This is Mission Control Houston. One day, eight hours, 56 minutes. Mission elapsed time. There will be a playback of the downlink video from Columbia that includes the um, two-way conversation between the crew of Columbia and Vice President Bush at 57 minutes past the hour, some 30 seconds from now, and we'll stand by for that to uh, come over the tube. Right. John and we have a telephone call coming into the space network from the White House for the crew members of the spaceship Columbia. We would like uh, uh, to patch them through. If you would, please, Mr. Vice President, go ahead. I think your trip is just going to uh, ignite the excitement and the forward thinking for this country. So I really just wanted to call up and wish you the very best. We certainly appreciate it, Mr. Vice President. Thank you very much, sir. The only thing wrong is I don't get to don't get to see you in Houston, Texas. I don't think because I don't think they're going to let me come down there, and I plan to be there when you got back on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Well, we're coming to see you, Mr. Vice President. Well, we'll want you up here, I can guarantee you that. And congratulations on what you're doing. How's Crip's heartbeat doing? <laughs> Broke down to about nothing, I think. Oh, really? Well, that's what, I couldn't understand that. I guess I thought he was a calm guy out there, you know, and now look at him. Right, right. It's great talking to you, and I'll let you go back to work. What's the next thing you've got to do? Well, we have some more flight plan uh, RCS jet tests to run tonight. And we're going to also find out that uh, 
if we can don our suits that we're going to use for entry and strap into the seats without any problem. Oh, that's great. I'm sure it'll go well. Sitting right behind my desk is that model you gave me down there and also the picture of you two guys. And it's, it was there before this phone call, too. Well, we appreciate it. All right, back to work, but it's great talking to you. And best of luck. We'll be watching that re-entry and the landing with great interest. On behalf of the whole country, I'll tell you, everybody will be. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Go on, Bob. So long, John. Good talking to you. Best of luck. Sure. Uh, still on air? Hello, Houston. Uh, we're back with you. Uh, Roger, Columbia. You've got your normal Capcoms back now. Uh, okay. Well, the only bad part about it, Joe, is we're going to have to come down. Well, don't come down in that attitude. <laughs> oh, that's a pretty good attitude. Uh, we're getting a, a terrific uh, television picture now. Beautiful. I'm not sure of the scenery you just got, but whatever. That's a great camera. It really puts out a nice picture. Even Crippen can run it sometimes. You know, people are worried about the bed back. You get an airflow around. A crip, uh, all of us uh, very much rookies down here are wondering how you are enjoying zero gravity flight. You look like you're enjoying it. Goldstone Comtech, Houston Comtech, Air Ground. Goldstone Comtech, you're loud and clear. Roger, you're the same Tulip P Comtech, Houston Comtech, Air Ground. Tulip Comtech. Roger, you're loud and clear. Stand by for keying check. Roger. This is Houston testing one, two, three, four, five. He's got five. people from coming through. End of test. Doodle we'll had 100% king. Goldstone had 100% king. Roger, configure for your pass. The two comes to end Let's stop and come through. They're going to be on camera. Buckhorn, Comtech, Houston, Comtech, Aaron Ground. Buckhorn, Comtech. Stand by for team modulation check. Houston testing one, two, three, four, five, and the test. Can you give me 30 seconds and I'll ask you to stop walking? Right. We have 100% uh, cane and good modulation. Okay, good for your free time. Welcome. I did that in one of the briefings. We were, one of the briefings I stood up, you know, when we were talking about highway patrol, I was ready to get up and look down and get a stiff and stuff like that. Columbia, Houston, uh, to Buckhorn for the next six and a half minutes. Uh, we've got a few items for you. Uh, if you'd like to give us a status first, we'll wait. Okay, we're still working that uh, message six item. Roger, we copy.
have a couple items that are listen items only, if you can listen while you work. Columbia, Houston, uh, uh, can you listen up now? Uh, okay, uh, Hank, I guess I can listen up. Okay, uh, our management has met and talked about this DFI problem, and uh, uh, we have concluded that the, the, the data that we would get on that is very important to have. What the DFI recorder would have for entry is the thermal data from EI through blackout exit. And that's pretty important to us. Uh, and after the studying the thing, we're not even sure that that thing is even working, even though we're getting the great talk back. We've got that much concern about it. So independent of your swizzle stick operation, what we want to do is uh, change out that recorder, as I indicated to you earlier. Uh, what we're doing now is modifying the uh, flight plan. Uh, stand by one. We're going to have a hand over here. Okay, we're out of hand over now. What we're thinking of doing is shifting a few items to starting at about ten and a half hours uh, into uh, John's side of the house there and uh, give you about an hour fifteen to do that change out. And uh, we may delete. One more time, this is Mission Control Houston. One hour, nine minutes, 37 minutes, ground elapsed time. One day, nine hours, 37, I guess it should be. We've accumulated some tape over the states and over the just completed Quito Pass, which we recorded in anticipation of a uh, feed from Dryden on a post-landing press conference, landing operations press conference. Let's roll all of that tape now and get it out of the way. Columbia Houston uh, through Buckhorn for the next six and a half minutes. Uh, we got a few items for you. Uh, if you'd like to give us a status first, we'll wait. Okay, we're still working that uh, message six item. Columbia Houston, uh, we might have you 20, 30 seconds here through Santiago. Uh, have tell a you real quick here that if we do lose you, we'll pick you up Botswana at 958. Okay, we're out of hand over now. What we're thinking of doing is shifting a few items to starting at about ten and a half hours uh, into uh, John's side of the house there and uh, give you about an hour fifteen to do that change out. And uh, we may delete the 16 millimeter camera activities that comes up about uh, uh, 1045 or 1145 there in the flight plan uh, if it's necessary to do that. We're getting a ton of pressure. Hey, Hank, uh, I'll tell you what. <laughs> you're going to have to delete something out of the pipeline if you want us to do another hour and a half worth of work. We understand that, Crip, and uh, uh, we're in the process of trying to, to get that. We will send it up in a message to you. The only alternative is to try to do it in the morning and uh, first thing, and I'm not too sure that's such a good idea. I think we'd like to have it squared away and understand where we are uh, this afternoon if possible. Yeah, we're going to do it while we're doing safety. Okay, I thought uh, that you'd concur in that. In any event, uh, we are going to take some things out of the flight plan and make time for you to do that if you concur. And uh, we'll have a message coming to you that will spell out the details. There are a few short mods to that uh, uh, PCA, uh, PCM recorder change out that we'll have to get to you. That will also be in the message. If there was a chance that you wanted to get started early in laying out your tools and equipment, uh, there's only one change uh, in that part of the thing uh, before you get to really doing some disconnecting. 
Okay, you're breaking up a little now. Are you suggesting that you want me to copy it to change down? Uh, that's a negative. That's a negative. Uh, we just wanted to, if you got a chance to get that procedure out and review it to see if there were any questions, it's on page 3-26 in the in-flight maintenance section there of the uh, uh, crew system. Also, uh, different subject here, another one of these listen jobbies. Uh, you had a, a, a message here earlier on display switch A, uh, Alpha, that you were concerned about. I think we understand that a little better now. There's a software note out on that. Uh, when you do an I.O. reset, and you get a, a temporary com fault on an item, it comes I understand. I understand that. Okay, what well a culprit is in the aft uh, back there is uh, a, an element for the rendezvous radar, uh, which we don't have. And before the little algorithm there could uh, sort out that it didn't have that thing, it had already, the com fault had already occurred, and that's what caused it. It's nothing to worry about. There's absolutely nothing wrong. I would caution you, however, that it could occur again. Houston, we're about 45 seconds from LOS. Quito is next at uh, 9.31, and at that point, I have your uh, supply water dump quantities and uh, a little note on prop, a little small delta to the cap that, uh, that I can get to you if you'll be ready for that. Okay. Quito Comtech, this is Houston Comtech, testing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, test out. Houston Comtech, Quito Comtech, on there is around one, hundred percent key, voice hold. Thank you, Quito. Configure for your pass, please. Roll call. Columbia Houston to Quito for the next uh, four minutes. Uh, your state vector is good. We won't be shipping you one, and uh, I got a, a few items for you here. Okay, hey. Okay, I guess the uh, one to get out of the quick, we are trying to help you out and get the cabin a little warmer, and we think we can do that if you bring up water loop one. Uh, well, now, wait a minute. We don't want it any warmer right now. Oh, is it too warm now? Uh, it's pretty warm. Okay, if it does uh, get uncomfortable tonight, if, it, uh, if you were to turn water loop one on in addition to water loop two, that should uh, warm up the cabin a little bit. Okay. And I have your uh, dump quantities, uh, supply water, tank Bravo. Uh, we want to dump to 30%. Tank Alpha is okay. The wastewater tank dumped to 80%. Okay, uh, supply Bravo to 3-0%, waste to 8-0%. That's affirmative, and uh, we're shipping a teleprinter message to you on the uh, changes to the in-flight maintenance for the DFI recorder. Roger that. I think uh, mentioning Tank Bravo, there, I reported once, and it happened a subsequent time today, that we've had a little, uh, look like a transducer hit on Tank Bravo, and uh, its quantity went to zero, which rang an alarm. I've been to ask you guys to consider whether we ought to inhibit that tonight. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll start to do that, Chris. Columbia Houston, uh, we see a uh, one degree dead band. I think the cap calls for uh, two degrees uh, at about 9.13 there in the cap. Hold up a second. Okay, we copy that, and I do have uh, one uh, small cap change for you. That uh, it's on 231 at uh, page 2 31 at 1110. 
Okay, at 1110 there, or just prior to that, it's got a little item about interconnect return, ops two and three. We'd like to move that to 1220 uh, in the cap, which is over on the next page. Okay. We've got about uh, one minute uh, LOS. Uh, we had wanted to get the IMU torque because we still don't have those things. Uh, I don't know whether we can whip them out this quick or not. They're probably not available to you that quick. Well, uh, we've got John down there trying to get the message off the recorder. Okay, we've got a ground problem, Crip. Uh, apparently, we didn't get our teleprinter message up to you. Uh, if you wanted to start the prep on that in-flight maintenance, if you want to get some of your tools out there, you can do everything on the first page up through step seven. With the, and step five is getting the tools out. There's one thing you want to do, make sure you get out is your cookie. Uh, sheet there, the cold plate uh, protective cover. Okay. Uh, why can't I go ahead and just start on it? What is it you're changing? What we're really changing is the order in which we disconnect the uh, connectors there on step eight. That's the ch where the changes are. And we'll, we'll give you that change at Botswana verbally. Maybe we can bypass med. That's the only big item. The main thing is we want to make sure we protect that cold plate with that cookie sheet and then, uh, and then the order in which we do the connectors. And if you'd like, you can go ahead and uh, get started on that. I'm in Houston. We're about to go LOS. Uh, we might see at Santiago at uh, 939. If we don't, we'll catch you at Botswana at uh, 958. Columbia, Houston, uh, we might have you 20, 30 seconds here through Santiago. Uh, tell you real quick here that if we do lose you, we'll pick you up Botswana at 958. Okay, Hank, and I think I've got that two degree uh, dead band off the square away. Okay, and uh, as soon as we can, we are going to try to get a, a, a teleprinter message up that will spell out the detailed flight plan changes. There's a TV coming up in which you're supposed to do the LIO. Uh, change out and a uh, fuel tube absorber replacement and uh, we thought you you could if it's no big deal to substitute in there uh, TV of you doing some of the, the recorder change out which would also be a first I guess uh, photos of in-flight maintenance. Okay, I, I have, uh, you guys have had it so much today. I've got one camera set up and you can have the one camera. That'll be just super. This is Mission Control Houston. That cleans up accumulated tape from the passes over the states, Quito, Santiago. We're seven minutes away from reacquisition through Botswana Voice Relay Station. One day, nine hours, 50 minutes, elapsed time, Mission Control Houston. Mission Control Houston. About five seconds away from Botswana Voice Relay Station and standing by. Roger that. It's not really tough, though. A trip, you're dropping out. If I don't think he can see you. Uh, Hank, how are you reading PLT? Reading you loud and clear, Crip. Okay, Hank, uh, so if you've got Frank James in the area there, I've got a question with regard to this. Uh, Okay, uh, we'll get him, and we've got a couple of changes to that procedure that uh, I don't know whether we're going to be able to get them up or not. We're having trouble at Indy, but uh, I can voice them to you real easy. Hello, Columbia. This is Houston back with you. Through Why don't you go ahead with your questions, and then uh, 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 we'll, we'll get to Okay. The, uh, the only way I see to pull out the panel, uh, it uh, requires the regular uh, torque tip screw heads, of which they're of the same amount. There are 12 uh, on each panel to pull out. So uh, I'm not sure they didn't get screwed up, with, but I can go ahead and, and pull those, so it doesn't make any difference. I just wanted to make sure that we were all in sync there. 
Yeah, why don't you press on Crip and do that, and uh, uh, I can give you the other changes uh, for for step eight there if you uh, if you want right now while you got your book there. Okay, on step eight, uh, what we want to do is change the order of removing those connectors uh, so that uh, we don't uh, we, we reduce the possibility of, uh, of pulling the pins and the wires. And the order we want is as follows: eight, seven, six, one, three, four, five. In the following order, J7, uh, correction, J8, J7, J6, J1, J3, J4, J5. That is affirmative. And the only other thing that we had to change the procedure was when you get down to step 10, where you're actually going to pull the recorder out. Incidentally, there are 12 fasteners there instead of 10 in both steps 10 and 11. That's a nit. But when you get ready to pull it out there in step 10, we want to make sure you use your cookie sheet to protect that cold plate by placing it uh, under or between the box and the cold plate when you remove it. Okay, Crip, uh, I've got a clarification here on what that step is referring to. What you're going to pull is the whole white panel there, and that's the, the fasteners that are around the outside edge of that whole front panel. And that includes the part with the two little screens on it. Yes, sir. We got about 55 seconds. Shoot them to me. Okay, minus zero zero, minus zero zero, plus zero seven, plus zero nine, plus zero four, plus zero zero, minus point one eight, plus zero six, minus zero four, one zero six, twenty nine, zero nine was the torquing time, and uh, those are very good angles. Roger, sir. We copy. Thank you. And we're about to go LOS. Uh, we should have you at Indy at 10.08. If we have any trouble there, Hawaii is at 10.45. Okay. And uh, we will be, if you can set it up there, looking for the TV at, uh, at uh, Hawaii. Sunnyvale Comtech, Houston Comtech, testing one, two, Three, four, five, test out. Get some contact, maybe about contact. 100% uh, king, go for modulation here, try one. Okay, um, are you in com configuration Lima? Voice one, voice two uplink? Roger. Copy, thank you. Columbia, Houston to Indy for the next five and a half minutes. Okay, Hank. Okay, we're reading you, and I, I think uh, we got squared away on that procedure. I think uh, uh, they probably put those uh, torque tips in there, and the picture that we had and when we wrote the procedure was probably a temporary closeout. Columbia Houston, we got a teleprinter message coming up that uh, we'll have your cap changes on it. Columbia Houston, I think the message should be on board now.
Columbia, Houston, how do you read? Well, I'm clear, Hank, but uh, we're not going to be able to talk to you and do this also. Okay, I wasn't sure. Every once in a while I got some static when I talked to you. Did, did you happen to get the teleprinter message? Yeah, we got it. Okay, sir, good. Columbia, Houston, no need to acknowledge. We're about one minute to LOS. Hawaii is next at 1045. This is Mission Control, Houston. Loss of signal through Indian Ocean Station and the preceding pass through Botswana. Next station um, will be um, Hawaii in approximately 21 minutes. At one day, 10 hours, 14 minutes, elapsed time, Mission Control, Houston here. This is Mission Control, Houston. Due to some minor glitches in our comm system, part of the Botswana Pass earlier in this revolution were blanked out, so we'll play back the entire Botswana Pass at this time. Go. Columbia, Houston to Botswana for the next six minutes. Going real good, John. How's it with you? I don't think he can. Houston, how do you read Columbia? Over. Okay, reading you loud and clear now. Uh, Hank, uh, how do you read PLT? Reading you loud and clear, Chris. Okay, Hank, uh, it's, uh, if you've got Frank James in the area there, I've got a question with regard to this uh, procedure on the recorders. Okay, uh, we'll get him, and we've got a couple of changes to that procedure that uh, I don't know whether we're going to be able to get him up or not. We're having trouble at Indy, but uh, I can voice him to you real easy. Roger, we're looking at the step six. Okay. The uh, the only way I see to pull out the panel, uh, it uh, requires the regular uh, torque tip screw heads, of which uh, the same amount. There are 12 uh, on each panel to pull out. So uh, I'm not sure they didn't get screwed up, with, but I can go ahead and, and pull those, so it doesn't make any difference. I just wanted to make sure that we were all in sync there. Yeah, yeah why don't you press on Crip and do that, and uh, uh, I can give you the other changes uh, for, for step eight there if you uh, if you want right now while you got your book there. Go ahead with the changes, Henry. Okay, on step eight, uh, what we want to do is change the order of removing those connectors. Uh, so that uh, we don't, uh, we, we reduce the possibility of, uh, of pulling the pins and the wires. And the order we want is as follows, eight, seven, six, one, three, four, five. Okay, you'd like me to disconnect any 
following order. J7, a uh, correction, J8, J7, J6, J1, J3, J4, J5. That is affirmative. And the only other thing that we had to change the procedure was when you get down to step 10, where you're actually going to pull the recorder out, incidentally, there are 12 fasteners there instead of 10 in both steps 10 and 11. That's a nit. But when you get ready to pull it out there in step 10, we want to make sure you use your cookie sheet to protect that coal plate by placing it uh, under or between the box and the coal plate when you remove it. Okay, Crip, uh, I've got a clarification here on what that step is referring to. What you're going to pull is the whole white panel there, and that's the, the fasteners that are around the outside edge of that whole front panel. And that includes the part with the two little screens on it. Yes, sir. We've got about 55 seconds. Shoot them to me. Okay, minus zero, zero, minus zero, zero, plus zero, seven, plus zero, nine, plus zero, four, plus zero, zero, minus point one, eight, plus zero, six, minus zero, four, one, zero, six, twenty nine, zero, nine was the torque in time, and uh, those are very good angles. Roger, sir. We copy. Thank you. And we're about to go to LS. Uh, we should have you at Indy at 10.08. If we have any trouble there, Hawaii is at 10.45. Okay. And uh, we will be, if you can set it up there, looking for the TV at, uh, at uh, Hawaii. This is Mission Control Houston. That completes playback of the Botswana Pass. 2018 minutes out from Hawaii, at which time there should be a television downlink from the spacecraft. However, in all likelihood, the activity will not be the carbon dioxide absorber replacement, but uh, some of the in-flight maintenance having to do with uh, changing out recorders. We'll be back at that time. It is now uh, one day, 10 hours, 26 minutes into the voyage of spacecraft Columbia. Mission Control, Houston. Hawaii, contact Houston, contact air ground. Houston, contact Hawaii, contact. All right, I read you loud and clear. How many? I read you the same. Give you just key and check. This is Houston Comtech testing one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. End of test. Houston Comtech, Hawaii Comtech, 100% key. Modulation is go. Okay, I'd like you in air ground configuration Lima this time for a teleprinter uplink. Roger, copy. Configuration Lima. Columbia, Houston to Hawaii for the next uh, five and a half minutes. Okay, Hank, and uh, I'm afraid I got a small problem. A big problem, depending on how bad you want DFI. Okay, go ahead. Well, both John and I have been working pretty solid since the last time I talked to you, and uh, well, we don't have out half the fasteners yet. And I'm afraid I'm just not going to be able to get them out, some of them out. They, uh, they just torched in there so darn tight, and we just can't get enough leverage here to break them. I'm not even sure if I was in 1G I could break them. So, uh... The bottom one, I've got every every uh, 
Looks like you might have lost something, Crip. Oh, you're going into the Lyo, I see. We wonder if you were whistling while you were working there. Oh, yeah. I was really whistling a while ago when I was trying to get those screws out. Houston, your telephone message should be on board. I'm the Houston, 40 seconds from LOS. Santiago's next at 1111. Okay, Hank, see you there.
This is Mission Control Houston. Loss of signal through Hawaii, where we uh, watched a live TV pass from the spacecraft. Bob Crippen attempting to get at the uh, recorders for changing them out. However, he was unable to get enough torque on the screws to get the cover off. So he continued changing out the uh, carbon dioxide canisters, which are filled with lithium hydroxide. Continued with that operation as called for in the flight plan. 19 minutes away from uh, reacquisition through Santiago, Chile. We'll return at that time at one day, 10 hours, 51 minutes into the flight of Columbia. This is Mission Control, Houston. This is Mission Control Houston, eight minutes out from Santiago. We have ready at this time a playback of the videotape recorded during the recent uh, TV pass over Hawaii. We'll play that back at this time and then go live over Santiago. And I'm afraid I'm just not gonna be able to get them out, some of them out. They, uh, they just torqued in there so darn tight, and we just can't get enough leverage here to break them. I'm not even sure if I was in 1G, I could break them. So, uh, the bottom one, I've got every, every, uh, screw out except two of them right at the top. You know, and I could do some drastic action like bending the can on its, uh, little angle maybe to get at it. The top one I'm having a little bit more problem with. And uh, I'm just not sure this is going to be productive because we're going to end up spending uh, at least uh, four or five hours trying to do it. And then I'm not sure we're going to be able to hack it. Okay, uh, we can appreciate that. Uh, stand by one. Did you ever get one of those nuts and bolts on your car that just wouldn't let loose? I'm well familiar with it. I've broken a few that way. Uh, well, we appreciate right. you trying. I think we better give up with, on it then, instead of uh, trying to press on with it. Unless somebody comes up with a Eureka here in the next few minutes, uh, why don't you just put it back in the configuration you had it, Crip, and uh, we'll just call it quits on that. And for info, we're also t sending up some table maintenance uh, for you to try to square away your C&W on the VAP temps and uh, water supply quantity. Okay, hi. Also, we are trying to ship you a teleprinter message. Okay. Looks like you might have lost something, Crip. Oh, you're going into the Lyo, I see. All right, right. Santiago Comtech, this is Houston Comtech, testing one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one, test out. Uh, we had 100% KNN. We wonder if you were whistling while you were working there. Oh, yeah. I was really whistling a while ago when I was trying to get those screws out.
Columbia, Houston, your teleprint message should be on board. Columbia Houston, 40 seconds from LOS. Santiago is next at 11-11. Okay, Hank, see you there. This is Mission Control Houston. That completes playback of the uh, Hawaii television downlink of change out of the uh, carbon dioxide canisters aboard Columbia. We're about a minute away from acquisition through Santiago. We'll uh, stand by for word that that station has picked up Columbia. One day, 11 hours, 10 minutes, and standing by, Mission Control, Houston. Columbia, Houston to Santiago for the next six minutes. We have a state vector coming your way, and, uh, and it should be good through the sleep period, and also a uh, table maintenance item. Okay, okay. The guys working the comm side at Santiago asked me to relay to you their best wishes. Columbia coming by many more times. Roger that. Uh, for info, IMU number one is uh, your best IMU. Number one, roger that. Columbia Houston, uh, have you got anybody on the flight deck there that could uh, pull a couple of breakers for us? John said it that way. Columbia Houston, uh, your state vector and Timbu is on board. And for another quick update, the weather at Edwards is uh, going to be excellent tomorrow. In fact, it's so good that Richard's going to stay here in uh, Mocha and watch the landing from here. All right. It certainly looks super today. Houston, Columbia, you read over. Roger, John, read you loud and clear. What can I do for you? John, we'd like to make one final check on your HSI. Uh, and what we want to do is get you to, on F6 over there, take the instrument power off, and then on uh, 014, 015, pull both of the DDU left circuit breakers. And uh, what we want you to do is watch your HSI card as you do this and see if it uh, moves. If, there, if, it, if it's okay, that card should slew around to, uh, to north, and uh, your pointers all should null up. Okay, the HSI never moved. Okay, no joy. That, well, that confirms it for us. You can go ahead and push the breakers back in. Okay. And just as a reminder, John, you probably should go ahead and get the Z tracker on so it can be warming up for your IMU alignment coming up here. And as soon as you work it in, you need to get that maneuver going, too. No need to reply, Columbia, but uh, we're going to plan to dump the VTR uh, at uh, Hawaii at 1218. That's uh, 
a little over an hour from now. We're going to use the same procedures that we used uh, last time, which worked out real well. Uh, just set up for the playback at Hawaii, and uh, when the INCO is all set up, uh, we'll give you a go to start the playback. Okay, go. Somebody Houston, we're about one minute uh, from LOS. Uh, Botswana is next at uh, 11.32. Okay, Hank, see you there. This is Mission Control, Houston. Going over the hill from Santiago. Among the many messages, tele telegrams received uh, here in Mission Control, is one to the acting administrator of NASA, Dr. Alan Lovelace. Congratulations to the entire NASA team on a super launch. Please pass along to John and Bob our congratulations and best wishes for a safe return. And signed by uh, Representative Eddie Boland of Massachusetts, who is chairman of the House Appropriations Subcommittee on Housing and Urban Development and Independent Agencies. In approximately uh, five minutes or so, there will be a playback of a videotape that was dumped from uh, Hawaii Pass back on Rev 9. That videotape has now been retrieved. It involves close-ups uh, out the windows overlooking the um, cargo bay, looking back toward the Holmes Pots just additional uh, videotape examining those areas with the lens apparently zoomed out to a tighter shot. We'll advise when that playback is ready. At uh, one day, 11 hours, 18 minutes. This is Mission Control, Houston. Mission Control, Houston here. That tape from uh, Orbit 9 over Hawaii. It will be rolling in approximately six seconds. Point 0.02, minus 0.05, minus 0.27, at 10.59.45. Okay, we copied that. And uh, the class, the line cal, will verify that because uh, The angler error was 01, and the torquing angles were all uh, less than five hundredths of a degree. Want to copy that? At least I think it helped verify it. Tommy Houston, we've uh, been watching the Ohms crossfeed line temps, and uh, uh, they're going a little low on A14. Uh, we would like to get the Ohms crossfeed line heater. B auto on B auto. Okay, you want to leave A auto on also? Is that right? Uh, stand by one. Hold that. Hold on for that clip. Okay, B auto is coming back off. Columbia Houston, have you got anything uh, you you have for us before uh, Santiago, which is the next pass, last pass to Eden? I don't think so. Can't think of anything. Okay, are you going to keep the air to ground, uh, I mean the UHF on tonight? I'm so, I assume you're going to turn the air to ground 2 off uh, because of the noise. Roger that. Plan to sleep on with air to ground 1 and uniform. Okay, we copy that. Mission Control Houston, that completes the playback of the uh, television recorded yesterday at Hawaii. A close-up examination of the Ohms pots. We'll be back in six minutes for uh, Botswana Pass. Mission Control, one hour, 11 minutes, 26 seconds. Botswana Comtech. Roger, Botswana. This is Houston Comtech, testing one, two, three, Four, five, 
four, three, two, one, test out. 100% modulation, go. Copy, Botswana, thank you very much, and configure for your pass, please. Roger. This is Mission Control, Houston. About 40 seconds out from Botswana. Voice relay station. And uh, overlapping, near overlapping pass over Indian Ocean station. The final pass of the evening at the Indian Ocean. Crew winding down the day's activities as they come up on their final sleep period in space. Sleep period to begin at uh, one day, 13 hours, about an hour and a half from now. On the uh, Houston to Botswana for the next seven minutes. Okay, Crip, we're reading you now. Yeah, you guys been currently having a little bit of problem there with uh, receiving our UHF. I didn't know whether you had me or not. Oh, no, sir, we're reading you, and uh, while I got you here, I think I'll give you a quick rundown on the consumable status. The uh, RCS, the forward RCS is about 3% below our predicted nominal. Still well above the mission completion red line. The aft left is uh, down 4%, and the right down uh, 3% from what we predicted, but that's going to get better because we're interconnected, uh, and it will continue to improve. Our left ohms is 1% above predicted, and the right ohms is uh, almost 3% above the predicted value. We will stay with the right arms interconnect uh, until sleep period, go to normal configuration for sleep, and then we'll return to the interconnect the uh, first thing tomorrow morning and stay in that configuration until about uh, TIG minus four or five minutes. Okay. Columbia, Houston, uh, you dropped out if you tried to transfer. You're going just about right over the site now, so it's uh, probably not too good a calm. Okay, we got the uh, IMU alignment uh, results if, you, or if you're copying well enough to get it. Okay, uh, we read you pretty good that time. Why don't you go ahead and try to give it to us? Okay, X, Y, and C on IMUs 1, 2, and 3, respectively. Minus 05. Minus 04, minus 01, minus 01, plus 03, plus 02, minus 0.09, plus 0.07, minus 0.02. Execution time was 11.30.30. Okay, we got that, John. Thank you. Columbia, Houston, uh, we're about one minute to LOS. Indy is next at 
Columbia Houston to Indy for the next eight minutes. Okay, uh, I think we have you, a couple of uh, echo in there, and I can hear you're getting ready for a telephone message. That's permitted, but uh, we've got one about to come your way. Tommy Houston, uh, Eagle says he see you, sees you warming your chow. Uh, sorry, say that one again. Uh, Eagle just saw the signature for the food warmer. Columbia Houston, uh, is anybody on the flight deck? Uh, roger that. Uh, when we gave the procedure to John a while ago on the HSI, uh, uh, we neglected one last step. Uh, uh, what we'd like for you to do, if you can, over on F6 there, to throw the instrument power on and uh, and see if the HSI moves when that switch goes on. What we're looking for, if any of the, is the CDI or the glass slope indicator, bearing pointers, or, or the compass card itself move. Okay, I'll have to wait until after we finish this class, yeah. Okay, no problem. Tommy Houston, we received a message here uh, in the MOKER. It's from Representative Eddie Boland, the Chairman of the House Appropriations Subcommittee on Housing and Urban Development and Independent Agencies, and he sends his congratulations to you for a super launch and best wishes for a safe return. That's my kind. We appreciate those fine remarks. Columbia, Houston, the teleprinter message uh, should be on board. Okay, hi. I think you can even recognize that something coughs now. It looks a lot better than the real world. Your comm is uh, breaking up real badly. Uh, Probably having some trouble at the site. They've had a little trouble at the end of the day. Uh, could you say again, please? There was no important thing. Columbia Houston, uh, we didn't read you the uh, uh, last transmission about a minute ago. We've been having trouble with the satellite link between Indy and uh, Sunnyvale. Uh -huh. Don't blame the wrong people. If somebody will be sure and tell you about it. Hey, you came in loud and clear then. Okay. 
I understood you to say you were uh, having no trouble to uh, recognizing the stars. Is that correct? No, I was just commenting that I could even find and knew what the Southern Cross looked like. Oh, super. First time I ever thought for real. Looks a lot better than it does in the simulator. Although they do a pretty good job with it. Columbia Houston, we're about one minute to LOS. Uh, Hawaii will be next at 12.18, and we'll be setting up there for the VTR jump. Uh, Hank, uh, I'm sorry, I missed your last thing. Roger, Hawaii is next at 12.18, and we will be set up for the VTR dump. Roger right that. 12.18 Hawaii for the VTR. This is Mission Control Houston. Loss of signal for the final time this evening through the Indian Ocean Station. We're expecting a, a dump from the videotape recorder aboard Columbia in some 29 minutes during the upcoming Hawaii Pass. This is not in the crew activity plan, but uh, it's not schedule TV dump from the videotape recorder. It is not a live pass. We'll be back in 28 minutes for Hawaii. And one day, 11 hours, 49 minutes into the flight of Columbia. This is Mission Control, Houston. Hawaii Comtech, Houston Comtech, air to ground one. Houston Comtech, Hawaii Comtech. Okay, Hawaii, before I give you key and modulation checks, I'd like to uh, brief you on what we have planned at your site. After, um, after a, or a little bit into your pass, the Capcom has requested that we play some uplink some music on air to ground one. They call it dinner music for the crew. So. Right. During the time of the uplink of the music, you'll need to go constant key on air to ground one. So I'll come Roger. to you. I'll come to you on site cord and ask you to go constant key, and then I'll wait for your confirmation that you are in constant key. Then we'll start the music. All right, Roger. Copy that. Okay. At this time, I'll multi-access air to ground one and two and give you key and modulation check. Roger. Right, Houston contact testing one, two. Three, four, five, four, three, two, one. Test out. Houston contact, Hawaii contact. We have 100% key. Modulation go. Get around one and two. Okay, Hawaii, thank you very much. And configure for your pass. I'll be talking with you on site cord later. Roger, we'll be standing by. Roger. This is Mission Control Houston, about 40 seconds away from AOS through Hawaii. Next to the final pass before sleep period begins, we're expecting a downlink uh, videotape playback through Hawaii. Columbia Houston to Hawaii for the next uh, eight minutes. We have uh, IMU gyro biases coming up. They're real small for IMUs one and two, uh, medium on uh, IMU-3, the worst being the x-axis for the point oh one eight. Okay, Henry, sounds good. And uh, Hank, whenever you guys have got data set up, we're setting back to play on the VTR. Uh, we need command on the TV switch. Oh, sorry about that. You got it now? Oh, Dr. Bisco, I didn't mean to do that to you. Did you happen to flip that controller bias on and uh, see what happened to HSI? I mean, uh, I beg your pardon. Did you happen to flip uh, the power switch? Uh, uh, Roger, Hank, we checked that out and there was still no joint. Okay, we copy that. 
Okay, we're ready for the dump. Okay, we're coming at you. And I've got a couple of items for you here, Crip, uh, if it's convenient. Go ahead. Okay, because the the orbit is uh, slightly non-normal per what we had pre-flight, uh, we need to bias is a TIG on, uh, you on your block data per normal oh, well, procedure. We we're on the flight deck. Six minutes. We ain't got around to tell you. We'll get there. Okay. Uh, we, we need to uh, repress the uh, left and right propellant tanks on the ohms so we can lock up the maximum pressure for our blowdown capability. Okay, y'all go ahead and do that while you guys are watching. Wait a minute. Stand by one. Okay. What we need to do, Crip, is terminate the interconnect and then we'll, do, we'll take a look at it. Okay, uh, can I just uh, terminate it and stay here and free uh, without going back to the RCS? Uh, Hank, will you be able to look at it at uh, this path? Stand by one, Crip. Go ahead and drop the interconnect as long as you're in free. I'll do that. Okay, we uh, terminated it. Okay, stand by one. We need pulse in the yaw axis and uh, we need to get the tank isos. We still see a discrete in y'all. We need to get it back to pulse. Oh, okay, sorry about that. Okay, Crip, go ahead and repress with a helium vape ice off. Okay, on the, um, you know, both, uh, both systems are just the right. We'd like to uh, repress both the left and right, open them up for five seconds, and then close them. Okay, that's complete. And we need to get the Y tracker in the uh, Star Trek mode. I'm to Houston. Uh, we got about two minutes left in the pass, and uh, Santiago is next at uh, 12:46. And the first part, a couple of minutes, that are going to be with the surgeon from Med Conference. Uh, if you do, you have anything else for us? No, sir. Is it mean we're going to go get to talk to you, or will we get to talk to you after, next, after uh, we talk to Doc? If you want any help, Henry. Okay, well, we'll get to talk to you there, but uh, we had some dinner music for you. We thought that you'd be eating dinner at this time. It's a uh, courtesy of contraband, and I think it's uh, appropriate to the pace that you kept today, if you'd like to hear that as you go over the hill. Oh, we'd like it. It's the pre-dinner music. We're almost there. 
Okay, well, we'll let it come your way. And as you go over the hill there, you get the, uh, shut down the TV and VTR. This is Mission Control Houston. As Columbia went over the hill for the final time at Hawaii, after dumping a videotape playback, uh, the control center here played up a uh, piece of music by a group called Contraband, which is made up mainly of flight controllers from the Johnson Space Center Control Center. That group started out life at uh, one of the annual chili cook-offs here, then played at the Christmas party, and uh, seems to still be surviving it for various occasions. Hello. One of the communications engineers, Granville Pennington, who is on the, he's on the silver team with Neil Hutchinson as the uh, ENCO position, is the acting uh, director of this group. We'll be back in 16 minutes for the uh, final pass of the evening before the crew goes to bed through Santiago. One day, 12 hours, 29 minutes, mission elapsed time, mission control, Houston. This is mission control, Houston. We're anticipating a uh, playback of the videotape dump that came down from Hawaii, from Spacecraft Columbia. In about 15 minutes, it'll be some five minutes after loss of signal through Santiago, but anybody planning to re-record this dump should have their machines all set up and ready to roll about 15 minutes from now. This is Mission Control, Houston, 30 seconds away from acquisition through Santiago, Chile, voice relay station, early part of this upcoming pass will be uh, taken up by private medical communications with a surgeon, who again tonight is uh, Dr. Mike Dungo, spelled D-U-N-G-O. Preparations upcoming tomorrow after the wake period for the reentry and landing. Should be AOS at this time, and the surgeon will hand the loop back to the spacecraft communicator once the uh, private medical conference is complete. About five minutes after LOS at the Santiago Pass, the videotape recording dumped at Hawaii earlier in this orbit will be replayed for those who missed it and want to re-record it. Mission control at one day, 12 hours, 46. 
from the uh, Houston to Santiago. How do you read? Columbia, Houston, how do you read? Cloud and clear there, Houston. Oh, we read you now. Uh, I'm trying to have some problem there. How do you read, Hank? Do you read okay? Read you loud and clear now. Okay, we read the surgeon all the way through, but he couldn't hear us. I don't know what's happening now, but apparently they weren't getting up. We've only got one thing here before you, we put you to bed. Is uh, the we've noticed that one of the sensors that's uh, feeding the Ohm's crossfeed heaters is uh, starting to creep on us, and uh, to preclude you from getting uh, an alert during the night, uh, we recommend that on uh, O14. I think that should be A14 under RCS Ohm's heaters. Ohm's crossfeed lines, A auto, B auto. Get both of them on. We got it, Hank. How much longer are you going to be with us? Okay, we got a little over a minute here, guys. And uh, on behalf of the bronze team, it's sure been a pleasure working with you troops. You've done a super job. We're, we think it's uh, been a tremendous effort on your part, and we all look forward to seeing you tomorrow. In fact, uh, we're quite excited about it. We understand you're buying well, you might, you might be right. Hey, uh, tell the surgeon that that little bit of uh, dermatitis I had from the sensors uh, was only on that uh, day that we scrubbed. I haven't noticed it since. Well, may, so maybe flying is good for it. So I don't, uh, don't need any cream or nothing else, and that uh, John and I will be able to go to sleep, we think, without any medication. Okay, he copied that, and uh, we got about 20 seconds left. Uh, hope you have a good night's rest. If anything comes up, it's a long wait. You have to go all the way back around to Santiago again at uh, 1420. All right. Hey, and uh, we're sorry we couldn't fix that uh, recorder for those guys, and we'd be willing to consider, you know, not scrapping all the way in and doing something like that if we can, uh, if we can help them. But I'd prefer to plug it in like uh, post the deal return. Okay, we, we copy that. If you get uh, cool during the night, remember to turn Waterloop 1 on. This is Mission Control Houston. Loss of signal through Santiago. The uh, flight surgeon attempted to uh, call the crew, but he could not hear their response. They heard him. So the loop was handed back to spacecraft communicator Hank Hartsfield. Crippen reported that uh, they would need no sleeping pills for this evening's sleep period, and that he had not experienced the uh, stomach uneasiness since uh, the day before launch. And they were feeling quite well. We're uh, almost well, we are one full orbit away from next station contact, which will be Santiago this time. Again, the ground track misses all the stations. An hour and 27 minutes until next station contact. About uh, four minutes away now from uh, playback of the videotape recording that was dumped from the spacecraft over Hawaii earlier this orbit. This is Mission Control Houston. One day, 12 hours, 53 minutes. Ground elapsed time. Go ahead. Okay, because the, the orbit is uh, slightly non-normal per what we had pre-flight, uh, we need to bias a TIG. Uh, on your block data per nominal procedures, and the bias should be minus six minutes. Understand that bias uh, take by minus six minutes per block data. Roger, and uh, is anybody on the flight deck now? Or are you eating? Oh, well, that's where we work at. We're on the flight deck. We ain't got around to tell you. We'll get there. Okay, uh, we, we need to uh, repress the uh, left and right propellant tanks on the ohms so we can lock up the maximum pressure for our blowdown capability. 
Okay, y'all go ahead and do that while you guys are watching. Wait a minute. Stand by one. Okay. What we need to do, Crip, is terminate the interconnect and then we'll do we'll take a look at it. Okay, uh, can I just uh, terminate it and stay here and free uh, without going back to the RCS? Uh, Hank, will you be able to look at it at uh, this path? Stand by one, Crip. Go ahead and drop the interconnect as long as you're in free. I'll do that. Okay, we uh, terminated it. Okay, stand by one. We need pulse in the yaw axis and uh, we need to get the tank eye sold. Uh, say it again, Hank. You want me to go ahead and go back to the RCS? That is affirmative. Okay. We still see a discrete in y'all. We need to get it back to Pulse. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, Crip, go ahead and repress with a helium vape ice off. Okay, on the... Uh, you on both, both systems or just the right? We'd like to uh, repress both the left and right, open them up for five seconds, and then close them. Okay, that's complete. And we need to get the Y tracker in the uh, Star Trek mode. Okay. I'm the Houston. Uh, we got about two minutes left in the pass, and uh, Santiago is next at uh, 12.46, and the first part, a couple of minutes, that are going to be with the surgeon from Med Conference. Uh, if you, do you have anything else for us? Yes, sir. Is it mean we're going to get to talk to you, or will we get to talk to you after, next, after uh, we talk to the doc? Oh, if you want help me, Henry. Okay, well, we'll get to talk to you there, but uh, we had some dinner music for you. We thought that you'd be eating dinner at this time. It's uh, courtesy of contraband, and I think it's uh, appropriate to the pace that you kept today, if you'd like to hear that as you go over the hill. Oh, I would like it. It's some pre-dinner music. We're almost there. Okay, well, we'll let it come your way. This is Mission Control Houston. Crew now in their sleep period and their final nap aboard the spacecraft Columbia before coming home tomorrow. We're now estimating the change of shift briefing with the offgoing flight director Chuck Lewis to be at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time in the small briefing room in the building to New Center, JSC. Right now, the uh, spacecraft is uh, coasting across across Africa. An hour and 12 minutes before next acquisition at, S at Santiago, Chile. We're not expecting any further contact tonight from the crew until wake up some seven hours, 41 minutes from now. To repeat again, change of shift briefing will be uh, about 50 minutes from now at 8 p.m. Central in the Johnson Space Center newsroom. Mission Control Houston at one day, 13 hours, 8 minutes. This is Mission Control Houston. Mission elapsed time is one day, 13 hours, 31 minutes. Here in the Mission Operations Control Room in Houston, we're in the process of uh, changing flight control teams, Chuck Lewis and the Brian.
Lions team are relinquishing their positions uh, for Neil Hutchison and the Silver team. We expect to have the uh, change of shift briefing at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time, approximately 30 minutes from now. The astronauts, of course, are uh, still in their sleep period. Mission elapsed times, one day, 13 hours, 32 minutes. This is Mission Control Houston. This is Shuttle Mission Control, Houston. Mission elapsed time, one day, 14 hours, two minutes. I'm going to transfer you to Building 2 News Center for the change of shift press conference with outgoing flight director Chuck Lewis and Gene Krantz, Deputy Director of the Flight Operations Director at Johnson Space Center. Mission elapsed time, one hour, one day, 14 hours, Two minutes, and this is Shuttle Mission Control. Okay, change of shift briefing, the final one for Flight Director Chuck Lewis. Which I'm glad he's, I'm sure he's glad it's true, me too. And uh, accompanying him is the uh, Deputy Director of Flight Operations at JSC, Gene Krantz. Chuck, you want to run over your mission log for today? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Orbit team shift consisted of some suit exercise on the part of the commander and the pilot, doffing and uh, donning exercises to make sure they could meet the timeline tomorrow. And by the way, that's our plan, entry tomorrow. Looks like Rev preliminary indications are it's Rev 36 for a deorbit uh, with a TIG time of about 53 hours and 20 minutes elapsed. Uh, we had some RCS uh, rotational test Verniers and primary jets. Uh, we did uh, modify the uh, crew activity plan somewhat. We asked them to try to change out the DFI PCM recorder that we've been having problems with. Uh, we have an in-flight procedure in the flight data file, but the crew had difficulty removing the uh, screw or fasteners that hold the panel, the front panels on the recorders, so we gave up on that. And. Uh, team now is working uh, to figure out the best management plan to try to capture that DFI data during entry tomorrow. Uh, <coughs> other than that, uh, it was a fairly nominal ship. We, the crew went to sleep tonight. We've got very few problems to work on, all minor. Uh, as we've said earlier, we're not concerned about the, the tile in the pod. That shouldn't be a problem for us. Weather's good at Edwards tomorrow. Everything's really looking up. Gene, you have anything you want to say, or shall we just go to right question? Now, okay, please wait for the microphone. Identify yourself back there. Yeah, all right, back there, Pete. Uh, Luke Cope, Minneapolis Tribune for Mr. Krantz. Uh, when you gave the briefing at the last cha change of shift two, uh, you raised the possibility of still trying to get some photographs. Uh, how long could they be done as late as tomorrow morning? Uh, yeah, we could uh, possibly uh, get some photographic coverage on uh, Rev 35, but uh, we really don't feel that's necessary. We've uh, examined all data that's available to the uh, thermon thermal protection system. We've concluded we have no basis for altering our plans for entry or landing tomorrow morning, and I just can't go into any further detail on this subject. Yeah, I don't mean to get you into any detail on the subject of what you're trying to do. I just wanted to make sure that your statements that you made earlier are still held, that if you got uh, something, you'd still like to get it. If you got it, uh, I took it just to look at it. Uh, you feel confident without it, but you would like to get it if you, if you could, and if you did get it and find something, there were steps you could take uh, to be safer. Does that, no. all that still hold? 
No, I don't think we uh, intend to uh, pursue any additional photographic coverage, with the exception of that which is going to be obtained from Anderson Peak tomorrow, which is part of the planned nominal entry activity. So you've, so you've given up now trying to get any other? That is correct. Okay. Up here, Pete, Bob Wormstead. Bob Wormstead, Time Magazine. Um, I'd like to ask about the problem with the recorders. Yes. Um, how would you uh, would you explain that that it's it's one recorder that's bad out of three, or all three of them are are a line that leads to the three? What is actually stuck or whatever? Well, we have uh, several recorders on board. Uh, we have two operational recorders that we use for operational data, that is flight support data, that we use to uh, record data in LOS periods and then dump to the ground stations. Those two are working okay. Uh, we have a payload recorder. Now, in addition to that, we have three development flight instrumentation recorders. One of them is called a wideband ascent, uh, wide ascent mission recorder, and that one's primarily to record data just for ascent in the event we lose real-time coverage due to the plume or so forth uh, during, that, during launch. The second one is called the Wideband Mission Recorder. Uh, it's got about a seven-hour record capability, if I remember right. Uh, no, it's about a two-hour record capability, primarily for ascent and entry again. That's acoustical data, vibration data, that type of thing. Uh, and then the one we had problems with, the third one, it was the DFI PCM Recorder. And it has the majority of the temperature measurements, and of course it was of key interest to us to get that data, and that's why we made the effort this afternoon to try to change them out. We would have swapped the PCM recorder for the wideband mission recorder. And we had a technique worked out where we would not have lost any of the data on the wideband mission either. We would have, we would have gone past that data and record on the clean tracks. But unfortunately, uh, it didn't work. Now, let me say that the data will lose. <coughs> Excuse me. The DFI PCM recorder data is also well, that data I explained last night, I believe, is also radiated to the ground in real time. Okay, so, for example, we'll be coming over Guam just prior to entry interface. We'll get that DFI PCM data there, a few minutes of it. Uh, but when we go into blackout, since the recorder's not functioning, we'll lose that data. We come out of blackout, we're over the West Coast station, we'll pick that data up again. So there's about a 20-minute period that we're going to lose the temperature measurements on the development flight instrumentation. I have a follow-up, please? Yes. Um, there was a, a comment in the uh, commentary that we had about using a swivel stick and reaching back to turn this thing on and off. Is that what they're going to do? No, sir. Uh, Dick Truly went to the simulator yesterday unsuited and said he could manage with a little difficulty to uh, operate the circuit breaker by reaching back around in between the seat and the panel and, and pushing the breaker in. Crippen tried that today suited during the suiting exercise. He said it won't work. He can't get to it. Now, one of the options we have, and Crippen on our last pass today said he'd be willing to get out of the seat after the deal would burn, push the breaker in, or the recorder. And there's pros and cons of doing that. Right here. That's being looked at. I want you guys to get the idea that Time Magazine is ganging up on you. Jerry Hanna from the Time. I've been at the Cape, just got in, and if this is replicative or duplicative, uh, forgive, but uh, item one. Have you decided is there a potential area during the liftoff? Was it at max Q or max G? When do you think the tiles, Nomex, whatever the heck, were peeled off? Got well, an idea? We really don't know. Uh, at the liftoff, as I identified, the, we had good quality photographic data uh, from the cameras that were uh, basically looking at the top of the vehicle, about midway down the vehicle, and then towards the base and the head, relatively good look angle. Uh, we didn't see any anomalies in any of that data. So we at least know it was relatively clean there. Uh, I think where it happened is going to await the uh, retrieval of the vehicle, taking a look at the Ohms pods, and then possibly looking back through the flight regime and see if there's any other anomalistic data. All right, uh, corollary to what I was pursuing there. Um, the Baker Nun data, or the geods data, if you've been looking at the underside, uh, does it establish the integrity of the 
tiling on the lower side of the fuselage, leading edge. I think I'll just go back and read that statement I read earlier. Okay, okay and that's basically our answer there. Up here in the front. Jim King from the Associated Press. During the um, picture taking se sessions from the ground, did the shuttle roll over to expose its underside to the earth? Now, at no time uh, during the flight plan did we uh, exercise specific maneuvers. What we were looking for were targets of opportunity, so we did not uh, materially alter the flight plan. We were willing to. We had considered it, but uh, generally from the uh, uh, site in Hawaii and the site in Florida, we just either were wiped out from a standpoint of weather, look angle, elevation angles, or whatever. Follow up. Um, Assuming then that um, uh, it was my understanding that the that this uh, shuttle is flying um, uh, upside <laughs> Good, down, uh, okay, uh, like this. Uh, if, if you had clear weather, what you know, you want to take a picture of this side, and you're down here shooting up. Uh, what if you had clear weather? What did you expect to get? The open bay doors? No, actually, if you take a look at it, and as a function of the uh, approach azimuth to the site. Many times we were in, in one of the areas that we were really trying to get to, we were in what we call a gravity gradient attitude where nose was down. And as the spacecraft approached the site, remember maintaining this position, you'll see it from one side as it approaches you and another side as it'll leave you. That was one of the areas that we were most interested in getting. Further questions? Was there <clears throat> during that uh, as <clears throat> Unfortunately, I hate to say it again, we just didn't get the data. Uh, the best pass we had was the uh, Mile 17 pass, and uh, I still haven't tracked this down. They reported a low elevation angle. The elevation angle, to our best guesstimate, was around 45 degrees there, so we think it should have been a pretty good pass. We just haven't had the time to go back and track that through the system. Okay, next. Second row back here. Uh, uh, <coughs> Uh, I can find uh, two time, uh, two times of uh, uh, touchdown of the spacecraft uh, in the Plisket. The one is uh, 30 minutes uh, 20, uh, no, uh, 30 minutes 35 seconds past the hour, and the other one is uh, 27 minutes uh, 46 seconds past the hour. Uh, which is correct? Probably neither one, because it's a function of the orbit we're in. And uh, as the orbit changes, and we pick up a little bit of change in the orbit, as I said earlier, uh, right tonight, it looked like uh, projecting ahead that the deorbit maneuver would occur at 53 hours and 20 minutes into the flight, and landings approximately one hour later. Now that'll be refined as the uh, our FIDO and trajectory people work that through the night and tomorrow. Carlos Meyer, Houston Chronicle. On your, uh, the post-landing activities, is there going to be, uh, I note that the, the crew is scheduled to hop on an airplane, come around into Ellington for a brief ceremony here. Uh, when is the, uh, what kind of debriefings do you have scheduled? When will this take place? How long will it take? Yeah, I don't have the uh, specific schedule. I think we could probably get one for you uh, next time, actually possibly for the next press conference or the subsequent one, but it's uh, generally going to be about a five to eight day period. It's a very intensive, detailed briefing. They're going to have to talk to the photographic people, the engine people, the various systems people, procedures and flight planning people. It's going to follow basically the same type of follow debriefings we've used before. Follow up there. A quick follow up. Uh, it, it won't be, I take it though, that even though it will be an intensive debriefing, it's not something where they have to be secluded away from their families. They'll be able to, to be at home during this. Is that right or am I wrong? I don't really know what the plans are. Next row back. Jeff Smith, Science Magazine. Mr. Kranz, you look more confident this evening than you did this morning about the condition of the tiles. Is there anything that's happened since then to um, hard or soft data from any source whatsoever that makes you, makes you smile a little bit more tonight? It's mainly because uh, maybe I feel this is the last time I'm going to have to do this because tomorrow <laughs> we'll... <laughs>
We're all going to be interested in the uh, landing phase of the mission. Now, if you want me to read that statement one more time, I will. Never seen a dead horse get beat so much. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? Back there. John Carey, Newsweek. I wonder if you could tell us how the cabin temperature problems and the cabin gas mixture problems were solved. Uh, the cabin gas problem, although it's a very minor problem, uh, we've got two control systems to control the uh, O2 N2 flow into the cabin and maintain the cabin pressure. Uh, this number one system that we've been operating on uh, appears to have a very small leak backflow in a check valve and also the controller that uh, controls the PPO2, partial pressure of oxygen, uh, may not be seated correctly. It's very minor. We're on the second system number two right now and we'd plan to switch anyway uh, during the mid-flight mid just check both systems. <clears throat> and the temperature problem, uh, we advise the crew today that uh, if they got cold at night to turn the second water loop on in the cabin and that should raise the cabin temperature five or six degrees. We wanted to try that a couple of hours before sleep just to make sure it looked okay and Crip said they were warm but didn't need to didn't have it any warmer. Has that been tried already <clears throat> when it was when it was cold this morning? No uh, we didn't want to wait we didn't want to call the crew last night we had that in mind we knew it was a possibility and we were ready if the crew have called us during the sleep period to pass that to them but we don't like to bug them unless there's an absolute need to. Okay let's go to the Cape uh, for a while here and take a few questions down there. KSC you got any? Uh, yes, we yes we have a couple of questions. Uh, first two are from Everly Driscoll of ICA. She's asked us to ask these for her. She realizes you may not have all the information on it, but would appreciate whatever you can give her. The question is, either during the fourth or fifth RCS maneuver, there was some conversation on the air to ground about the thrust vector not being accurate. Young seemed to be concerned that the maneuver should not have been done because of some reason, perhaps the attitude. He said he had to use the ohms and I think pressurize the RCS. Capcom then said, Roger, we learned a lesson too. Question is, I would like to understand what is going on. Basically, that was uh, an additional RCS maneuver that uh, we put into the flight plan. The basic problem was, was that we attempted to use a UHF site and if you remember, basically we have a singular antenna in the bottom of the spacecraft. We had extremely poor communications. And I think John was concerned that he didn't get the maneuver right. We were concerned that we didn't get it up to him right. However, communications did improve towards the end of the pass. And I think the uh, lesson that was learned there was, and I think we learned this in previous programs, Gemini and a few others, never wait till a uh, uh, last end of a pass to uplink a maneuver pad is basically what it amounts to. And that's, you know, a lesson that somewhere along the line, it seems we all learn and have to relearn on occasion. And I think we relearned it today. Okay, Cape. Uh, the second question, what was wrong with the HSI and, it, and whether or not it was corrected? Uh, the problem with the HSI is the compass card, it's the center dial of the instrument, uh, is frozen in one position and will not drive and we've attempted some troubleshooting today, uh, removing power to the unit, hoping we could, uh, that would zero the commands to the compass card, reapply power to see if it would drive back to zero. It did not drive. Uh, we don't think that's any significant concern. Uh, there's another instrument on the right side, Crippen has it. Uh, we talked to Joe Engel, uh, who's flown the many entries, uh, as well as John in the simulator, and uh, with just the loss of the compass card, it shouldn't be a problem for We have a reporter here with a question. Yes, uh, my name is Tom Laurie from Heavy Metal Magazine. I have two questions. One about what is a cookie sheet, uh, and uh, what was the button that Commander Young was pushing on his chest during the conversation with the Vice President? The uh, first question, a cookie sheet is a Teflon a uh, flat Teflon plate that we use if we are to perform in-flight maintenance. We disconnect, uh, it could be the, a tape recorder or a computer or whatever else we might want to go change. 
it's to slide beneath the uh, black box and above the box so that when we're pulling it out or putting a new one in, or change out, it protects the cold plates that that particular unit sets on or the cold plates that are above it that the next uh, row of equipment set on. So it's just strictly a, a protective device, a shield to keep from banging a box into a cold plate and perhaps getting a puncture and a, and a leak. The, uh, the button that uh, Commander Young was pushing during the uh, discussion with the Vice President, just push to talk button so he could communicate from the downlink. Just a little push to talk button. We have no more questions here at the case. Okay, how about Dryden? Anybody at Dryden? from Dryden. Okay, back to Houston. Uh, catch one more back there and then move up. Jeff Smith, Science Magazine. How important is this data on, uh, temp how important is the temperature data that you plan to get during reentry that you may not be able to get? What are the consequences of losing that data um, to the overall plan for this mission? And are there any alternatives besides having the astronaut get up out of his seat after the reorbit, the reentry burn? Uh, any other alternatives, any alternative ways of getting that information? The uh, instrumentation that uh, is on this recorder is extreme, well, it's extremely important to us. That's one of the reasons we're flying. It's development flight instrumentation to tell us how high the temperatures get during the entry. Uh, now, we've got a lot of predictions and analysis has been run uh, in the last several years uh, predicting those temperatures. I really feel like, uh, although we, we, we hate to lose it, if we get the data at Guam going in uh, to that uh, high temperature region and we get the real-time data being radiated when we come out of blackout, we can more or less uh, form, take that data and apply it to our analysis and see if it fits the curve. If it does, we're probably, uh, we've got a indirect, I mean, an indirect way of determining uh, if our analysis is correct. So it's, uh, it's something we hate to lose, but I think uh, that we can salvage a part of it by uh, getting data just before and after the blackout periods. Uh, what was your second question? Is there any alternative means of getting the, the information <coughs> other than having the uh, astronaut get up out of his seat during after the reentry burn? Yes, there are already two or three floating around the control center. Uh, we have a DFI master power switch up on the center console that could be used, uh, but it powers all DFI equipment, all the signal conditioners, all the multiplexers, the transmitters, everything. Uh, it's about a 3,000 kilowatt load uh, on that one switch. Uh, that could be used, although there's a few of us, and I'm included, I don't like seeing that kind of a power transient uh, during that part of flight. So that's one option. Uh, Another option is, there's a, I've even seen a photograph already, some of the crew members have gone to the simulator and jury rigged a, a, uh, a stick and rubber bands and so forth and so on that could be reached and pulled. Well, what they do is they and, 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 re, and push the circuit breaker in. So uh, that will be worked uh, extensively tonight and uh, I'm sure that the trade-offs will be made and risk uh, examined and they'll come up with some, something by tomorrow morning. Bob Wormstead up here. Will they come up with that by the morning briefing <coughs> that we have? At five, I think it is. That's going to be your last one. Uh, they'll be close. <laughs> that kind of thing gets bounced around a lot. On the temperature problem, you know, the temperature in the cabin, um, haven't you also pinned the valve or whatever all the way wide open so it's as... There's a flow control uh, valve that we've pinned to uh, give us... Uh, uh, maximum heat to the cabin, or minimum cooling, I should say, better way to put it. Right behind you there, Pete. One very little question. Could you reconfirm to me, please, the amount of time they'll be spending on the aircraft once it's landed, and uh, why, uh, I remember you said something like about 45 minutes to an hour, and uh, I'm going to ask you a stupid question, why that long? Well, my guess Really, Don Putty would have a better answer. Uh, probably 30 minutes to an hour. It, it will vary. Uh, they do have to power down some systems on board. We want to say, for example, the Ohms RCS before the ground crews approach the vehicle to make sure we don't have a, a system that's active. For example, an RCS structure that could inadvertently fire. Uh, and, uh, 
be a hazard to the ground crew. Uh, it's dependent upon the convoy reaching the aircraft on a time schedule. It's dependent upon getting the purge cart uh, connected on a schedule. Uh, so it, it's a variable, but I would guess somewhere between 30 minutes and an hour. Pete Baldwin over here. <clears throat> Could you give us an idea where you stand as far as consumables go? We're in just outstanding shape. Uh, over, say, predicted nominal? Predicted. Uh, in the RCS area, the forward RCS is down about 3% from what we predicted pre-flight. That's still about 5, I'm guessing now, a little bit, 4 to 5% above what we'd call a red line on the forward system. As a matter of fact, the more we use out of the forward, the better off we are. It shifts our CG aft, and that's the way to go. Uh, that's a very minimal shift, but some. Uh, the left and right RCS pods, uh, during the course of this afternoon, we interconnected and used Ohm's propellant from the right tank for the aft RCS system. Uh, that, in looking at the projections, that will put our aft RCS right back up on the nominal and maybe even above the nominal predicted uh, come entry time. So we're going to be in good shape in our aft RCS. Ohms propellant left ohms is 1% above predicted. The right ohms, like I said, by the time we get to entry or the deorbit burn, it should be right at uh, predicted. We're just in beautiful shape. King over here. I feel like most people in the room know the answer to this question, so I hesitate to ask it, but this data recorder, uh, what is wrong with it that, re that requires the astronaut to get up and turn a switch? What? What, is, what are they doing there when they flip the switch? The, well, we, we're not exactly sure of the failure mode, but it, some indications indicate that it's stuck in a continuous record position. It should not be. Uh, the troubleshooting we've done can't confirm that. Uh, it could be the control switch hardware, control hardware switches and so forth. It could be in the recorder. We really don't know. The problem with continuous mode is you, you use up all your tape. You'll hit end of tape. Two hours. Uh, let me see. On that recorder. Well, let me, let me go back. It's got several tracks. There's about 30 minutes on the track, and it should switch to another track. What we're afraid of, it will happen is it could switch back over and get our ascent and get the, uh, the launch data that's on it also. And if we do that, we'll scrub it out. Just one final thought. What normally, when it works correctly, what would turn this recorder on? We have an audit. Well, there's a couple of things. The crew can control it manually, of course, uh, from, normally from the uh, uh, record, just a record switch up front. There's some sample modes. We have an automatic mode, two of them. One is a low sample mode where the recorder will record uh, one minute every 10 minutes of data, I believe, or it's five seconds every 10 minutes. High sample, it records, uh, I don't remember the times, 10 seconds every five minutes, something like that, to space that record out over the length of the flight. Uh, and then we have continuous record. That's one of one thought is that it is stuck in a continuous record. We don't know that for a fact. Way back there, you've had your hand up for a long time. Uh, Richard Salt, a San Francisco examiner. I just wanted to know on the... Uh, when you said they tried to uh, do a fix on that DFI and couldn't get the front panel off, was that a problem because of working in zero G or was that some other problem? I, I don't think it was a zero G problem. My impression from what Cripp said is both he and John attempted to break the torque, break the screw or fasten or loose. It was just torque so tight they couldn't break, they couldn't break it loose. I got several of them out, but they were down to some they just couldn't uh, get loose and it would have had to start tearing up some uh, metal and panels to do any, any more and he estimated four or five hours at best to get those things, uh, to get the panels loose, uh, and we gave up. Is that what they were, uh, is that what they were doing in that uh, little snatch of TV we had? Yes, sir. That, that's what they were working we on? We, uh, we gave it their option on the TV. I would have scrubbed it uh, to do the DFI, but they had a camera set up. It was set up originally, I think, for the CO2 canister change. And as a matter of fact, we got that as well as uh, a little bit of the recorder work. Okay. Anyways, Bob Wormstead again here. Um, the la just recently we heard um, Crippen, I believe, talking about uh, the stomach problem the day before and also some cream or something that he 
was worried that they might have to you might have to use he was talking about the doctor he uh, he had some irritation uh, as a result of the biomed harness uh, stick-ons while on the pad uh, the day we uh, scrubbed and uh, the cream was just some kind of medication to uh, ease that it was those the metal the uh, EKG harness uh, stick I don't know what the proper name of uh, the patch is you've seen them you've probably had them on electrolyte pasties. electrolyte pasties <laughs> pasties yeah. no problem back there uh, you said that uh, the weather would be favorable tomorrow. Uh, would, uh, would you please uh, give me uh, a little more detailed weather forecast at uh, Edwards Air Force Base? Um, this is from recollection from early, earlier today. I believe weather said uh, either 20 or 25,000 feet cirrus and uh, I believe that was it. Good visibility and uh, should be a problem. Got a couple of questions here in writing from Dryden. Since the loop appears to be down, they can hear us, but they can't get back to us. Okay, this is from Don Bain, uh, Dryden. First question: Was the fuel cell done? Was the fuel cell purge done on schedule? And if it was, what did it involve? It was done basically on schedule. All a purge involves is flowing hydrogen and oxygen to the fuel cell at a higher flow rate to flush any impurities that might build up over a period of time. Uh, and it norm there's normally some degradation over a period of eight or nine hours. You'll see a slight drop in what we call our voltage uh, current curves, our power curves. Uh, the next question was, or is, was the morning test of opening and closing the payload doors accomplished with no difficulties? Yes, it was. We're very pleased with the door operations. There was, I think, a very minor deflection that was predicted uh, well within the tolerances of the latches and uh, the guides. Okay, back to Houston questions here, uh, back there. Helen Hale, Gannett, um, when are they gonna undergo medical examinations and how many hours is that gonna take and who's going to do it? I mean, after they get back. Well, they get a quick one on board, I think. Before they uh, egress the vehicle, we're going to have a flight surgeon go on board. But beyond that, I don't know what their, I think Gene said, I don't know what their schedule is. Uh, and we'll talk, Terry uh, can, uh, I'm sure, find a crew schedule post-flight post and provide to the press. Back up here in front of you, Pete. Kyodo News. Uh, did uh, Mr. Clipton take uh, some medicine? No, nothing beyond uh, the scope decks uh, early in flight. Uh, and they, he reported uh, the last pass that he didn't think he or John would need any medication for sleep. How many tablets did, do, you know, do you know? I, I can't answer that. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, uh, against uh, vomiting or, or something like that? It was a countermeasure against possible motion sickness, precautionary measure only. He, Carlos Myers. Is uh, apparently he was he was planning on taking this. Uh, was uh, is he simply prone to motion sickness as a number of us are? No, he just didn't want to take a chance. It's a short flight, and uh, don't blame him. <laughs> and uh, he took it strictly as a precautionary measure. He's not any more prone. It's difficult to measure whether a man, not a man's going to get motion sickness. You know, we've had some tests on the ground, and it looks like this guy is in good shape, and he'll go into space. We've had this happen. He gets motion sick, and another one that uh, you'd think would doesn't. So I don't. There's no way to know. Is that a prescription medication? I I can't answer. I'm almost certain it is. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't think know. you can buy it either scopolamine or dexedrine without a. This is a mixture of the two. Bob Wormstead. Um, the sleeping uh, pill thing is that normal that that astronauts take sleeping pills to go to sleep? Or did uh, they last night and have? in the past others I don't know what they did last night uh, no no medications last night either so it's not normal I think it's their efficient. call I think it's available to them and should they feel they need it okay. there's that there's, there's items I'm sure on board in the uh, kit but uh, and, and isn't this uh, motion uh, sickness 
medication or space sickness, whatever you call it, isn't that required now for uh, astronauts if they've never been in space before? Do they have to take that when they go up? Not to my knowledge. I don't know of a hard requirement that a crewman has to take it. I know Crip took it because, I, as I said, straight back there, Pete. <clears throat> John Kerry, Newsweek. Just to pin down a detail on the, the DFI, would it have normally been left in, in low sample during the whole flight, and was it on a continuous record during the ascent? And would it have been on the, on the reentry? The, uh, the, the mode varies depending upon what the activity is in flight. Ascent, obviously, and entry, it's continuous. Uh, during an Ohm's maneuver or burn, it's continuous. That's the orbital maneuvering system. Uh, it's normally in a low sample mode on orbit. Being thermal data, you don't have fast response. You don't, you don't need but a few scattered data points. Up here, Pete Bulbin again. I know there's probably been a lot of work done on this, but uh, what are the, the chances of the, uh, the windows being degraded as a result of RCA burns, RCS burns? You know, the is there, has any of the tests shown any degradation at all but acceptable, let's say, degradation? Of well, we don't know. The crews, to my knowledge, has not commented on the condition of the windows, and I'm sure if they, there was, I would suspect, if there was something there, they would have commented. There are some uh, test objectives that they do record anything that uh, they might notice, as, as well as if they think it, they can get a photograph of it some way, they do that. But they, to my knowledge, have not said a thing. So I assume, it's, I think, a good assumption that the windows are in good shape. And the conditions wouldn't vary very much, say, during the entry phases. I guess we'll find that out when we look at it uh, at Edwards. Back here, uh, fourth row. I seem to, I'm a little bit confused still about the flight recorder circumstance from what you said. You said that um, you could get launch data uh, erased if you kept it in continuous operation during reentry. Yet you earlier said that there were three recorders and, and ascent uh, data was was recorded on only one of them. So um, how how might that happen? And and even if it were to happen, if the ascent data were to be erased, wouldn't you rather have the reentry data than the ascent data? <laughs> That'd be well, there's no there's no guarantee you were going to get the entry data because we really don't know what's wrong with the recorder. And there's a good chance that we could erase the ascent data. Uh, and again, I don't know what the, the program office is obviously involved in this decision and what they want to do tomorrow to, uh, on the entry data. Uh, I think the confusion is in the names of the recorders. Uh, it's different type of data on each of the recorders. Uh, the as we say ascent data on mission, wideband and the ascent mission, and the, there's ascent data on all of them. It's that some recorders take uh, very high frequency data, like vibration data, acoustical data, that type of thing. And the one we've had the problem with is a very low sample uh, type PCM recorder. Is that verified? Follow up. Maybe. Would you, can you say whether you would rather have the ascent or the reentry data? I mean, I, I couldn't. Again, prog the program management is, exa is examining that. I know that. Uh, Aaron Cohen and others behind the ARC console today were looking at that and discussing it and uh, will through the night to decide what trade-offs are involved and what data they want to make sure they keep. Any further questions here? Pete Bullman again. Yeah, on the IMUs, uh, do you have any data on, I haven't seen any data on how much the IMUs might have, might have varied between <coughs> alignments? Well, <coughs> of course, our objective is that if they vary between alignments, uh, we have a means of going in and biasing a gyro to account for zero-g drift. And they're performing extremely well. We've got uh, the drift rates now with the biasing that we've done. As, uh, they're just in good shape. There's no problem at all. The bias numbers are very small. Paul Reeser, way in the back. U.S. News. World Report. When the... Uh uh, the spacecraft comes in, lands tomorrow, and touches down on the lake bed, and the wheel's going to pick up little rocks and, and sand and stuff like that. How many tiles are you all predicting are going to be damaged by that? Or does it have mud flaps? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll answer your last question first. It's the only one I know for sure. It doesn't have mud flaps. Uh, I don't, who knows? I, I don't guess we really know. 
Yeah, I don't think they noticed uh, any particular damage, even though they didn't have the real tile on ALT. So I well, that's think fairly fine grain yep. sand in. up here. Harry Hannafin, time again. Along uh, the approach, is the alpha angle of attack still going to be about 40 degrees, or has it changed? Everything that I'm aware of is nominal all the way. Back there. Uh, for Mr. Krantz, uh, as he may be beating a dead horse, but it's it's the, the horse I've been trying to get get on anyhow. Uh, <laughs> and I was trying to write a story about it for in the morning. Uh, is there anything that uh, uh, that you might be getting more information on between now and the landing tomorrow uh, that could indeed uh, change any of your plans? Or is everything totally there? No, actually, uh, we've got all the data that uh, we need at this time. Uh, we've reviewed it, and we have no basis for altering our plans. Now, the one the one thing that may come in is some data from Anderson Peak, and they'll be playing that back. It's just a question of uh, getting the lines and getting the coordination. As I said, that's the, the one site that will be supporting entry tomorrow. I'm more interested in it from a standpoint of just seeing uh, what to expect during entry, getting a check out on the system. Would that come in from Anderson Peak be before the landing? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but you, you're... Uh, but you're from, from everything you have, your go for landing. Uh, that is affirmative. And uh, the when you mentioned earlier today that uh, conceivably if you got something else, you could add a day to the flight while you worked it out, that's totally off now. Well, when I say that's totally off, at least it's off from a standpoint of any concerns that may exist in the thermal protection system. But Chuck, I think, can familiarize you with uh, the basic wave off ground rules that we've got for other systems and other problems that may occur during flight. If we have no other problems, it's we're coming yeah. home tomorrow. Uh, there's always, uh, you know, there's always a chance that a failure could occur uh, between now and then that could alter that. Uh, and there are some failures, although they're very remote, uh, that could occur very close to TIG, and we'd wave off and look at it, possibly wave off one rev, wave off one day. Well, well, for Mr. Cranch, just to clo close out, you are then convinced that you have no problem uh, uh, from the tiles. Uh, state, we've reviewed all data relative well, you, you, to the you, tile you, problem, and we have no reasons it. to alter our planning. The what? We have no reasons to alter our plans for entry or landing. Okay, back over here again. Does that include any um, possible systems management uh, pl plans? You mentioned that as an alternative to extension the flight or some other means of uh, resolving any potential thermal. Uh, problem. And second, secondly, would the Anderson Peak data come at such a point that uh, that, that reentry could not be interrupted should something uh, be seen in a miss? Let me answer your second question first. We've been trying to play back the Anderson Peak data all day, and it's just a question of priorities and site coordinations and all of that type of stuff. Uh, we had people out there who looked at the data and said that uh, it's, as I described it earlier, it's a blip traversing the sky that if you've got a good imagination, you can conclude it's a shuttle. Uh, so that's the uh, answer to the first one. From a standpoint of systems management, uh, I don't expect it will exercise any uh, systems management of any type except for those kinds of problems in other systems areas that could come up between now and the time we get ready to enter. Paul Reeser again. You, you give a very careful answer to that question. You're, so you're right. Let, 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 me, let me hit it nose on. Do you have any data indicating any anomalous condition uh, associated with the tiles other than those which we've seen on TV on the Ohms pod? I'll read you the statement again if you want it. Okay, let me, let me go at it this way then. Are you, under, are you acting under instructions not, not to go beyond an, that statement? I've stated I can't go into further detail on this subject. Why can't you? Because I said I can't go into further detail on the subject. Well, I mean, is God compelling you not to go beyond it, or is somebody else saying you shall not go beyond that statement? I think I identified at a uh, earlier activity that we were using DOD resources. Back over here, take the front Do you then have confirmation? 
I'll read it one more time. <laughs> you mentioned twice now this blip transversing the sky. Is that kind of the sum total description of all you've gotten today from all these resources? <laughs> I think that I identified that uh, from the optical sites we didn't get any data that we believed usable. I think uh, Anderson Peak is uh, the data is going to be played back and you can form your own opinion on that. Any other data? Uh, I just can't discuss them. Okay, any more questions? Let's shut it down and let them go home. Okay? Shuttle Mission Control Houston, mission elapsed time, one day, 14 hours, 47 minutes. Change of shift briefing with outgoing flight director Chuck Lewis has been concluded. Columbia is uh, now over the continent of Africa on uh, its 27th orbit of the Earth. Uh, astronauts Young and Crippen are still in their sleep period, approximately six hours remaining in the uh, slumber period. Downlink data continues to uh, be uh, transmitted by Columbia as it goes over uh, ground stations. The uh, cabin temperature inside Columbia is uh, fluctuated between 77 and 78 degrees, two degrees higher than uh, it, uh, it was during the uh, sleep period last night. Cabin humidity is 34% uh, and steady. Mission elapsed time, one day. 14 hours, 48 minutes. This is Mission Control Houston. This is Mission Control Houston. Mission elapsed time is one day, 15 hours, 54 minutes. Still in the uh, sleep period for astronauts Young and Crippen. Uh, just under five hours remaining. Columbia is on orbit 28 now, just uh, having just crossed the Terminator into darkness and approaching the tip of South America. Uh, vehicle velocity is 25,421 feet per second presently. Temperature, cabin temperature on board uh, Columbia is uh, 77 degrees and steady. Uh, humidity is at 34%. Uh, Downlink data continues to uh, to be fed to uh, tracking stations even uh, while the astronauts are sleeping. That data indicates that uh, systems are continuing to perform nominally on board Columbia. Mission lapse time. One day, 15 hours, 55 minutes. This is Mission Control Houston. Ascension Comtech, this is Houston Comtech. Testing one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. Test out. Columbia, Houston. Hello, Houston. Uh, radio line clear. Over. Roger, uh, we see your message, and I think we got it scoped out. Uh, if you go on panel A12 and turn APU heater gas generator fuel pump 2 to A auto. Fuel pump 2 to A auto. Roger, apparently uh, Bravo has gone uh, south on us. Affirmative, Columbia. Okay, well, we're on heaters there, or I'll clip through that first thing. Roger, Columbia. Our switch scan shows uh, that the switch is still in Bravo. Uh, switch scan shows the switch is still in Bravo. That's affirmative. Columbia Houston, I recommend uh, you cycle the switch. Okay, it's uh, done now. 
In Columbia, we show it in Alpha now. Okay. In Columbia, the temp's rising. Oh, yeah. See you guys tomorrow. Good night, Columbia. This is Mission Control Houston. Mission elapse time, one day, 16 hours, 15 minutes. An alarm, an alarm sounded on board Columbia, awakening the crew, uh, informing them that uh, there was a temperature problem in one of the auxiliary power units. Uh, the uh, crew uh, uh, selected a uh, different uh, heating mode uh, from uh, B to A, which uh, initially had no effect on the temperature uh, change. Uh, here in the mission operations control room, the uh, data indicated that uh, uh, that uh, switching to the B mode uh, had not, in fact, occurred. Uh, the crew was then instructed to recycle the switch. Uh, that uh, recycling did uh, engage the uh, A mode heater. And uh, the temperature at this point appear to be returning to nominal level. Uh, subsequently, the crew has uh, returned the uh, Columbia to sleep configuration. It's on uh, orbit 28. We presently in an acquisition of signal period uh, at the Ascension Island station. Uh, the uh, vehicle now just uh, crossing the coast of Africa on the 28th orbit of the Earth. The temperature of that uh, auxiliary power unit, uh, APU number two, uh, continues to improve, uh, returning to, to nominal levels. Mission elapsed time, one day, 16 hours, 16 minutes. This is Mission Control, Houston. This is Shuttle Mission Control with a status update report. Mission elapsed time is one day, 17 hours, 22 minutes. Uh, about uh, three and a half hours uh, remaining in the astronaut sleep period. Columbia is on the 28th orbit of the Earth, just uh, out in the uh, middle of the Pacific Ocean, presently approaching the uh, coast of South America. Comfort factors uh, on board the Columbia and the crew station. The cabin pressure is uh, 14 psi. Cabin temperature is uh, 77 degrees and steady. Um, again, that uh, has been consistent this evening and uh, is uh, approximately three degrees higher than it was uh, yesterday, last night at this time. Cabin humidity is. Uh, 33%, also steady. Uh, temperature of the uh, auxiliary power unit, uh, which uh, number two, which was uh, uh, running a little cold earlier in the evening, has uh, uh, moderated and returned to normal since uh, the uh, crew uh, moved the uh, heater selection to a different mode. Systems continue to perform within nominal constraints. Uh, mission elapsed time is one day, 17 hours, 24 minutes. This is shuttle mission control. This is mission control, Houston. Mission elapsed time, one day, 18 hours. 35 minutes. Columbia uh, is on orbit 29, presently uh, just uh, northeast of Australia, just over the northeastern coast of Australia. Uh, we are presently uh, about halfway through an, uh, uh, an hour long loss of signal period, uh, picking up uh, ground track again in about uh, 30 minutes over the states. Our uh, 
over Quito, Ecuador, actually, in about uh, 32 minutes from now. It's just uh, slightly more than two hours remaining in the crew's sleep period. Mission elapsed time, one day, 18 hours, 36 minutes. This is shuttle mission control. Madrid ComTech, Houston ComTech, air to ground one. Madrid ComTech. Raj, I want to do a quick check out here. We are going to uh, send up an uplink teleprinter message. I'd like to check that out with you now. That will be on the air to ground two. You should be getting a tone now. Madrid, Houston, air to ground one. Madrid, ComTech, Houston, ComTech, air to ground one. Madrid, Houston, air to ground one. This is Madrid on air ground one. Okay, I got you loud and clear now. Uh, Roger, radio the same. Okay, we do not plan on uplinking voice on this channel, uh, so configure for uh, sleep uh, configuration on this circuit and uh, stand by for teleprinter uplink on air to ground two. Uh, that's going to be a Lima then. Uh, that's a firm. Roger. Okay, Hank, and I'm uh, afraid I got a small problem. Okay, Hank, see you there. This is uh, Shuttle Mission Control. Mission elapsed time. It's one day, 18 hours, 29 minutes. Uh, just a few moments ago, a uh, recorded uh, air to ground transmission from an earlier pass was uh, inadvertently uh, sent out over the uh, air to ground loop uh, due to an open circuit uh, here in the mission operations control room that uh, that uh, transmission was not a live uplink to the crew it was something that uh, had been recorded uh, sometime earlier and just uh, played back at that moment uh, the uh, circuits were not configured for voice, so that uh, transmission was not uplinked to the uh, crew. Astronaut Sam and Crippen are still asleep. Just a little uh, under an hour and a half remaining in that sleep period. Columbia is uh, now over the Mediterranean Sea, just over the coast of North Africa, getting downlink information from the vehicle through the Madrid tracking station. All uh, systems on board the vehicle continue to be nominal. This is Mission Control Houston at one day, 19 hours, 30 minutes. This is Mission Control Houston. Mission elapsed time, one day, 20 hours, 11 minutes. We've just recently had acquisition of signal over the Madrid station. There are about uh, 40 minutes remaining in the sleep period. However, downlink data from Columbia indicates that the food warmer has been turned on and uh, that the crew has uh, punched up uh, two of their cathode ray tube displays. Uh, Accordingly, it's obvious the crew is awake, although there is 40 minutes uh, remaining in the sleep period. Uh, Flight Director Neil Hutchison has elected uh, not to initiate uh, voice contact with them at this period to uh, allow them to uh, uh, wake up uh, leisurely. Uh, duration of the Madrid Pass. Um, we will have acquisition of signal for another two and a half minutes remaining. Mission elapsed time, one hour, one day, 20 hours, 12 minutes. This is Mission Control, Houston. This is Mission Control, Houston. Mission elapsed time, one day, 20 hours, 15 minutes. That pass was, uh, in fact, uh, at uh, Arroyo Valley. Uh, we have now had loss of signal over that station. Uh, the uh, next uh, voice pass will be at uh, Quito, Ecuador in about 26 minutes. Uh, that pass will be at uh, duration of uh, 
Six minutes, 19 seconds. When the crew awoke, uh, they uh, found a teleprinter message which had been uplinked recently, which says in part that all consumables are near nominal, uh, no major systems problems, shows a uh, forecast for good weather at Edwards Air Force Base for landing, and plans for nominal end of mission entry. Again, the uh, Downlink data indicates that the crew is awake, uh, cooking breakfast and uh, reviewing displays inside the flight cabin. Mission elapsed time, one day, 20 hours, 16 minutes. This is Shuttle Control Houston.